que cuesta larga. Yes. Hubo un comentario, hubo un... Necesito una copia de esto. ¿Qué te noticias? ¿Qué te noticias? ¡Hey! ¡Hola! ¡Show! Hubo un comentario... Me paré aquí... ¿Otra chance de...? Alguien en los medios de comunicación comenzaron a joder que por qué si había simultáneo que yo tuve que venir aquí. Whenever the person here speaks Spanish, I'm going to stand here. You have to, because it's not
Councillor Reyes, not here. Councillor, are you know, I'm just going to sign some names to it. Public participation list is right here. What's your name? First name? So if it is for the result if it is for the resolution? Which item are you looking for? Uh, the chair shaft. We're gonna have an item on that. Can you can you want to write it down for yes, you? Yes, yeah. okay. here. Are you here with Charm or are you here to speak yes, for yourself? Okay. Yeah, he wanted me to tell you, though, my name. So I guess yeah, he yeah, wants me to speak yeah. independently yep. on behalf of Northern yep. Essex. You want me to write it down for I, you? I do, actually. Can you just print it neatly? And I need your address also. Okay. Let me put this down. No, don't worry. I, my family's from Costa Rica. Right. My parents are. I was born. I was born in L.A. Costa Rica is the I know. It's because it's a secure country, dude. You know what I mean? My brother's wife is from Costa Rica. Yeah. So can I do Northern Essex address? Necesito empezar. Well, there's a campus on Franklin. Is it 16, 17? Okay. If you ever want to go there, let me know, because it's safe, but you know, you want to be smart. When you, and then climate change is also tricky, and I want people to understand that. Even when I went to Cuba and DR, it's tricky. You're going to have to understand it, because we have 15, 20 here. Yeah. So, there's 11 people I made this Thank you. Um, this is the woman, Maggie. Who is it? We, we only have 30 minutes, so we're going to have to extend this, Stephanie, at some point. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, but okay. No, for no, 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 Start one, two, three, four, five. Oh, you got it. Let's go. Okay. Good evening and welcome to the Lawrence City Council meeting. Today is Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. Pursuant to chapter of Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Act of 2022, this meeting will be hybrid, allowing participation both in person and in the city council chambers and remotely. The Zoom link was provided to anybody that was uh, requested through the city clerk office. We're also going to be transmitting this, this meeting through the Lawrence City Council Facebook page and as well as the uh, Lawrence City Council YouTube page. Roll call, please. Councilor Levy. Councilor. Plant. 
Present. Council Luzon. Noted as present. Council, um, Council Del Rosario is noted as absent. Council Santiago. Present. Council Marmo. Present. Councilor Reyes is noted as absent. Council Vice President Infante. Present. Council President Rodriguez. Present. Please join me for a moment of silence following for the Pledge of Allegiance. So now we have public participation. The list. We have, everybody's going to have two and a half minutes to speak. At the two minute mark, you're going to hear a bell. That means that you, have, you still have 30 seconds. Please refer to the council as a whole, not as any individual councillors. The first person that we have on the list is H. Mali, name and address for the record. Omayun Mali, 53 Chester Street. Good evening, honorable members. We, the citizens, respectfully request from this honorable council, please approve the contract for Lawrence Police Superior Officers. Lawrence Police, one of the best police departments in the nation, doing excellent job to protect our citizens. We welcome leadership of Honorable Chief Bonilla. We support Lawrence Police Officers Union, Superior Officers Union. Lawrence Police, this union of pride and honor, deserve the best contract and compensation. Lawrence is a beautiful city because of our hardworking DPW workers. Leadership, we support DPW union. We demand the best contract and compensation for our great DPW employees. Lawrence Inspection Department, thank you for excellent job. We support our Inspection Department employees and their union. We must hire more inspectors. Lawrence teachers, you are number one. You are the most important reason for success of Lawrence Public School. We support Lawrence Teachers Union. Please help our homeless bring food and donation every Wednesday night to Buckley Garage. Lawrence always is strong. Lawrence always unite. We demand the best contract for our brave firefighters union with represent color raise and hazard pay. We pray for the safety and protection of all police officers endangering their life for our safety and protection. We the citizen rise up in unity, demand the best contract for our superior officers union, the best example of the protect and serve. Lawrence Police, thank you for making Lawrence a safe city. Thank you for excellent job. The next person we have is the person representing Timeless and Juice Smoothie. Uh, please name and address for the record. Hello, Honorable Council. My name is Evelyn Lambert. I represent Timeless Juice and Smoothies. I'm business owner for this uh, enterprise, and um, I share this with my brother, Stephen Lambert, and his um, counterpart, Jennifer Paz. Timeless Juice and Smoothies has just opened. We're about to reach our one-year mark. As a recent business owner in Lawrence, I have found it very difficult to grow and expand my business in a, you know, um, in a steadfast manner. And for this, for this reason, we would like to ask for this funding to come in as a grant and not as a loan, um, because it will allow us to be able to do bigger and better things for the community. So what we do is offer natural juices, we offer CMOS, we offer acai bowls. We're trying to make the community more educated in healthy living style and healthy eating options. Um, and this would enable us to hire more staff, 
but also to move forward and you know go about the community in a food truck in a completely different concept um, for healthy options for all of our communities here in Lawrence. And that is what I have to say today. Thank you. Thank you. The next person is uh, Little Grant. Little Giant. Little Giant. Name and address for the record, please. I, I, put, I put my name. Hi, my name is Suleika Gill. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure being here. Um, I have been running my business, Little Giants Early Education and Care, in the city of Lawrence for three years now. Um, we serve quality care by helping children achieve their milestone by um, implementing a, a curriculum that services their needs. This money will greatly um, benefit our center by helping us market and um, helping us renovate the outside of our building. We are on Broadway Street and we face many challenges with that area. Um, but if we're able to renovate the outside premises, it's a, we're able to represent more of what's going on inside. Um, as well as we would like to add transportation services to those families who are not able to transport their children to and from childcare. So I, we would greatly benefit if this money is distributed as a grant because it will, um, it will lift off of the burden of having to pay this money back and alleviate the pressure. We can focus, by alleviating the pressure, we can focus on hiring staff with um, qualifications and making educated decisions that will um, benefit our business in, in the community in a successful way. Thank you. Thank you. Ne next person we have is uh, Maggie Superchurch. Good evening, counselors. Maggie Super Church, 90 Nesmith Street in Lawrence. Uh, I'm here to speak about a matter that, uh, as I understand it, does not have a public hearing scheduled, so I'm speaking in public participation and will try to keep my comments brief. I understand there is a proposal for a transfer of a number of city-owned parcels from the city to the Lawrence Redevelopment Authority uh, within the bounds of the urban renewal plan that was approved by this council in 2017. Um, I'd like to state for the record that there are very clear uh, processes and procedures for the transfer of land within the context of an urban renewal plan. Those are itemized in significant detail in the plan itself and are consistent with state law. It appears from what I understand about what is proposed that those rules and regulations are not being followed. I'd like the council to consider what can be done to ensure that the city is moving forward consistent with state law and consistent with the approved urban renewal plan that this council reviewed in 2017. In the context of that broader set of challenges around uh, how this process is unfolding, I want to highlight a particular issue of concern, which is that it appears that the proposal includes a parcel of land uh, that is adjacent to Pemberton Park and for all intents and purposes part of the park that is tagged for residential development. The plan is very clear that that park, uh, that the desire of the public and the community has expressed in the plan is for a concert venue and expanded public park not for residential development on that site. So in addition to the procedural issues that this raises, there are, I think, very serious concerns about a uh, major priority, a centerpiece of the city uh, that is proposed for use that was uh, not considered and not recommended in the plan. I have plenty of uh, detail and citations if you're interested in trying to figure out where in the plan all of this sits. Happy to share that, um, and thank you for your consideration. Thank you. The next person we have on the list is uh, Jess Under. Name and address for the record, please. Oh, so much Good evening, counselors. Jess Andors, 3 Jackson Terrace in Lawrence. Um, I'm here to speak on the same issue. I think um, a few months ago, uh, several of us came before you to express our concerns about this property transfer. And I think one of the major concerns about it is that it seems to be happening outside of the approved public process for dealing with such things. And um, what's being contemplated is you know, a major transfer of most of the developable property that the, that the city owns um, without any clear public process or plan around that and in contradiction of the um, rules and regulations that govern this. Um, and so, I, I do uh, just want to point out that what is being proposed um, 
I understand. I think there's an executive order um, happening around this would constitute a major plan change, um, which by the laws governing urban renewal um, would require a public hearing. It would require that um, the plan that the change is like certified to be in conformity with the intent of the original plan and existing plans by the planning board. And it would require approval by the city council. And I just want to say that, you know, you guys on the city council, you are our elected representatives. You are the voice of the people. And I don't think that you should give up your right and, and responsibility to oversee and review this process and, and this transfer. This is, a, this is a big deal for the city. And I think it's something that needs to be undertaken with a lot of public input and planning and the proper process around it. And so I would just urge you to consider that um, as, as you're figuring out this issue. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Council. My name is Christian Martinez, and I'm the CEO of Sentinel Technology. We have uh, two years in business, and uh, what we do is cybersecurity, right? So essentially, one of the few companies here in, in, the, in, the, in the city of Lawrence that is doing this type of, uh, of work. What, uh, one of the things is that a um, few questions, and more than questions, is, is uh, essentially if there is any requirement for, uh, for the uh, for the businesses that receive the funding, um, such as uh, providing any updates of how the funding is going to be used, and also what is the application timeline and what documentation is going to be required to apply for the funds. That's another, that's uh, that's the second one, and um, just a, a request uh, about the funds to be granted as a grant instead of a, of, a, of a loan, because essentially. Most of this, uh, most of the work that uh, Sentinel Technologies do, is also doing, it's pretty much like giving back to the community, like uh, with the youngsters, uh, um, you know, kids essentially after uh, 14, 15 kids in, in, in high school, teaching them in, uh, about cybersecurity. Because this is really, really, really needed, uh, not only here in the state of Massachusetts, not only here in the, in the city of Lawrence, but globally, I mean, as an as a, as a, as a industry, there is a big shortage of uh, jobs for cybersecurity. There is a lot of uh, lack of uh, expertise that we have in the field, and we need more people in this, uh, in this field. That's pretty much that's it. Thank you. Good evening, councilors. <coughs> Excuse me. I am Richard Russell, 34 Cross Street. A bunch of questions for you people to ponder tonight. Number one, exactly, how much money are we presently paying both of our provisional police chiefs in salary right now? Number two, who is the 501c3 nonprofit that is broadcasting the council meetings on various local cable channels? Number three, when will the parking meter vultures, I use that for lack of a better phrase, be fully compliant with the contract that they have with the city that states that their vehicles must be fitted with proper warning lights? Four-way flashes, in my humble opinion, are not contract compliant or, for that matter, safety compliant. Number four, who in the city government, city hierarchy, is controlling the release or the non-release of public record requests. I'm still waiting for answers as to who authorized the investigation into Lawrence Police Chief Roy Vask and how was AJD investigation chosen to do the investigation. These questions were asked by me in public record requests back in last December. And number five, why does it appear that most unqualified individuals are hired at exorbitant salaries with no council approval? And why do some of these jobs appear to be newly created without council approval? As always, I thank you for the time. Thank you, uh, former, uh, I mean, uh, Council Russell. The next uh, person is uh, Cerreda Nunez, 
Chris Beauty uh, Salon. Name and address for the record, please. Hi. Um, Él les puede ayudar en la traducción. Entonces, va a decir su nombre y, y su dirección para el acta. Ok. Mi nombre es Elgida Núñez uh, y estoy ubicada en la 434 de la Prosper Street, Lawrence. So, my name is Elgida Núñez and I am at 343 Prospect Street. Yeah. Pro Prospect Street, Lawrence. Lawrence. Ok. Um, la razón de estar aquí, yo fui invitada, es porque yo tengo una, un pequeño negocio, yo soy emprendedora, eh, tengo, soy la propietaria de Chris Beauty Salon. So, the reason why I'm here is because um, I have a small business um, and I am the owner of Chris. Chris Beauty Salon. Chris Beauty Salon and I'm an entrepreneur. Yes. Uh, y la razón de estar aquí es porque a mí me gustaría que recibir como emprendedora y nueva empresaria, me gustaría recibir ayuda de los, fond de los fondos que la ciudad tiene para los pequeños empresarios. Y so, sorry. the reason why I'm here is because as a small business owner, I would like to take uh, or I would like to receive the help. The, um, with the funds that the city of Lawrence is providing for small businesses. Ya que tengo empleado que tengo que educar y por falta de recursos hemos tenido que parar el entrenamiento para ellos. Son personas que quieren emprender, pero la razón es que no tenemos los recursos a mano realmente. So, um, one of the reasons why we want to do this is because we have employees, employees that we want to train. And right now, we have not been able to keep on with the training because we don't have the resources to do so. Como Latina que vine a este país, estoy agradecida, pero realmente quisiera que las instituciones encargadas nos dieran un empuje más para que los que vienen detrás de nosotros puedan también emprender en su sueño. So, as a Latin, that Latin person that came to the United States, I greatly appreciate it of all the help that we ha that I have had, and I just think that when if I get this help, it will help the people that are coming behind me to keep on um, with the um, entrepreneur spirit and keep on working towards better life. Gracias por darnos la por darme la oportunidad y espero que se tome en cuenta este punto. Thank you for the opportunity, and I hope that I could get this. Uh, the next person we have is Juan Brito. Good evening, uh, Consul. Um, my, my point is this. Spring and summer coming. Lawrence family need to uh, stay together go to the park, have a good time. Unfortunately, we have all the parking meter around the parking all the weekends. All family, when they go to the park, they need to run away to get money back in the parking meter. It's something like, uh, as a family, we need to be quiet, be uh, in peace when you enjoy with the family. I propose Friday to Sunday um, <clears throat> be a uh, consider consideration to put the weekends as uh, uh, people don't have to pay for the parkimeter around the park so that people can go there and um, have a good time with the family. Also, people, um, I have to mention, I am the city CEO of Carefully Transportation. And we talk about funds that we, we needed to share or you guys had to share. Um, the transparency we need is very important because in this time, uh, politic comments, 
and we need the most the most transparency in the and the fund if you guys decide to share with the community but more important the parkimeter for our kids our family in Lawrence thank you gracias señor uh, the next person on the list is Sara Perez Hi, my name is Sara Perez, 17, Mc oh I thought I was told, I'm sorry. <laughs> my name is Sara Perez, 17, McKinley Avenue, Lawrence, and I'm here representing the Federación Hispana de Comerciantes. I know it's an organization that's been around for a few years, and we do want to help business owners. We want to bring this money to them, not as a loan, for two reasons. We don't have the capacity to do that, and the people need this money now, and they don't have to pay it back. That would be a huge burden to them. I hope you guys, um, I'm sorry to all you guys, I, go, I hope you guys, again, <laughs> um, change this to a grant. Not, not for the Federation, but for these people that are here uh, to time of the time to come in and help with this uh, huge organization. It's in, it's in the heart of all of us. Uh, we, we service the barber shops, the beauty salons, the people that you see here, regular people, and they deserve this change. From the federation and the, oh, the $500,000 that the business um, development from the city got, it would be a huge help and it can get to the people that need it. Thank you very much. And people are waiting in the Zoom? The Zoom meeting? Got it. Are people waiting? Yep, we, we got it. Uh, the next person we have on the list is uh, Kelly Sansweski. Good evening, Councilors. Kelly Sansweski, 47 Hamlet Street. Uh, I was just talking about a couple of agenda items. 11724, the new street layout for Merrimack Broadway, it concerns me a little bit because the intersection that they redid at Mount Vernon and South Broadway actually made a bigger mess, more traffic. And I do feel like a lot of cars are cutting through neighborhoods which do have smaller side streets. Um, I'm also um, talking about the 440-23, where it's a right turn only for vehicles exiting businesses between Durso Ave and Chickering. I do feel like the same thing is going to happen in that aspect. It is going to go through um, Chickering Road, so main traffic is going to divert off at of uh, 114 and go through Chickering because they only can take a right hand turn. So that's my concern with those two. Um, I feel like there was a mass exodus with uh, items being withdrawn. It wasn't on video or anything. I did miss that meeting. But there is 299-19, no parking in front of schools, two to three hours. If it's being withdrawn, what does that mean for the ordinances already in place? Does that affect those ordinances? Um, 40119, Frost Drive. Uh, that's being withdrawn. No parking on both sides um, during school session. I believe Office Carno did recommend that. The ex school, uh, that street is extremely narrow. Uh, buses are trying to get through. Cars are trying to get up. And then 253.22 is also being withdrawn. And that was the traffic study on Hamlet Street. Now, Officer Carno did recommend that as well. I thought last time I spoke, we were headed in the right direction. My signs matched. But then I come to find out that Lawrence has a bid request in to redo the Frost School. Now, my street has been repaved three times, or will be repaved three times in 13 years. They should be doing, every time they repave, a complete street process. Um, it's not just for new construction. It is for existing as well. Um, the scope of this project does nothing to drop off and pick up. Um, public streets are basically an easement. It's an easement for us to get to our house. Both lanes are blocked and nothing is being done to fix this. Bids were due on the 4th. The contract said it was gonna be awarded on the 26th. I hope somebody speaks up. I didn't know about this, but we need to address everything all at once and stop wasting taxpayers' money. Three times is too much.
Hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Myers, and I reside at 550 Haverhill Street uh, here in the city. And I'm here tonight on the uh, Cherish Act, which I'm asking you to uh, vote on a non-binding resolution in favor of the Cherish Act, which is a piece of legislation before the Massachusetts legislature uh, concerning higher education, community colleges, colleges, and universities, which are public. And what the Cherish Act will do is to allow students who are in community college for this coming year, the 2024 year, to have debt-free community college. And it would be a scholarship involved that would provide so that no student ends up being in debt. And the following year for it to, to be expanded into the state colleges. And I know many of you here have attended state colleges. And you know how difficult it is to work and to go to college. The average person coming from a gateway city works over 30 hours a week in addition to trying to do full-time college. And that's really hard. And it's a disadvantage for students from our city versus affluent communities. I taught in Andover. I know the difference between what goes on in Andover High, where I taught for 38 years, and what goes on here for students who are struggling. Now, this did not come out with a favorable vote from the Ordinance Committee. And that's really unfortunate, because it's, it's really screwing over children, students in our city. And I'm hoping this, this can be amended. And in fact, the vote out of the Ordinance Committee was two in favor, one abstention, and one against. And so I'm asking you tonight to stand tall and to support this, because this is going to make a tremendous difference for every person who wishes to go on to college uh, from our city to be able to make it affordable. Thank you all, and I think I know you'll do the right thing. Good evening, Councillors. Wendy Luzoni, 11, 11 Aldean Street, Lawrence. <laughs> wow. I'm here on behalf of uh, Federación Hispana de Comerciantes uh, uh, as a president. I'm here to support my committee members and the other members and all members of the Federación Hispana de Comerciantes. And I would like to ask the council to approve this uh, money as a grant, not as a loan. Uh, they all need this money now. We are facing hard times, and all these people are essential uh, to the economy of this city. Thank you. Thank you. Council President. There's a rule, council, rule, council president, there's rule seven does, does yes. not allow placards to be raised during the city council meetings. Correction, President, did you mean Lisa Espinosa? Yes, I did. Okay. Sorry. Hola. Um, good afternoon, good evening, buenas tardes. Um, council people and políticos. I'll see if I can try to do this in bilingual style. We'll see how it goes. We have a translation, so you I don't, don't want that. I mean, uh, so I'm a professor of uh, literature, español, and uh, inglés at Northern Essex Community College. I have over 15 years of experience. I help students with freshmen writing. That means I get early college students. I get your high school students in there early. I get them when they're ready to attend community college after they graduate. So soy una profesora de inglés, español y literatura. Mis estudiantes vienen de varios programas de sus comunidades, incluyendo de Early College, donde están estudiando en sus colegios, en secundaria, pero también puede tomar clases en Northern Essex, clases de la educativos públicos políticos de avanzados en el nivel de universitarios. I would like to speak uh, from the perspective of an educator who has served diverse communities. Diverse communities means everybody. Community means everybody. Most of us are working class. We may not have started there, we may not end there, but the community does represent 
all representatives, all creeds, all uh, ethnicities, all generations of Americans, local, and also international, and veterans. Estoy hablando sobre el punto de vista de una edu educadora quien enseña cursos de comunidades y sus miembros de uh, personajes diversas en este estado de Massachusetts. También estoy hablando sobre la, la, el punto de vista de la carrera de, de, del estudiante, es su ser humano, y también el punto de vista de cómo el de Cherish Act o el acto de apreciar como un ley que se puede soportar um, a seguir su educación superior y sin pagar, sin deuda. So, um, because I have a perspective that is very thorough here, I'm looking for leaders, leaders that are brave to live in the present and ensure a secure path, including those who attend public higher ed. Buscamos líderes, líderes valientes que viven en el presente para garantizar un cambio seguro en el futuro, incluso para los quienes asisten a la educación superior pública. Gracias. Next person is uh, Councilor Vice President Infante. Good evening, Councilor Stephanie Fante, Vice President of the City Council. No, no, um, no, just for the record. Uh, 226 Mount Vernon Street, Lawrence. Uh, Council President, it, ha it came to my attention um, earlier today and also yesterday that we were going to have um, some, of, some of our community members and business owners here tonight. And I wanted to take this opportunity to explain to the council, to the full council and also to our members of our business community that the item that they came to express their concern about tonight, um, as the chair of the Budget and Finance Committee, we tabled this item due to um, information that we were missing. The representative from the mayor's office that presented the documents and the item to the Budget and Finance uh, Committee did have a situation with a conflict of interest um, the committee voted to obtain more information on that. So we tabled the item until we received additional information from our city clerk. Uh, I want to make it clear that this does not mean that the committee uh, voted against it or anything. We are just waiting for more information for the next meeting in order to bring it up to, to the full council for the final approval or however um, the city council as a whole wishes to, to vote on, on this item. But I do want to make it clear that it's not because we do not want to approve it. Just click the button there. I'm sorry? The green button. Click it. Yes, leave it like that. Oh, thank you. We have one person that would like to speak and is a, a school committee member, Jonathan Guzman. He is on the Zoom meeting and he would like to participate in public participation. Jonathan Guzman, can you hear us? Just give us a few seconds so they can allow. John? Yeah, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, you're, you're all set. Go ahead. OK. Hey, everybody. Uh, Jonathan Guzman, vice chair of the Lawrence School Committee, 39 Lynn Street. Uh, uh, I firmly oppose any major changes that are happening to the 2016 urban renewal plan without adhering to the proper governmental procedures. We cannot afford to cut a corner or bypass essential practices. Several parcels requested fall outside of the boundary initial proposed in the uh, initial urban renewal plan. It is crucial that we do not proceed with projects on land that have not been appraised or where project cost remains uncertain. I implore my decision makers not to push the city of Lawrence into another financial receivership. I'm also here in support of item 132-24 to ensure that our students can continue the educational journey. It is crucial that our faculty members in higher ed receive the necessary resources to thrive and succeed. I urge that item 204-21 Dash 21 is not withdrawn from the ordinance committee suggestion. Instead, let us table this matter at the full council level and, and enable members of the school committee to actively engage 
with this body. I'm here in support of uh, uh, the allocation of the five hundred thousand dollars that uh, thousands that are for small businesses that they need and support, but they also need transparent community driven process that gives them the chance to apply. I firmly oppose item 148-24 under new business. Unfortunately, the chair of the Lawrence School Committee has yet again excluded elected members from this crucial pro proposal. Their actions have raised concerns. They have engaged with a le legislative le delegation to use this process to remove the elected school committee based on political ideology and do a majority appointed school committee. The only the one that wrote this home rule petition has taken an extreme step to allowing the mayor to retain the chair position on a board that he himself appoints. This move will place Lawrence back under the eye of the Justice you Department. You have 30 seconds. Yeah, just representation and a propose of a diverse community. Let us advocate for a transparent fairness and the best interest for our students and community. Thank you. Anybody on the Zoom meeting that would like to speak? We still have uh, two more spaces. All right, with that said, oh, we have one more. All right, uh, we have one more person that would like to add to the list. Name and address for the record, please. Just click the, click the button, the green. Click to speak. Yep. My name is Lawrence Hester. I live at 171 Abbott Street, Lawrence, Mass. And I'm here mainly jumping out a little bit, but I think I can get in pu public participation because I think it's very important of our values and norms in the city of Lawrence. Meaning, if you live in a residential neighborhood, I didn't move there to be in a business district on a major thoroughfare. Otherwise, as a city, I see so many things and I'm bringing it to this body because this is the legislative body that makes laws and regulations to be enforced so that we have an environment of our people in our community that makes some sort of sense, okay? And my biggest thing is that I see businesses, beauty salons that require licenses being run in the city of Lawrence in the basement. It's not right. But yet, I see people come out do justice to me because I take a picture, because I want to have prima facie evidence to show these things, and I get bad gestures. I'll leave it at that. I won't use the explicit words. But that being said, we need to uh, get some rules and regulations. My street, and everybody knows about the parking. We're over parking. My street is like when we had a St. Patrick's Day parade for blocks on both sides. Thank goodness it's wide enough that we can move from each side for the snow plows. I got 14 units coming down the street. I'm going to wait and see what happens with that close to South Union Street. What I say to you, when you bring up the residents, I mean the sticker parking program for, 170, for Abbott Street, that you enforce that and that you approve that regulations because it means so much for a taxpayer that pays $4,000 that can't park in front of his house or other people that are on the street that are landlocked, okay? Or the person that can't, that was here last time, one of my neighbors that came, I'm gonna make right, because he's gotta walk around the car, around the street, to get his kids to school. I suggest that you put that ordinance, vote it favorable, you do it 24 hours from Phillips to Osgood Street. If you wanna give some more parking from South Union to Phillips Street, allow them from the seven o'clock hours. Okay, that'll take care of some of the traffic from the meters on, on South Union Street to Long Block, but not in the residential neighbors. And you got to have it on Saturdays, because that's when okay. they run these Wait, illegal thank businesses. Thank you so much. On Saturdays. Th thank you. Thank you so much. That, uh, what is next? Anybody uh, on public participation with that said? Oh, we have one more person? Yes. Um, name and address for the record, please. Buenas noches. Eh, Alta Gracia Maggi. Eh, soy, uh, tengo mi oficina en el 60 Island Street en Lawrence. So, good evening, um, Altagracia Maggi, and I have my offices at 60 Island Street in Lawrence. Uh, mi empresa es eh, Maggi LLC, eh, registrada por el, en el estado de Massachusetts. 
and my company is Magi LLC, registered in the state of Massachusetts. En este momento yo estoy aquí como parte miembro de la comunicación en Lawrence. And right he and right now I'm here as part of the communication community in Lawrence. Estoy preocupada por unas declaraciones que dio el alcalde Brian de Peña en la radio el miércoles 25 en la Power 800. And I am here because I am concerned with some um, some, some things that Mayor Brian de Peña said on Power 800 on the 25th of March. Y estoy, estoy pidiéndole al consejo que haga un manifiesto en contra de eso, ya que él dijo que ustedes como concejales tienen una agenda para trabajar en su contra. And I am asking the council to do manifest against what he said because um, he, uh, his declarations were that you have an agenda to work against him. Y si nosotros estamos aquí como residentes y empresarios, and if we are here as residents and also as business owners, es porque contamos con el voto de ustedes para que las cosas vayan mejor en esta ciudad. It's because we count with, for your, with your vote for things to go better on this city. Y abogamos por una comunidad democrática. And we are advocating for a democratic community. Y como él mismo dijo en su propia voz que iba a gobernar y a tomar decisiones por decreto. And like he said that um, he was going to um, govern and make decisions through decrees. Me gustaría que por favor ustedes hagan su eh, observación al respecto. Muchas gracias. And I would like you to please make your observations and take the, the necessary um, things. Thank you. Uh, with that said, we are closing public participation for today's meeting. We'll have time for one more in Zoom. Um, Councilors, can I get a motion to extend public participation um, to allow this to happen? It's already uh -huh. over the 30 minutes. There is a motion uh, on the table uh, by Councilor Vice President Infante, properly second by Councilor Infante. All those in favor, please say aye. Oh, Councilor Reyes. <laughs> Councilor Reyes, yes. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. So, yes, we have more time for one more person and, uh, on the Zoom. Thank you very much. My name is Luis Robles, 183 Abbott Street. Um, thank you for your extending the time. I do want to add to my neighbor's concern, Lawrence Hester, that um, uh, we, we have an issue with parking here, and the approving the residential parking area is going to make it better. However, all the adjacent streets, they're going to have the same issue because we still have people from other streets that park in our street and vice versa, and sometimes we have to park in their street. It's a first-come, first-served situation, and it gets crazy. And uh, you have business, underground business, that you have like five cars from customers parked at the same time, so you can't even find parking. Apart from that, you got people smoking weed in their cars, multiple people smoking weed, taking up parking spots that don't even live in our streets, that are just using our streets to smoke weed instead of their cars. And uh, you got people that Thank you me. might have to even create an ordinance for people that have driveways to use their driveways because even people that have driveways are parking in the street knowing that there is not a lot of space. So part of it is we're close to Union Street where there's businesses. Part of it is underground businesses. Part of it is people not using their driveways when they have a driveway. And part of it, you know, it's just human consideration for others. So it's not just our street. I'm telling you, this is happening in probably our whole block. Other people have suffered through the same thing. So apart from approving our street, uh, organize, you, you guys should look, really look into this for other places because if you approve parking in our street, it's another street is just going to have a worse problem and then and that is just, just going to have a domino effect. So please take into this into consideration when approving new housing and all these things because things get out of control. You might have a three bedroom apartment, but we already know there's 10 people living there. And I don't have anything against that, it's just we have to be realistic with the situation that we are creating. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, all of all this name has been uh, um, have been submitted for the record, and now we would like to continue with the agenda. Today we have a, a, a full agenda, and uh, we would like everybody, to, you know, to collaborate for this meeting to go a little quicker. So, with that said, councilors, I'm looking for a motion to take item uh, uh, 47723, which is the recognition of the Lawrence High School Theater Program. 
Uh, it's out of it's out of the table matters and out of order. So, so moved. There is a motion on the table, properly second. Uh, um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. With that said, I will pass the gavel to the senior councillor because councillor vice president and myself would like to go to the front. Good evening, councillors. Uh, today we're here because we are recognizing an important group of students of the Lauren High School. It's the theater program. They are amazing kids, amazing, amazing stu uh, students of the Lauren High. And today we are taking this opportunity to actually recognize their effort, all the hard work that they have put uh, to actually get this program uh, to the level, to the national level in the way that I have put it. And uh, we're very excited. Before you read that, can I just add, add to the Sure. Councilors, before Council President Rodriguez continues with the first resolution, I actually, um, I wish Council President and myself and Councilor the Rosario, who's not here tonight, I wish the three of us can take credit for this recognition, but we, we cannot. Um, we happened to be in the city council office one day, the three of us, and our confidential secretary, Teresa Vega, was the one who told us about the magnificent accomplishments of this theater program. So I invite Ms. Vega to stand here with us as we present these awards to the Lawrence Theater students. Teresa? Thank you for all the hard work that you do for the city council. Uh, it means a lot to us. With that said, councillors, members of the public, students, uh, the staff from the school, and everybody that is present, I would like to uh, read the resolution as follows. Whereas the Lawrence High School Theater Program provides a venue which allows students to develop this and displays their uh, theoretical talents while also celebrating the talent of their peers. And whereas the Lawrence High School Theater Program has completely regionally been recognized at the Massachusetts Education Theater Guild Market Award in Boston, in Boston for the performance of Evita back in 2019, winning the Best Outstanding Musical, Best Lead Actress, Best Dance, um, Best Dance, Assemblant, Best Special Assemblant, Best Hair and Makeup uh, for the Rent in 2023, Best Support Actress, and World Best Male and Best Female Performance in the Musical of a Tito Solo Competition back in 2023. Whereas the Lawrence High School Theater Program also recognized, uh, has been recognized nationally at the National Performing uh, Art of Festival in Orlando, Florida, receiving the superior, the superior rating for their performance of Jesus Christ Superstar back in 2020, uh, winning the Best Leading Male Actor, Best Leading Female Actor, Best Female Solo Performance, and their performance with the Wiz in 2023, receiving the George Award of Assembling of Excellence in Artistry as well as the best female soloist and the three, and the three best performance medal. Therefore, today, the second day of April of the year 2024, the City Council of the City of Lawrence and by through the City Council had by recognize and congratulate the Lawrence High School Theater Program to extend its member in every good wish and uh, comment Comment then in the numerous uh, accomplishment. Respectfully, this resolution has been signed by all nine councillors. And with that, we would like to open this mic to one of the teachers uh, that is here with us. It is my honor to 
have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Um, the kids are really honored to be here today, um, but I would like them to speak for themselves. So, Alex. Miss Vegas' son that she's so proud. She's so proud. Of. Well, good evening, counselors. Uh, we would like to thank this body for everything that you do for our community. We really appreciate the council for recognizing our theater program and enjoying all of the productions that you previously mentioned. We have complimentary tickets for our next production. Um, we are performing the musical Tarzan the last weekend of April and the first weekend of May. Thank you so much and have a great night. Thank you. So, counselors, counselors, we're going to proceed by reading the names of each of the uh, students that are here that are being recognized by the city council. The first one that we would like to call is Warren Acosta. Thank you. Uh, Brandon Almonte. Carla Almonte. Jimmy Alvarez. <laughs> David Castillo para hoy. <laughs> Antonella de la Cruz. Saviet de la Cruz. Kiara Félix. Now Teresa, Teresa will continue. Jaden Peguero. Carolina Sanchez. <laughs> Maya Salazar. <laughs> Janisa Rosario. <laughs> Devin Pinho. Kevin Reyes. <laughs> Neomaya Vasquez. <laughs> Amos Vashir. <laughs> Henry Metiver. Your shirts are really cool. <laughs> You're welcome. Jazlyn Fernandez. Ariel Fricas. Chastity Forsha. Brandon Hernandez. Okay. 
Nelly, Nelia Garcia. I think I'm mispronouncing your first name. It's Nelia. Nelia. Nelia Garcia. <laughs> Leslie Hernandez. Congratulations. Christopher Herrera. Congratulations. Brenda Javier. Devin Johnson. And Jalisa Lahara. Jalisa, I'm so sorry. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Jamaya Maria. Malaya Mo Moru. I'm sorry, I'm going to Malia, and you like it? Malia Mon. And uh, we, I think we're missing one. Right? Teresa, yes. could you please? <laughs> My son, Alexander Natarino. <laughs> With that said, we have the, uh, the, the main recognition of the, uh, the main resolution of, for the program here that we're going to uh, give it to the teachers. And I believe that the student will have something for all the counselors and the people that are here present, right? So.
Councillors, can I get a motion to recess for five minutes? Is there a motion to recess? Yes. Yeah, that it was. Motion made by Councillor Infante. Second of All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. We're in recess. She, it's funny because she said, Jennifer, and I'm like, 
Why are you clearing my name? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, vamos, vamos, un doctor.
Councillor, can, can I get a motion to um, be out of uh, recess? So moved. Second. There is a motion to. Uh, uh, there is a motion on the table, properly second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Councillors, I'm looking to request a motion to take a document uh, 382.23 of the table matters to discussion in conjunction with document uh, 39.16, uh, which is the, uh, on the agenda as an old business. Those are the, the two LRA items. So moved. There is a motion. Second. There's a motion on the table, uh, properly second by Councillor Reyes. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Councillors, those two items are one of the, one of them is the disposition of uh, of the properties. The item uh, two uh, three eighty two twenty three, which is the disposition of the properties towards the LRA, and uh, three ninety sixteen, which is the uh, which is the What's the item? 39016, which is the... Um, uh, the acceptance of the, uh, of the renewal, the new, the renewal plan. All business and table, All business and table matters. matters. So, councillors, there is two items in front of us related to the LRA. Both of them are combined. Uh, at this point, I believe that there is an um, underlying motion. Uh, on one of them, if it's not, we can open it up with a motion for discussion purposes. So, Madam Clear, there is any motion on the line motions on one of them? Um, on 382.23, there was a motion to approve, and then there was tables. There was no real discussion, and then. All right, there is a motion on the line motion to approve. Uh, this is for the purpose of discussion uh, to provide us with an update as to what, uh, what is happening with this item. And, um, and, any, and other matters for the records. Uh, at, the, at this point, councillors, uh, I'll entertain a discussion when it comes to this item. We have here the city attorney uh, that uh, are gonna give us an update, as well as, uh, as, well as residents of the city that provide uh, an important information when it comes to the LRA uh, urban renew renewal plan. Council President, just so that there's some confusion, which item are we discussing right now? Item 382.23, which is the transfer of real estate property for the city of Lamas to the LRA, and item from the, uh, from the table matters, and item 390.16 from the old business, the acceptance of the urban renewal plan. I'm, I'm confused, Council President. We, I, we took we're, both we're, of them as a, as a block. As a block. Yes. We take both of them as a block. One of them are going to one is uh, one is the disposition, and the, the other one, the old business, is the old one renewal plan. Sure, Council Levy. And we are just uh, we put a, we have an underlying motion for discussion purposes. Councillors, we have the city attorney that is going to provide us with uh, some important information uh, about these items. Uh, good evening, councillors. Uh, basically, what you're, what you're asking is where, where are we in the process? And the process, um, if you look at your, your agenda, in 2016, the city adopted an urban renewal pro uh, program. Uh, a result of that, there was a map which encompassed uh, many properties uh, within the city of Lawrence. Uh, certain of those properties were designated as commercial for redevelopment, for residential for redevelopment, um, and they're color-coded based on that. Uh, recently, what's happened is that the, um, the mayor has decided to take some underperforming properties and transfer them to the LRA. Um, and he signed an agreement, I believe, with the LRA. The LRA signed it to transfer these properties. These properties include parking lots. They also include... Uh, what they don't include, it's an A and a B part, so when you, just not to get confused. The A just des designates that these particular parcels are covered by the urban renewal um, scheme of 2016. The B are parcels that are not originally contained. Uh, the LRA is currently uh, looking to uh, add those parcels 
into the, um, the renewal process and is going about that process. So the only thing we are dealing with is the, currently is the A of uh, transfers and the A transfers at this point, the mayor has signed an agreement. Um, currently titles are being done on, that pro on these properties and the properties uh, are to be transferred. Um, I want to be very clear on this following point. Um, as a lawyer, a lot of people use legal terms incorrectly. They have very specific meaning, okay? Nothing that's done tonight, nothing that's going to be done tonight is illegal. That is a wrong term. We may not agree on the form, but nothing is illegal. So when people say, oh, you're doing this illegally, somebody's doing that illegally, there's no breaking of a law. No matter what we do, these are procedures for transfer of property. Uh, illegal would be if I stole the property. Uh, but be, having an ownership and transferring it and maybe incorrectly transferring it, there's nothing illegal. So I just want to get that because people bandy those terms about and they have a specific meaning and they do not apply here. So where we stand right now is that none of the um, designated properties have been transferred. Uh, the, the titles are being done. And there is a difference of opinion between the city attorney and the LRA on the proper method of transferring these properties. Um, the LRA believes that the 2016 uh, urban renewal program was an assent by the city council to the transfers of these properties. Um, the uh, city attorney disagrees with that. I don't like talking about myself in a third party. It sounds funny, but um, uh, my position is now, does that make me right? Does that make them right? Um, we have a difference of opinion. I believe that it isn't correct, but you know, we can always be proved wrong. It, some court at some date might determine either of us, but that's the status of it right now. No property has been transferred, um, but there is an agreement to transfer the properties. Council President. Council President. Sure. Uh, would, before I open, it, I open up the floor to the councillors, it is important to recognize the following. Give me a minute, Council LaPlante, please. Uh, it is important to recognize that we invite the LRA members to be here tonight. They took a vote on their meeting to be present. I believe that we have uh, members of the LRA on Zoom. And we also have the, uh, the, the attorney representing the LRA in the room tonight. So, and we have a, a member of the LRA, Sara Perez, that is here as well. Councillors, before we open the floor to, uh, for discussion, I would like to extend an invitation to the LRA uh, uh, attorney in case that they want to uh, uh, probably have some uh, some information that regarding this matter. Good evening, councillors. Um, always a pleasure to be before you. Um, I want to make uh, something very clear, and I, I think that we discussed this at our last meeting, uh, council president, when you were in attendance. Um, there's nothing that we are attempting to do um, that is outside of the scope of the approved urban renewal plan. And in fact, as I explained to you during the last meeting, uh, what we are seeking um, in terms of the properties as mentioned by the city attorney, the so-called Exhibit A properties, which are all uh, underutilized dilapidated surface parking areas throughout the city. We are seeking approval of the state. Uh, we, I submitted a letter to the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities, which is the office that oversees urban renewal plans. I've asked uh, that office to uh, 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 provide us with an opinion on whether the transfer of those uh, properties uh, from the city to the LRA would be considered a minor amendment to the urban renewal plan. Um, if the state agrees, then we believe that we can move forward. Um, because that's essentially the process. We have an urban renewal plan approved by the state. 
And if the state says that what you're attempting to do here, LRA now in 2024, um, is a minor amendment, then we don't need to go back through the process that was uh, followed back in 2015, 2016, which involved many public meetings, uh, planning board approval, city council approval, and then ultimately state approval. So, um, with that said, I want to I want to make sure that everybody knows because I know that this has become a very has become a hot button topic that's being talked about in various uh, circles. There are a lot of things being said that uh, are, don't seem to be based on the truth. Um, I want to make sure that you know that uh, I am not going to put my name on anything that is inappropriate. Uh, I want to make sure that this is all done by the book. If the Commonwealth comes back to us and says, LRA, uh, we don't think that that's a minor amendment. We think that you're going outside the scope of what was approved. Then we are going to have to go for a major amendment, which is going to require that full process once again that I think Council President, you note, and you, Council, Council LaPlante, you two are the only uh, members uh, that participated in that process uh, back, back then. Um, so, um, although the mayor has signed an agreement, nothing is going to happen until we get that state uh, response. And um, I just want to make that clear. Secondly, um, once we do, and assuming we do, uh, take ownership of some of these properties, I also want to make it clear that what we intend to do is essentially what any other active redevelopment authority in the Commonwealth does, and, and very much akin to what this body does with um, tax lien foreclosure properties that come up for uh, disposition and, um, and sale uh, to the public. Uh, we are going to uh, publish uh, requests for letters of interest uh, right off the bat, and I'll just read just very briefly an excerpt of, of this. Um, this is something that would be uh, published. Um, we would be seeking uh, uh, interest essentially worldwide from anyone interested in coming to Lawrence and, and, and redeveloping uh, blighted property. Uh, the purpose of this request for letter of interest is to identify potential partners or developers who have a genuine interest in and capability to redevelop the mentioned properties in alignment with our organization's goals and objectives with a reference to the Lawrence uh, TBD Urban Renewal Plan to which we have a site. Um, any proposed redevelopment of the property must be consistent with that plan. What we would be seeking from prospective interested developers uh, is the following information, organizational information, a brief overview of your organization, including name, history, mission, relevant experience and redevelopment, uh, identify key personnel, um, identify previous projects that you may have uh, uh, handled, including project description, sizes, costs, and outcomes, et cetera, so we can do our due diligence. Vision for redevelopment, conceptual and schematic designs, preliminary and conceptual plans. Um, preliminary business plan, including a pro forma capital and operating budget, indicating sources of revenue, required expenditures. General time frames for improvement, development, and our occupancy of the property, financial capacity and timeline, and of course references. All this would be done in a very open, transparent, public setting. We are proposing, as I think we discussed at our last meeting, to assemble uh, uh, public advisory committees, 25 person uh, public committees. Each councilor would have uh, uh, two appointments to that board. The mayor would have appointments to that board. We would, we would seek to have business owners, uh, representatives of the nonprofit uh, community, perhaps the Merrimack Valley Planning uh, community, and that would be an advisory board. Those would be, that would be an independent board. Once they are assembled, they would act independently. They would provide us uh, feedback on what they think are the best proposals uh, coming in for redevelopment of, of these uh, blighted uh, properties. And then, of course, 
everyone here would have the ability to participate in that. It just wouldn't be through the city council. It'd be through the LRA. But what have, I, what have I described here that is any different than what you would do with, with a project like this? Except that what you guys have here is a massive agenda every two weeks. Hundreds of items on your agenda. And I don't think this is the appropriate forum or venue for President. assessing redevelopment projects. That may just be my opinion, okay? But Council Vice President in front. Thank you, through you, Council President. I, I want to go back to what our city attorney mentioned, and also we have documentation from our city attorney stating that although this is exempt from perhaps state level procedures and processes, it's not exempt to our city laws. So what I'm hearing is that the city laws don't, don't matter. What I'm also hearing is that we have a city attorney that we are paying six figures for to advise I'm sorry, city. This is all public information when, when you know when, when you apply okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead. to advise go ahead. the mayor's office, and we so happily have the mayor senior advisor as your secretary, who's been knowing for months the concerns of the city council. So we have the city attorney to advise properly our mayor's office, and clearly, he has brought up various concerns. One, what I just mentioned right now about neglecting city, city laws and procedures and processes. Another one, that down the line, there could be issues with deeds. Secondly, I wish I could, uh, Attorney Corrigan, I wish I could believe you about transparency and procedures and processes on the LRA side, and, and this is nothing against the members itself, this is as a whole, but I'm already hearing rumors, and this was before this issue even came, to the city council, because one of those properties happens to be in my district, that it's already been promised by the De Pena administration to someone. They're not gonna tell you that, but people in this small city talk, and everything comes out in the light eventually. Yeah. So do not shake your head, because if this is true, everything comes out in the light eventually. So my question is, why are we paying a city attorney? I mean, I know why we're paying him, because he's great, but why are we paying a city, a, a city attorney when he is directly advising the city on what they should do so we could not so we do not get into legal issues down the line and i'm over here hearing the complete opposite i also watched your your recent lra meeting and i heard your chairman say, saying that that was the first time he has heard that counselors or our city attorney have it have concerns about this process now another fault on the lra side is that your secretary knowing this and having direct access to our city attorney did not invite our city attorney our representation for the entire city of lawrence to your meetings to uh, uh, madam vice president just just since you mentioned the uh, the senior advisor it is important to just for the record said that Octavian Spanner is the senior, senior advisor, advisor the Octavian and Spanner. And also uh, the, the secretary, secretary of the LRA. It, who is also the, the secretary of the LRA. So again, um, I, I don't, the, the fact that our own city attorney that is here not only to protect the city councilors, but also to, to protect every department of the city was not brought up by your secretary who is also the senior advisor to the mayor of this amazing city. That right there is a red flag. If that doesn't tell you something, then I, then I don't know what to tell you, but Council President, I rest my case. Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Vice President Infante. Uh, the next councilor that is here that would like to speak is Councilor LaPlante. Thank you. I, the attorney Hooten was actually mentioning his opinion and I didn't fully grasp or understand what he had to say and I was just going to ask him to repeat his opinion. He, you, you were mentioning in the context was you made an opinion and maybe somebody wasn't listening or, or no. you, you use your own words. I don't want to put words in your mouth. So okay. Express your, your opinion again and then what, what the reaction was. Okay. My, my opinion is that a deed of these properties must be signed by the mayor and approved by the city council. 
Okay. I think that both myself and the LRA attorney agree on that process. The difference being, I believe that each individual lot, there should be an approval by the city council. The LRA believes that the vote back in 2016 accomplished that. That that was the city council's chance to chime in and they approved it, so therefore they approve any transfers. That's the difference between the two positions. Um, and, and again, let's, I make no, no statement regarding, I mean, I think the LRA is, is a great organization for the purpose it has. That this is, has nothing to do with it. The transfers, no, I do whatever the council tells me to do. I, I make no opinion whether it's a good transfer or a bad transfer. My opinion is to the form. I want to make it a legal transfer. That's the only thing that I make. So the, the issues of whether these properties should be transferred or not transferred, that's not my pay grade. That's your pay grade. Thank you. So, so yeah, thank you. So the other thing that we had some testimony this evening from um, uh, Miss Superchurch, which dealt with uh, a property on Pemberton Park uh, that was part of the, I believe, the 2016 uh, vote. Uh, I happened to have voted at that time. I voted in favor of it, and I'm sure once I heard this evening, I, again, I don't know if this is true. Uh, part of this, but I, the, the assurance back then was this was supposed to be a, remain a park with more amenities. And the plan here is to, to move away from that and listening to Ms. Superchar's testimony this evening, and I haven't been able to verify with the documents quite yet, but that parcel is going to be utilized for housing. Now, had I known that, if that's true, back in 2016, I think we all know how I would have voted uh, for that, it would have been a different vote than a yes vote. Um, and so when the LRA attorney is mentioning that he is petitioning or requesting an opinion from DHCD or the, is it D, whatever the agency is, if you can correct me, whoever it is, for their opinion on major versus minor, I, I don't know if there's an opportunity for someone like myself or the council to have a chance to provide their input. To me, that's major. When you move the structure from what was going to be, and I haven't verified it yet, but if, if that is true, I'll stop there. If you want to say I something. Can speak to to it, I can speak to it very quickly. Uh, I would like to provide you with this information, which I sent by email, and uh, that's exactly the lot that we were talking about. Just, just so you know, Pemberton Park is not a B. Pemberton Park is already included. It's an A. And the other thing to tell you is just, I hate to parse, parse things. Pemberton Park is grass. The parking lot is not part of the park. I think it's important, parse away because it's important, but I also, we need to figure out what is the difference between A and, and B, one, one more time. For those of us who are new, and some of us sure. wrote it eight years ago. If you, if you look at the, the map, if you look at the map from 2016, it encumbers a bunch of properties. It has them colored in. Any property that's, that they're looking to transfer in those sections is an A property. Some of these properties are outside the boundaries of the colored in portion of 2016. Some of them, for instance, um, the Tomborello property is outside of the boundaries. So what they, that has to do with is that the LRA is asking, can we put the Tomborello property into the redevelopment. That's what they're asking. The B, when you have your list, you look at the Bs. They're looking to put the Bs in with the As. Gotcha. And, and so, so the question then through you, Mr. President, the question then is not necessarily, well, I guess, does the question also include what is an A? If, we, we know what the A is, but if, if an A is a park expansion or upgrades, for example, and and now that's going to be switched to housing. Again, is, is that I, to, parse your to parse your words, there would be no park upgrade. Remember, the park is grass. The parking lot is not the park. Much like if I want to build on that and I want to build over here, they're two separate lots. 
There's your park. I won't build on it. Here's your parking lot. I can build on it. No, it's, uh, what the city attorney was trying to say is two different parcels. It's, it's, uh, they're all included on the latest email that they're sending up to the state. Uh, and that's, that's there. Council President. So, so, so there's a dichotomy. There, there's a difference. And, and then apparently in the earlier testimony, which, is, which was leading me to believe that a parcel that we, are, we approved in 2016 was going to be for use, which was park and recreation purposes. And quite frankly, that's not necessarily true, what I'm hearing now, because there is asphalt there, and that asphalt is going to be where the building is going to go, not a park. Is that, am I repeating that more accurately? Well, you are and you aren't. You were, if you were under the impression that the parking lot was part of the park in 2016, you were mistaken. The park is only the grass. So if there's going to be improvements to the park, there's going to be improvements to the grassy area. I'm sorry to harp on this, but this is a perfect example of what we have to deal with here. So the, the picture that's, that we have, does the A include the asphalt and the grass? No. Just the asphalt. But my point, but my point, you're, you're, but, you're, you're buttressing my point. The, 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 there was no, well, I need an expert to let me know when this design was submitted to the council in 2016, that parcel that dealt with the asphalt, did that, was that promoted to be housing back in 2016? Council. President, it's in the map. I don't know if that was commercial, residential, or passive use. I, I, I don't have the map right in front of me. Uh, Councilor Plan, we have the privilege to have one person that actually worked on the plan, on the urban renewal plan back then in 2016. And she's here. She's a resident of the city of Lawrence, uh, Miss George. So I would like to open the floor for her. Uh, she can uh, guide us through a little more. Thank you, counselors. Uh, let me preface by saying I am not an attorney, and so I'm not going to opine on the legal specificities that you all have been hearing about from the attorneys, but I did Here's work on the resident. plan, and I am a planner, uh, and I was a consultant to the Redevelopment Authority throughout the process of creating this plan. So I want to just read to you some excerpts from the plan itself, which you can find. Uh, it's available online. It's a public document. Um, and you can come to your own conclusions as to um, the matters under consideration. Section 6.5 of the Urban Renewal Plan, 760 CMR 1203, which is a reference to state law, process for future plan changes. This plan has a time horizon of 20 years and may require updates in the future. The provisions of 760 CMR 12.03 specify two mechanisms whereby this plan may be changed, a minor plan change and a major plan change. All modifications will be added as Section 8, and then there is a following section that describes a minor plan change, which says the LRA may make a minor plan change through a resolution. Minor plan changes do not substantially alter the provisions of the plan. Minor plan changes include the following. Correction of typographical errors, modification of proposed language of zoning changes and design guidelines to be consistent with language approved by the City Council. Major plan change. A major plan change involves a more substantial alteration of the underlying plan, and as such, requires a more complex approval process. The process for major plan change is the same as was followed to produce this urban renewal plan. Evidence of a public hearing, certification of conformity with existing plans by the planning board, and approval by the city council. All affected redevelopers must be notified and given an opportunity to comment. DHCD approval. That's the state's Department of Housing and Community Development, now referred to as Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities. All proposed minor and major plan changes shall be submitted to DHCD for approval. <clears throat> In addition, Section 4.1 of the Urban Renewal Plan, 760 CMR 12.024, Financial Plan. 12.024, again, a reference to and citation of state law, requires six categories of information related to the undertaking of specific projects. The categories are as follows. A, estimated cost of acquisition. B, detailed cost estimates for site preparation. C, detailed cost estimates for all proposed public improvements. D, detailed cost estimates for relocation expenses. 
E, detailed cost estimates establishing the gross and net project cost. F, project budget including contingencies. Prior to acquisition, the LRA must conduct an appraisal of the property. 760 CMR 12.04 requires two appraisals for acquisitions. This plan would be amended by a major plan update, and the initial appraisal must be included in the updated materials. See section 65, 760 CMR 12.03, process for future plan changes. No appraisals are included in this urban rural plan as no properties have identified for acquisition. Lastly, 3.3 proposed redevelopment actions in the plan specifically calls out the parcel in question that is now a parking lot adjacent to Pemberton Park. The priority action is to create a permanent concert venue and stage at Pemberton Park and tie it to local tourism efforts. And I quote directly from the plan. Pemberton Park, a pro proposal to create a permanent concert venue at Pemberton Park was a recommendation that surfaced during the public process and received wide support. Figure 1-11 shows the existing parks and expanded Pemberton Park would address the current lack of parks on the west side of the urban renewal area. Participants in the public workshop identified a number of uses and activities they would like to see at Pemberton Park beyond staging for festivals. Many indicated the desire for an outdoor music venue such as the hat show along the Boston Esplanade. People identified facilities for visitors and kiosks that could be used for vendors at the festivals as other desirable permanent structures. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I would note that based on information I have seen, table one of the parcels for acquisition tagged for multifamily use include parcel ID 125-28, North Canal Street, 6.46 acres, Pemberton Park. So that is what I have to share. I think it's fairly self-explanatory and hope that you will take this into consideration. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, Councilor Plan, I guess that the urban renewal plan ex explained a lot of information when it comes to uh, the process to follow. So you have any follow-up questions on these? Councilor, President, excuse me. So you, you said you sent to us the, the, the map. What, what email was that? You have a copy of it in the front of you, and I also sent an email. Council President, if it's all right, I don't, other councilors may wish to speak. I'm going to relinquish the floor with the hopes of maybe we're getting it back later. Thank you. Councilors, any other Council President. questions? Huh? No, let me see if it is any other first. Any other, any other councillors before Stephanie, uh, Councillor Infante, take the floor? Councillor Levy? thinking of people comments that they're going to be done. So what are we going to do? Are we going to change this uh, for resident or we are going to keep it parking? What are we are going to do, why are we going to do like a parking and, how, and we're going to do housing? But uh, all of this integration, all of the new plans that maybe is coming around everywhere that we can see the difference and we can mount one part or whatever that what it was supposed to be on 2016, what is going to happen in 2024. Council, so that Council is Levy. what I'm thinking right now. Because we, most of us, were not in here in 2016. Council, Council Levy, uh, we have the urban renewal plan. Uh, it's available. Yes, we do have, Mr. President, we do have the urban renewal planning here. But me, it's yeah. not the same. Let me, let you me give you some clarity. Some kind of a slide in there that they are showing you. This is what we were plan when we transfer all of this property that whoever that was the council in here approved it as a full council. council now Levy. we are discussing, you know, new changes or new modification or new transfer. 
So that everybody can understand, that can everybody stay on the same page and still having all of the room on that out, that they're going to do this, they're going to do that. It's much better if we have a one meeting just to talk about the LRA, what happened in 2016, what it was approved in 2017, what we are going to do now and see if we're going to approve or no, whatever change that we're going to, they're going to be presented. Thank you, Councilor President. Just to bring some clarity to your comments, uh, the uh, urban renewal plan, uh, we have an expert of, on the urban renewal plan when it was approved. If you have any questions regarding to that, she's probably going to be able to answer. And, uh, and, and she provides some information when it comes to the uh, minor change and, and, and largest change to the urban renewal plan. Uh, this council uh, have this item here and invite the LRA uh, to here. We have the attorney. Uh, when it comes to um, any questions regarding regarding their end of the uh, of the issue, what what I'm seeing here, and based on your questioning, is that we should have a meeting. We are Special trying a meeting just only we, to discuss the we, LRA. We, Council Levy, we are trying to get some clarity when it comes to why they already transfer those properties uh, without council's approval, and and. I don't think that we even have the chance to have that meeting or any type of meeting because as we speak, and I hope that the city attorney might clarify from that, uh, those titles are being transferred to the LRA. Am I correct on that point? There, there is an agreement to transfer. There is no transfer right now that titles are being done on the property. Um, but I have had no request to do the deeds at this particular point. Okay. Mr. President, through you. Councilor Levy. Uh, so the property had never been transferred? That was an agreement just only to be transferred? Right, it's just an agreement. Uh, inclusive on 2016-17? Currently, there is a written agreement between the mayor and the LRA agreeing to transfer the properties. There has been no legal transfer of title. The title is still the city of Lawrence still owns all property but but the city the city the city attorney's office is working on those the titles as we speak yes as we speak <laughs> Councilor levy are you satisfied with that answer all right we're going to Councilor reyes I agree with Councilor Levy. I think we need to do a special meeting to review uh, point by point to understand what is the process, what happened, what thing was approved in 2016, and also what we can uh, do for the new item or what we can do to the new property to transfer or not, or if we have the right to review or not uh, in this uh, uh, item. Uh, I think uh, to have the special meeting because I'm not, be, I'm not here in 2016 and also we have a new college. I think every college had the right to understand the process, to know what happened with this property. I think we can find out what is the next Council. special meeting and now finish to uh, programming a special meeting to discuss uh, point by point what happened with the property and what does that mean for our community? So, um, just, to, uh, just to say a few words on what, responding to what you said, independently of the process that has been written on the plan, the properties are currently being transferred. So, uh, the, and we have Mr. no Kuhn vote say on the agreement. Item. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, he just said that they're working on the title to transfer those properties. Yeah, they're working on the title, but we need to, to understand more better the well, process. Well, we are actually understand the process. They're actually doing the transfers. But uh, it's not okay. clear for we represent and explain to our community. Uh, of course. Do you consult president? Uh, uh, council, council, council Luzon? I, um, Thank you, Council President. I think uh, we are going in two different directions. Uh, basically, they're saying 
uh, through you, Council President, that the City Council will have nothing to do with this transaction, my understanding. Also, I just hear the, the, the attorney saying that they are in the process of uh, doing the titles. So we are, what we're trying to discuss here is if the city council is gonna have a say in this process. And it looks like that, according to what I hear, we don't. But based on the letter that According to the LRA. The, well, yes, but based on the letter that I, that the council president sent, uh, the attorney's letter, uh, we have a chance to get into the process. Is that accurate, uh, council president? We, I, as far as I understand, we, uh, we have to uh, do an emergency injunction through the court. As far as I think we have to do, that, that's the process we need to go to stop this emergency uh, order from happening because otherwise the, 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 tr the transfer of the property gonna occur while we're thinking about it. So this is not about this council having an, an, an opinion or an a saying in this process. So it's, 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 it's about taking the next step, if I'm understanding this correctly. That's, that's, I think that's, that's the correct way. That's so the there's no way. need for a special meeting from this council no, uh, Council Luzon, we, to will, we will have a special meeting on the item once we actually okay. more clear when it comes we to We need it. Yeah. Stopping and, the process, okay. but not right now. My other question to you, Council President, if I may, uh, can, it, can we get an answer from uh, Maggie Church about the, is what she presented is a minor change according to her or a major she will, if, uh, she's, she's here as a, as a resident, but I mean, um, I hope that she can uh, guide us on that. It's important then to, to know that Maggie George is it's, it's a resident of the city of Lawrence and she's on, that, on those matters. Yeah. So in, uh, at the risk of being repetitive, I'm going to say again, there are two things that qualify as a minor plan change as written in the plan that has been approved by the city council correction of typographical errors, which we're definitely not talking about, modification of proposed language of zoning changes and design guidelines to be consistent with language approved by city council, which we are also not talking about. As such, acquisition of property, changes of proposed uses, not following procedural requirements, all of that is inconsistent with what the plan states. And I would further note that the state through Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities is the approval body for minor and major changes. And there's a number of things that are required to be presented to the state and the city council is meant to have a role in that as written. What so is the page of the section of the urban renewal plan if you have it? Section 6.5 of the urban renewal plan is the section that describes process for future changes and the state reference is 760 CMR 1203. It's toward the back of the plan. Any, any other questions, Councilors? Council President. Oh, yes, so, so basically what I, uh, what Maggie just explained to me, to or to us, is, is that we are supposed to have an opinion during this opinion. process. Not an opinion. Not a, a, vote. a vote. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. And unfortunately, this council is not part of the process. Unfortunately. That is clear. Council, Council, <coughs> Council Mamo. Um, it is uh, through you, Council President. It is very clear that uh, a lot um, so, oh, okay, um, that most of us are not clear as to what's going on with uh, the parcels and the transfer of these parcels to the LRA. Um, I want to be able to support my, my colleague, uh, Ana Levy and uh, Selena Reyes in wanting to have a special meeting to discuss this, but it's also very clear based on your explanation and um, our city attorney in describing the fact that there's already a transaction um, that is taking place robbing us of that opportunity to even discuss these items. So with that being said, um, I have two motions that I would like to propose. I just want to make sure that I have the floor and the opportunity to do this at this point, or do, do I have to allow? I will um, that, you're in order. Okay. 
So. Yeah, we, no, 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 we're gonna, we have two motions and then we're gonna open up for discussion. Yeah, but I mean, we can keep on going on the motion. Yeah. Was there a motion already on the floor? Mm, it's an underlying motion, but you, and, uh, but you can actually propose your motion and we will continue with the underlying motion, which is uh, presented. So the before. two motions that I'm proposing is to allow for us to have this discussion to even begin with and by freezing um, what's going on um, with the administration in transferring these parcels. My first motion is to order the city attorney to desist from passing over the deeds to the LRA. And the second motion is to consult an outside attorney to file an emergency injunction um, on the passing of these deeds. Um, and that would allow us as a, as a council to be able to even have this discussion going further. Let's do, let's do one by one each motion and uh, we can have a second on each motion and then uh, have the proper vote and open it for discussion. So do you, do you mind doing it one by one? So my first motion um, that I'm submitting is um, the motion to order city attorney to desist from passing over the deeds to the LRA. Once again, I'm submitting that as a form of a motion. That is a motion on the floor. Second. Properly second. Councilor Mamo put the motion uh, second by Councilor uh, Vice President Infante. Discussion. Discussion. If I may. Councilor Vice President Infante. May I just address that? Um, uh, Attorney Yedon. It's an illegal motion. Um, there is a separation of powers. The power belongs in the mayor's office. It does not belong in the city. It does not belong in city council office. You cannot order the city attorney to refuse a mayor's office under his function. Much as the same as the mayor could not uh, order me to not listen to the city council. So I just want to tell you, you can pass the motion, do whatever you will. It will be deemed, in my opinion, my opinion only, as an illegal motion. Uh, councilors, we, we, uh, Council Infante? Um, why is this happening? Uh, okay, well, now that the city attorney said Council that. Mama? Through you, Council President. Um, attorney Hooten? Um, so in regards to the second motion that I proposed, is that, because uh, no, the no, only... No, I mean, we're not there. No, we're no, no, but yet. he said that the first one was illegal. No, he never yeah, mentioned I mean, uh, the second. Are you withdrawing your first motion? Okay, so we're still on the first one. Okay. Uh, we're going to keep on discussing the first one, and then we go over the second motion. Councilor President Infante. Through you, Council President. I think, okay. So hearing Ms. Maggie Church explain the, the, the renewal from 2016, I, I first want to say, I, through you, Council President, I appreciate that you're physically here tonight being the person that who originally worked on this and clarifying things for us for a council that's older and newer. Thank you so much for being here. Um, secondly, the the packet that we have here that lists the the properties that they're looking to transfer. Um, I, I want to put it out there. I already. I, I mean, first, let me backtrack. First. I agree with my, with my colleagues, Councillor Reyes and, and Councillor Levy. However, they were blocking us from the opportunity to participate, to participate in this process from the beginning. We heard Mayor De Pena accidentally say that he was going to do an executive order during the state of the city, which he was not supposed to say, and he said it anyways. So this was the plan all along. Secondly, in this document that we have in front of us that lists all the properties that they're looking to transfer, I uh, know... Councilor Infante, the property is to amend the allowance uh, urban renewal plans going to the state. So on that, on that document, right? This document, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. correct. Um, so I know I'm not the only councilor that has met or has seen a proposed plan. A lot of these, these surface parking as, as they have it, which is how it's currently used. These properties are, are being used as, as parking lots. What I was shown from the administration were plans to develop parking garages and, and to add additional parking to, to our city. In this document, however, that was presented to the LRA, they're proposing these properties, all properties listed, to be used as a multifamily residential or mixed use. 
So, uh, but to us, uh, it was Madame not Monsieur, presented like Madame that Vice President, uh, this document was presented from the LRA to the state. So thank you, thank you for clarifying that. But what, I, what, what I'm saying is that when it was presented to us, I can, I can tell you off the top of my head, perhaps two or three of the entire list were presented as mixed use um, for, for future use. The rest were presented as parking garages. And so that's a lie right there. Council President, if I could address. Sure. Attorney uh, Ting Hilton. It, it should be noted that per the request of the mayor, on all of these properties that are currently being used as parking lots. Again, I have no idea what the end use will be. Whatever the end use is contained in the deed is a requirement that how many parking spaces are there today will be there when whatever project is built. So if you take a parking lot and you build a 82 unit house, in addition to the parking for the 82 units, let's say currently there's 75 spots for the city. There will be 75 spots for the city. So oh, that's contained that. in all the deals. So it is true that any of the lots that have parking, whatever the use is in the future, will have that amount of parking. Through you, Council thank President. Thank you. Uh, thank you for I the clarification, uh, Madam Vice President Infante. Thank you. Uh, through you, uh, Attorney Hu and I, I hear you and I hear <laughs> the man's plan, the mayor's plan. Unfortunately, originally that was not how it was presented to me as a counselor when they originally showed this plan. Yeah. What I was presented, the beautiful presentation that, that was shown to me was that it was, it was not said to me, I, I can only speak for myself, it was not said to me that the number of X parking spaces should be included in whatever development would be. What was presented to me was parking garages with, with a side of greenery and, and saying that this would be an opportunity for city parking um, employees and stuff like that. That was what was pre presented to me. And that is not what this document sure shows discussing at this moment. Yeah, I, I, I believe that Mr. the document does not state what it's the, the end result. I mean, obviously, they have to go out to bid, so I have no idea what the end result is. All I can tell you is what's going to be contained in the deed to the LRA. Uh, through you, Council President. Yes, uh, give me one minute. We uh, the Council Infante still have the floor. And then I'm we almost there, thank you. All right, and then we're going to Councilor Plant, and right after that, we're going back to uh, Councilor Santiago and then Councilor Luzon. I'm just going to speak to the motion. There's plenty of other stuff, but just to this motion regarding uh, essentially putting a freeze on your actions. What was the verb you used with respect to that motion? It would be what? It would be illegal. Illegal. There's no such thing. So, <laughs> exactly. So, my, my question is for. It, 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 it's an act that this, this body <laughs> cannot take against another body. So, my, my question regarding this is based on the. You'll prefer it, I'd call it inappropriate. Well, my, I, whatever you, it's your choice of words, but I, I, the council president, the, the city attorney has used very strong language here in respect to this motion. It is within your purview, of course, to claim that that motion is out of order. Are you going to claim it to be out of order? Once we, uh, once we have, uh, we finish the discussion, I will make a determination. I would like the councilors to have an opportunity to speak just like you have. So we have two more councillors to finish up the discussion. I will call that uh, the motion in order of our order once we finish. Thank you, uh, Councillor Laplan. Councillor Santiago. Okay. Thank you for coming. And we know we have a lot of problem with the parking law in Lawrence. And that happened when, when they when they did the presentation for us was about parking lot. Like you said, if we have 10 parking, uh, we will receive the same thing and how we can solve the problem if we give you the properties. The problem is still there. No. Again, I make no presentation of what that, it very well could be that some of these properties are developed into a 300 lot parking garage. I have no idea what the end use is. My limited involvement is the transfer from the city to the LRA. When the LRA puts out their request for proposals, 
they're looking for the best use of the property. I don't know what any of the, all I know is what's going to be contained in the deed that I am asked to prepare to the LRA. What happens with the properties after that, besides the fact that we're guaranteed those spots, I have no knowledge of. Council Luzon. Council Luzon. <laughs> Thank you, Council President. I, I, I love, uh, through you, Council President, the attorney likes to use the, the term in legal when he refers to the city council, but when it's about the, the mayor's office, he likes to take it out. Uh, as in a, well, it, it, it is illegal uh, in the fact uh, that you would go to a court. Well, I, I just made a, uh, a point. I'm not an attorney, so who cares? Uh, so uh, you are the city attorney. Correct. So what can we do to stop the mayor's office to keep? Uh, uh, so Luzon. Yes. That will be the next. The oh, next, okay. The next oh, I was. Can I? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Council President. Uh, if you may answer my question, Attorney. Sure. Again, I know that um, Councilor Infante will not like the start of this answer, but I wish the mayor's office and the city council would meet and discuss this and see if they could come to some resolution. I think that would benefit the city of Lawrence mostly. Barring that, the city council has the right to go over to the superior court and seek injunction against this process. That is their right. Uh, no, 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 just, just leave it. We will answer, we have the floor. Give me a minute. Uh, Thank you, Council President. Uh, we all my respect, Council Vice Chair, in uh, regarding that by calling for a special meeting and stopping the process, no. On the contrary. So right now, uh, the attorney said that the best thing is to get together and try to get a point, you know, where we all are on the same page because we really don't know so many things, you know. So see, we bring what happened on the 16th, 17th to the table, a PowerPoint. It's not the same that you look at each paper in here. It's not the same. That if you show, you know, a PowerPoint over there that show this is the different property, this is the different parcel, and that is what it was supposed to be done, parking, building, residence, whatever. Now, we're gonna change and we're gonna try to make something different. That way, we go, I think that for all, it's gonna be much better to understand what's going on instead of be talking, oh, they're gonna do this because they spoke with me, or somebody said this because they talked to me, or they talked to whoever. If we all see the same thing, we can come out, maybe with a point that we will know what is gonna happen with all the parcels, and we can decide it together, you know, if we should pass or no, those property to the LRA, if the mayor had a reason, see the council had another reason, and what we can do. We're gonna do an injunction. Okay, we're gonna go and do the injunction. We're gonna pass the uh, in transfer. We're gonna transfer. But I think that we should get a point where we all together know what's going to happen together and we can make a decision, we can decide it together with the same, maybe the same knowledge, you know, instead of talking in here and there, and he said, he did not say, somebody say, or whoever. But I think that we should come, you know, that we should invite for a special meeting, everybody, you know, the LRA, the mayor, the whoever is in the city council, and everyone just to discuss that I don't. Look at right now. Look at the agenda. How, at what time maybe we're going to be leaving today? <laughs> at one o'clock. Okay? And everybody have a question. Everybody want to go home. 
That's not nice in some uh, way. If, um, to my, Council Levy, if anybody no, from this uh, from yes. uh, Council Levy, if anybody want to go home, we're not holding anybody here. No, we are not holding nobody. We have a responsibility we, with well, the But public. we have also to learn to respect the other. So we have so many things to discuss. And we are only in the first item yep. right now. Uh, but uh, we should have like a, a meeting to just to discuss this and go stay by stay, you know, on what happened since the beginning That's to the end that. and get, you know, the point where we all together can work together how we should do it. All right, uh, the next person, we have anybody else that would like to discuss this under this motion? Mr. President, uh, through you, Mr. President. Uh, I think, we, I, I think we can uh, coordinate a special meeting because when we had the opportunity to see the presentation, what they showed to us, we are so happy to see the changes. So it, it's really important to understand what is that mean in these changes because when they do the presentation, you are so happy, everybody are so happy when every, every single counselor had the opportunity to see the presentation. And we see the presentation, we wow, we moving forward and it's looking amazing. So uh, when we see the presentation, we are so happy. Now we have a, a big conflict, but we need to understand what is that happening. What we, what we see different after that. Council Reyes, I think that we're missing one point here. And it's not like we are against these developments. Nobody's against this. What we're seeing here is that the intent of the urban renewal plan was mistaken because uh, we didn't approve dispositions on those on those and the urban renewal plan. And what we are seeing based on what I'm what I'm hearing from everybody is that we have one fact is that those properties are being transferred transferring currently as we speak. And I am not against so having a special meeting, but we need to understand that those properties are being transferring as we speak and the council back in 2017 on the urban renewal plan did not include or vote in favor of any parcels dispositions. And I guess that we are taking that uh, back, the vote on 2017, as a good and valid for disposition. And, the, and the, what happened back in 2017 was the approval of the plant, which didn't include a board for a specific disposition of a specific parcels. When we do uh, uh, dispositions, we need to take on a specific board with a specific language. And that's basically what is missing here. We're not saying that we are against this. Okay. We are saying that the mayor took uh, his pencil or his pen and signed an agreement with the LRA leaving the city council out. Uh, uh, through you, uh, Mr. President, uh, you answer my question. It's very clear to me. But we need to do uh, a special meeting to make it clear to our community. Because what our, uh, by President mentioned, our community is talking a lot about that, is making a different phone call because they want more clarification. Yeah, when right. we do a special meeting, when we review point by point, uh, it's clear to us and also it's clear to our community. Because we're sitting, uh, we are making questions, we visiting, hearing, and asking, what does that mean? Uh, we make the question, but yeah. we well, want uh, to Council bring Reyes. this information to our community too, sure, to then uh, be clear too. The special meeting is, is, is not an issue. We will, we will have a special meeting. I'm the, only, the, only, the only thing that I'm hearing here is uh, that there is some concerns that need to be taken care of now. I mean, uh, it's, it's, not, it's nothing wrong with having a special meeting. We, we will call on a special meeting if we have to. Three counselors can call on a special meeting. I'm pretty sure everybody will like more clarifications when it comes to this. We have no issues whatsoever. Because the only thing is that uh, we need to do, in conjunction, of, in conjunction of the special meeting, we need to do all the things. And that's what uh, Councilor Marmo mm -hmm. is, uh, is, is proposing, to have this thing, this, this motion that she put. I don't know what your desire will be uh, with the motion. 
but we will have we will have uh, that special meeting with everybody. We have no issues whatsoever. Thank you, Mr. President. Sure. Uh, uh, Council Marmo, what is the desire? I just want to make sure that for the record, because I feel like we're like beating a dead horse. Um, we're, I'm not opposed to having a special meeting to discuss this. I, I agree. We all should have a special meeting specifically uh, to discuss this specific item. I feel like some of us are missing the point on the fact that having this special meeting to discuss this is going to be considered null and void. It's going to be pointless if they're already in the process of robbing us of the opportunity to even talk about it. What's the point? What is the point of talking about it for them to give us a presentation about these parcels when they're already transferring these parcels to another entity that's going to make decisions on it? We will, we're no longer in the picture, which is why I put this, po uh, this motion to stop whatever is happening in order for us to even have that opportunity. Um, As a in order, before I withdraw um, that motion, I would like to ask um, our attorney, can the legislative body um, pass an ordinance uh, that trumps the transfer of property um, by executive order? So I, I, I'm not gonna address that. I believe I have a resolution. The LRA has agreed that they will not accept any deeds from me until this council meets in a special meeting, until afterwards. When Say, did you receive that information? Just now. <laughs> oh, just now. <laughs> he leaned in my ear while you were talking. All right, no problem. So, um, so I withdraw my motion, uh, Council withdraw President. Withdraw your motion. Just for the record, it's important to recognize that, Councilor LaPlante, at some point you were part of the LRA, right? Yes, I was. <laughs> okay, and Council Mamo, uh, if, um, as far as I understand, you also were part of the LRA. Yes, so we have two council members here today that before or during their time uh, in the council, they were also part of the Lawrence Redevelopment Authority. The intent is to make sure that we are working together. Did you hear me out, people? Together. All right. Uh, with that said, Council Mamo, we have an underlying motion. You withdraw your motion? Yes, I do. The motion is accepted. Uh, it's been withdrawn. Uh, we have a second motion you were discussing, right? Huh. <laughs> huh. The, the second motion was to consult an outside attorney to file an emergency injunction on the passing of these deeds. All right, there is a motion on the table. Can you hear a second? Second. second. Properly second by Council Luzon. Or Council Mamo? Yes, Council Luzon. Um, discussion. 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 Council LaPlante? Of course. Um, well, we weren't really sure we were going to get the, such a strong opinion from the city attorney on the previous motion. Do you have an, an opinion on this motion? <laughs> well, I would suggest that you could delay this motion since there's an agreement that no properties are going to be transferred until you have your meeting, and at that time you could take this motion up again. That's just procedural. But secondly, no, the, the, the council was within its rights to, uh, if they wish to entertain. Uh, the motion is in order. The, the motion is in order if they want to retain an attorney and, and place anything. But so that's, it's the council's. Council LeBlanc? So just thank you. So I, I just think I needed to hear that. Thank you, Mr. President. So I think something else we need to consider is. If we're going to go forward and entertain this motion and look to hire outside counsel, who's paying for that? Who gets selected for that? If you're Does looking, that to me? if you're looking, I'm not, I, I throw that out there, perhaps rhetorically, but I, I guess through you, the author is is who's asking because it's her motion. So, who through you, Mr. President, I'll, I'll to the District D, who who would pay for that, and how would that person be selected? I'll take the lead on that, uh, Councilor, Councilor Plant, since the question has been done through me. So before I pass it to Council Mahmo, uh, <laughs> it's like that's, that's how it is, right? <laughs> so uh, I believe that the emergency injunction and the outside council will be uh, in order to uh, any other outside council that we hire from the city of Lawrence, we approve every year over $800,000 uh, to hire up, outside attorneys. So 
if we don't have the opportunity to tack into that fund for something that the city council is looking for, which is the legal uh, brand the, um, of, of it, it's a legal, uh, how can I put this? Not using the legal word, but I mean, it's a, it's a the executive, the, the, the legislative body of the city, I mean, it will be uh, kind of challenging to not to believe that the mayor don't want us to talk into that. But he could definitely say no to, but we also have the right to uh, counterpart about uh, that decision. So we have a said on the matters because we approve those eight, more, over $800,000 for outside council every year. So if you want to answer. You have the floor. <laughs> Not right. Uh, I'll it's a question. To I, I, I believe I had the floor. That was a question to, through apparently to, to my colleague from District D that was not answered by my colleague from District oh, D. Oh, thank you so much. So, <laughs> what? The other question. I, I will not be supporting this this item this evening, only because it appears as though we have an opportunity here to have a discussion and some sort of dialogue, and to immediately this evening go from here to then start going and doing outside council seems to really be to be fairly aggressive before we work through all the other channels we could possibly work through to find a resolution. The last thing we should be doing, the last thing we should be doing is going to litigation on this. The very first thing we should be doing is engaging in a conversation with the executive branch and perhaps even with the Lawrence Redevelopment Authority and have a discussion to, dis to discern <laughs> what is our authorities and, and see if there's an agreement and see if there's a way that we can get to a, a place. At that point, we make the determination, is the response, is the discussion productive? If it's not productive to our satisfaction, then we look for alternatives. But this evening, to go ahead and start voting on this is extremely premature. And I would vote against it, and I would encourage my colleagues to vote against this motion. Should it be, it should not be withdrawn this evening. Thank you. Just, uh, just to be clear on what we are discussing today, at this point, we are asking the city attorney to uh, contract with outside counsel for this matter. We also get from the uh, from the attorneys from the LRA uh, that they are not accepting any deed. Uh, from the city going to them and then is that means that they are not that the executive order will be withdraw will be I'm sorry withdraw no it, it's it's basically saying that until there is a meeting nothing will happen between the two parties okay so what I'm hearing is that exactly what you're saying and what we are doing based on what you're saying, is that we can take this vote and be ready in case something else continue to happen because we have no control of what might happen eventually. They might say, you know what? We change our mind because there's nothing on writing. And then the process might continue. It's not gonna be up to the council. We meet every two weeks. So we're gonna have to wait well, two weeks to come back and take a vote, I think it will be safe. I think you would have that vote at the, your special meeting. A special meeting. Yeah, on a special meeting. It will cost a lot of money for that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we have a motion right now uh, to uh, uh, not ask, but uh, uh, ask the city attorney to contract the outside, uh, outside council for this. That doesn't, have, that doesn't have to happen right away. It will, it, it will happen once we need it. That's, that's my understanding, right? Um, I, I would just add one last item, and I know that everybody's going to snicker me at me at this one, but um, you have your own budget. You don't have to take it out of mine. You no, we, we don't have money for that. <laughs> you, you, you can contract. No, but that's not fair because, I mean, uh, just to answer to you, if anybody, any department within the city of Lawrence have an issue, they got sued, or they got something, they don't go to, the, to their budget to talk into that. They go to the city attorney's budget. Understood, but this is so too, it's, this there's is, no difference. It, it is different in the fact that I will not be re representing either side. Both sides would have no, to get fine. outside counsel. This yeah. is the city suing the city. Th that's different. 
outside counsel is someone from the outside suing the city. That's when it's in my budget because I, I'm, I, I defend oh. the city. And this one, it's kind it's, of like- it is, it, is, it is a little complicated, but it's, it's not different. I mean, uh, it, is, it is not different. Uh, the motion is on, is, is on order, and any councillors would like to speak on this motion, this caution. All right, at this point, I will call the questions for the, uh, can you repeat the question, Madam Claire, please? For the motion. The motion made by Councillor Marmo and seconded by Councillor Luzon is to consult, um, to ask the city attorney to consult with outside counsel to obtain an injunction against the transfer of these properties. Uh, it was open for discussion. At this point, I will call the questions. All us in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. No. 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 I say no. You have to ask. The, you've got to say there's no. If you, you just said if the ayes, you, you didn't ask if there was any no's. There is any no's? No. Roll call, roll call please. Yeah. Councilor Reyes? No. Councilor Marmo? Yes. Councilor Santiago? Yes. Councilor Del Rosario is noted as absent. Councilor Luzon? Yes. Councilor LaPlante? No. Councilor Levy? No. Councilor Infante? Yes. Councilor Rodriguez? Yes. yes. Motion carries. We have. Do you have a timeline or do you. Hmm? Did you want to provide a timeline? Or do you want to uh, the timeline. Uh, we, will, we will have a special meeting, and by that time, I hope that uh, we probably have an answer, not necessarily uh, uh, to go to court, but to, to hold the outside council. But eventually, we'll, we'll, we'll have uh, further details. Parliamentary inquiry. Sure. So, so just so we're clear, if I, heard, I think we, I know what the vote was. I heard what the city attorney said. He says he's not going to pay for it. Is he still going to go out and look for an outside attorney that he's not going to pay for? I just want to make sure he knows and that I know what's going forward. Council President, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the discussion uh, of, has been uh, closed on this. The discussion has been closed on it's the motion. We, yes, once we, get, once we open that opportunity, we'll, we'll allow you to ask that question. Uh, at this point, we have an underlying motion, which is to approve these transfers uh, for the purpose of discussion. We we'll still have that motion in place. Uh, and before we do anything on this, I would like to have both of these documents, which is the amendment to the LRA uh, Urban Renewal Plan, Amendment 1, that was, submitted, uh, that was submitted through the LRA to the state. And uh, that was, I would like to submit this for the record. And also, I would like to submit for the record, as part of these two items, uh, the, the memorandum from the uh, city attorney which include uh, section uh, uh, appendix A and B for the properties to be um, transferred. Uh, those are being submitted for the record. Uh, councilors, any other discussion on this? Could you also, for the record, get the, the urban renewal plan that was mentioned s several times this evening from Ms. Church so that we can have that? Because I don't think in all the stuff that we have, I don't have that, um, at least I don't have it from eight years ago, so it would be good to have it again. Sure. We will send that over uh, through email to everybody, um, and maybe to the entire city. Huh? Uh, we I, I emailed it back then, but I mean, we'll re email it. That's fine. Councillors, at this point, we have, um, we, we have discussion, enough discussion on those two items. Any particular, any other discussion when it comes to I'd like, like to make a motion to table. Motion to table, no discussion on table matters. Uh, on the table, uh, motions, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Both of the items have been uh, back to what they were on table. Um, so, councillors, we're going back to the top of the agenda. Uh, before we do that, councillor, before we go back to the top of the agenda, we have item 132.24, which is at the, um, at the ordinance committee. This is the resolution adoption of the Cherries Act. Um, so, councillors, hmm? councillors, at this point, uh, this, this item was posted on the agenda, which 
uh, indicate that it was uh, the the public was noticed for over 28 hours, and we uh, there is a desire of some councillors to pull it off committee. Uh, I will at this point entertain a motion to pull it out out of committee, uh, out of the ordinance committee, if the, that's the desire of the council. Item 132.24. Item 132.24, which is the resolution adopting of the Cherries Act, which we have people from the uh, public participation speaking about this. Um, there is a motion to pull it off committee. Second. Um, properly second. Discussion? Discussion. Council of Plan. Uh, so there was a mistake. It's, this should not have been on our agenda. Out of the committee, the vote, as Mr. Myers mentioned earlier this evening, was two to one to one. And in the committee, you need to have three votes to send this up. I can't explain why this is on the city council agenda this evening, except to tell this group that this, this, the ordinance committee, by that vote, it did not pass the ordinance committee and remains in the ordinance committee. And I would encourage the ordinance committee to continue to do its work. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, we have we have a motion. Uh, uh, it does in order, Councilor Plan, that um, we have an item, a motion on the table uh, in front of us for item 132.24, which is a resolution adopting the Cherries Act. Uh, it's been properly second. Uh, at this point, Councilors, I will call the question to pull it off committee. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Roll call, please. Councilor Levy. Yes. Councilor Pant. No. Councilor Luzon. Yes. Councilor Rosario is noted as absent. Councilor Santiago. I'm confused about the motion. The motion is to pull it off committee, so to discuss it at this level. The Cherries Act. Yes. No, for that we don't need a motion. Um, we just, we're pulling it off committee. Yes, I would like to uh, I'll, call, I'll call the question again. Uh, all of us in favor, please say aye. Aye. Roll call, please. No. Madam Claire, can you start the board again? Councilor Levy. No. Councilor Plant. No. Councilor Luzon. Yes. Councilor Del Rosario is noted as absent. Councilor Santiago. Yes. Councilor Mamo. Yes. Councilor Reyes? Yes. Councilor Infante? Yes. Council President um, Rodriguez? Yes. The motion carries. Motion carries. Councilors, we have this, this item at the full council now, item 132.24, which is the resolution adopting the Cherries Act. Before we do anything, councillors, I would like to open the, the floor uh, to this, uh, for the people that are proposing this act so we can understand uh, more about the acts that we've taken. Also, councillors, what we are doing, it is important to recognize that we are doing a resolution. A resolution is an official opinion of the city of Lawrence. Only the city council can, can do this. Not the mayor's office, not any other department. Only the city council can produce an official opinion of the city of Lawrence, and that's exactly what we're doing for the purpose of a, a mass general law that is being currently discussed at the state level. Um, I would like to open the floor to Mr. Uh, Mr. Thomas, Mr. Tom. Yes, should I state my uh, Name address again? Right okay, here. Tom Myers, and I reside at 550 Haverhill Street uh, in the city, and uh, I'm asking you to consider it as uh, the uh, chairperson uh, has indicated it's a non-binding resolution. The Cherish Act is a piece of legislation which is currently pending uh, in the state uh, legislature. And uh, what it will do, and I've, I've sent documentation on this uh, to you uh, through the, the city clerk, uh, Attorney Benal, and uh, a couple of the, the key points of it. First of all, what it would do is ensure for the 2024 uh, school year that every single student who enrolls in community college, public community college, 
would enroll debt free, meaning that uh, along with Pell Grants, along with, with uh, other contributions, uh, they would not have to incur a debt. By the fiscal year 2020, um, or for the school year, I'm sorry, 2025, the uh, program would be in place for every public college and university so that students would not incur debt. In Massachusetts, students walk away from four years in a public institution currently with $45,000 in debt. And many of you know this, either there is young people who have gone to college yourself, or else uh, is a little bit older who have sent children to college, or you're anticipating sending children to college. And you realize that the costs are astronomical. And so that is one of the, the uh, key components. Another, which I think is really critical to consider, is that it requires the state of Massachusetts to assume full cost of state salaries and fringe benefits for future capital construction, renovations to campus facility, to pay for uh, campus existing capital debt service obligations. And this is incurred by student fees, which is also astronomical. And what this will do is, is help students in gateway cities like ours throughout the Commonwealth. You know, kids from wealthy communities, I mentioned in my opening remarks during public comments that I taught in Andover, at Andover High for many years. And there are kids that struggle from Andover High financially, families that struggle financially, but not in comparison to what students and, and families in our community struggle over. And so this would alleviate that particular issue. Where does the funding come from? It comes from money that, that is already delegated constitutionally through what uh, was enacted last year, the Fair Share Amendment, also known as the Millionaire's Tax, which taxes every dollar earned over a million by an additional 4%. And that money, as I indicated, is earmarked for public education and also for public transportation. And so this is a wonderful way to put this money to work, to work for, for students and families in our community. So I'd, I'd like to answer any questions that you may have at this juncture. Councillors, at this point, I would like to uh, read the resolution for the record, so we all be on the same page. Madam Claire. Madam Claire, please read the resolution. So the motion reads, um, it's co City Council resolution in support of higher education for all, whereas Massachusetts public colleges and universities are among the state's greatest resource, and whereas our public colleges and universities are anchor institutions that are the foundation of our state's regional economies and are essential to drive economic growth and provide essential services in all our cities and towns. And whereas higher education is an important pathway to economic mobility and public universities, graduates are much more likely to remain in Massachusetts after graduation, starting families, contributing to the economy, and forming the fabric of our local community. And whereas, I'm sorry. Um, public colleges and universities educate the majority of students of color and first generation college students and give the US, given the U.S. Supreme Court's destructive decision on affirmative action, which threatens to undermine access to students of color, and whereas there remain significant opportunity gaps demonstrated by lower college enrollments and com completions, particularly for Latino and black students, and whereas ten of thousands of students in Massachusetts graduates from high school graduate from high school each year but do not enroll in college, and 700,000 adults in our Commonwealth have earned college credits but have not completed their degrees, and whereas 
new revenues from the Fair Share Amendment gives us the opportunity for transformative investments in public higher education that will remain decades of investment in the public higher education by providing students with the opportunity to graduate from public higher education debt free, providing the supports from students that are critical to help them graduate in investing in the staff's and faculty salaries so that our institutions can recruit and retain highly qualified educators who will be able to afford to live in the communities in which they work and whereas investing in our public higher education institutions means investing in the students, faculty, and staff who are woven into our community and our local economy. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Lawrence City Council urges the legislature to pass the Cherish Act. We respectfully submit it, and your names would be attached to it. Councilors, we have a resolution supporting uh, um, higher education, and this is an official opinion to the city of, uh, from the city of Lawrence uh, to the legislators. That's what we have in front of us. Any discussions, councillors, on this matter? Quick discussion. Councillor Plant. Uh, this is very quick. I'm not going to be supporting it, not because I don't think it's a good idea. I mean, not because I think it's a bad idea. I just think that the, the resources of the Fair Share Act, I think, can be better spent on other issues that are directly impacting the people in Lawrence. We have a lot of schools. We can all go through our city right now and look at the number of schools that need help, structurally needs help. And we're going to be saying to the, to the folks in Boston, the most important way that we want to see the money spent is for that. I don't agree. I think that we need to, f f we need to work on the infrastructure that's critical right now in our city. We built two new schools and we have a lot of tired buildings. We have a lot of growth going on. It's going to be very difficult to get another, another new school built in here. So I would like to see that fair share of money being spent on things that have a direct impact today in the city of Lawrence for our, our, our residents. So I, plan. That the, that's my opinion, Council President. Sure. Thank you very yeah, much. I just want to I just want to say to you that uh, the act was related to transportation and education, and not necessarily infrastructure. And and I think there's a misunderstanding on that. But it is your opinion. I respect it. Uh, I believe that uh, the council should um, have their own opinion and also respect everybody's opinion. Um, with that said, councillors, any, any, anything else that we would like to um, discuss on this? Councillor Reyes? No. Okay. Motion to approve. Move. Second. There was a motion to approve and it was properly second. I mean, uh, there is a motion. There was a motion. There was motion another motion. motion. Yeah, I second it. <laughs> <laughs> and just two on pull from committee. There was no motion. There yet. was no. Uh, there was a motion to pull it off committee, and we're still discussing that. So um, we call the question. Uh, we already we voted. We did it pass, and then we well, now we need a motion. So I just motion, a motion to, to approve to approve the resolution uh, of the Cherries Act. It was uh, by Councilor Vice President Infante, second by Councilor Reyes. Uh, discussion, Councilors. Mr. President. Council Levy. Uh, my question is regarding what happened at the labor of the ordering committee that uh, they decided or they, what they request for, for them to send it to over here before. You can bring the request of, that, uh, uh, of the ordinance committee and we can, uh, we can discuss it at this point if we have an answer. If it's not, and then uh, we'll continue the discussion. What was the request of the uh, Ordinance Committee, Council, Council Levy? To the vote in the Ordinance Committee. Council Laplan? Yes. The vote in the Ordinance Committee was two in favor, one opposed, and one abstain. Okay, Council so Levy, what was, have, the, what was the request of, that, uh, of the Ordinance Committee okay. in regard My, to their yes. actual request? Yeah, what was the request from the Ordinance Committees? Okay. Did so you have a request? Yeah, something happened at the ordinance committee that they want to keep it over there uh, on thing they get Do you recall what happened yeah. there? Yes. What happened? What they request? Did they request okay. something? So, Councilor LaPlante, do you have an answer for that? Sure. So in a conversation that we had with Mr. Myers, Mr. Myers asked questions. What's our next step? What can we do now? So we ex expressed to him what his options were. Councilor from District C recommended that he send information to not only to the committee but to the full council because the council from District C believed that there may have been some misinformation and that perhaps more education and information would be helpful. 
and that's what we left it at the ordinance committee. It's unfortunate that uh, it has been brought up to the full council because it should not have been brought up here because the, the committee didn't do its work, but, but here we are. Thank you. I'm sorry for my request asking you because you're not part of well, that, uh, yeah, no, of that, uh, of of the ordinance yeah. committee. I was my understanding. Okay. Oh my, I, it was my recollection that you were, but I don't remember it. But no, then, I'm I not mean, part I'm, of the I apologize for asking you directly what happened there since you were not there. Uh, we're moving on uh, to the discussion. Councillors, any other questions in regard to this specific resolution? The, the underlying motion is to approve the resolution. Sec. Uh, I hear none, so at this point I call the questions. Councillors, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Roll call, please. Um, Councillor Reyes. Yes. Councillor Marmel. Yes. Councillor Santiago. Yes. Councillor Del Rosario is noted as absent. Councillor Luzon. Yes. Councillor Plant. No. Councillor Levy. Yes. Council Vice President Infante? Yes. Council President Rodriguez? Yes. Okay. Motion carries. Motion carries. So we are going back to the top of the agenda, Councillors. We're going to put it here. Por favor, un momento. Sure. Mil gracias por esta resolución. Esta resolución puede ayudar cada alumno que quiere pasar para uh, las universidades públicas en esta estatal. Uh, thank you. Uh, a million times for voting for this, and the benefit will be for every student within the uh, Commonwealth. So thank you all. Thank I you. appreciate it very much. That is an official opinion uh, in regard to supporting uh, higher education. Uh, Councillors, we're going on top of the agenda, public hearing. Madam Claire, we have some public hearings uh, in front of us. Motion to pass thing. There is a motion to pass 10, yeah. Councillor. Yeah, yeah we we'll, we'll probably go. We go. Probably go. Yeah. Let's go to every everything else while they're here. And there is a motion to pass 10, Councillors. Yeah. Here, second discussion. I hear none. All those in favor, please say aye. Council, sorry to interrupt. Tim Williamson uh, on Zoom. Uh, excuse uh, we me. We can no longer excuse hear me. you on the Zoom meeting. We're muted. All right. Um, yeah, we, we, we have people here as well, so let's uh, let's talk about this. All right, the councillors, we have um, public hearing in regard to a few things, but we also have peop uh, people that work for the city that are here for other matters. Uh, we have the Budget and Finance Committee which is a few items that we can take right away. And we have uh, some uh, representative of the, of the city here present. Madam Chair from the Budget, uh, Madam Vice President Infante, Chair of the Budget and Finance Committee, please provide us with the report for the item related to the Budget and Finance Committee. Thank you, um, Council President. The Budget and Finance Committee met last Wednesday and um, the first item we have to bring up to the full council is item 121-24 the appropriation transfer of in the amount of seven hundred seven 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 hundred fifty thousand dollars um, among the ARPA slash free cash allocations and we sent that up with a as a committee report, and I make that as a formal motion. There is a motion on the table, properly second. Uh, councilors, any discussions on this? Discussion. Council, Council Vice President Infante. Thank you. Uh, councilors, we, so the appropriation that we're, that we're looking to transfer is actually, um, this was monies that was um, transferred to the cemetery department for a project that is no longer needed, so now we are looking to transfer it back to the to to the city. Uh, Five hundred thousand dollars of of this amount will be going to small businesses. The other 
portion, which is $250,000, will be going to rental assistance. We sent this up as a committee report because we did have additional questions as to how, what was the process, what would be the process for both small businesses and individuals with rental assistance. And we were supposed to have the acting director here, um, the acting director of community planning and planning development and slash or the mayor senior advisor, Octavian Spanner. I don't see neither of them here. Or, or is Sue here? Is Sue Fink here? Sue. Oh, I'm sorry. We do have our, our city, our, our manager. Sue, can you, can you come to the podium, please? You have the floor. So, uh, and you were there during the meeting. We, the committee asked for additional information on what the applicant, guys, it's really distracting when I'm trying to speak and there are conversation, side conversations happening. Council Infante, you have the floor. Ms. Fink. Yes. Do you have the information that we requested as to what would the application process be for both the small businesses and the rent for individuals for rental assistance? I was not given that information, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, another concern that we brought up that we were supposed to have additional conversation at this level was that the mayor last week that I personally heard with my ears was on the radio and mentioned that radio, radio show hosts were eligible to apply or to get funding from the small business portion. I did bring up uh, to, the, to the senior advisor that I do not believe that's a great idea as to radio hosts, you know, they, they play political commercials, um, some radios hosts are in favor of others and, and that, that's a whole fiasco and they should not be receiving city funds um, because of that. To me, it, look, it looks like a conflict of interest. However, no one's here to answer these additional questions. So, Council President, I would like to make a motion to table this matter. So, there is a motion to table. Second. Properly second. There is no discussion on such. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Uh, any no's? The ayes have it. The uh, second, the second item, and sorry, I'm here looking at my phone because I have my notes here. The second item is is item 123-24, the authorization to expend grant funds in the amount of 33,280 for the emergency management performance grant, which was brought to us by Fire. Chief Brian Moriarty. Now, this particular, um, just give me one second. This particular grant, is the chief here? The chief here. Is here okay, yeah. chief, I'll let you explain. <laughs> you have two things here. You, you were going to say it was brought forward with a favorable recommendation. I'm sorry, it was you? brought, it, yes, <laughs> sorry, I forgot. I was looking for my notes on this item. <laughs> I was here to remind you that. Uh, uh, that, partic the, that particular grant was for uh, automatic defibrillator and the electric car fire equipment that we are um, a new, f face the new danger in the fire service in this decade is lithium ion batteries. Uh, so we have ordered, uh, want to order some special equipment to fight those and some handheld ticks, what we call ticks, thermal engineering cameras. And that was, and that is being brought up to the full council with a favorable recommendation, and I make that as a formal motion. So motion on the table. Uh, can you hear a second? Second. Second. Uh, there was second by Council Levy. Discussion. I hear no discussion at this point. I call the questions. All of in favor, please say aye. 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 Any no's? Thank you. Guys, have it. The third item is item 124-24, the authorization to expend grant funds in the amount of 35,000 for, for the fire safety equipment grant. And the, the Budget and Finance Council sends that up with a favorable recommendation and I make that as a formal motion. There is a motion on the table to approve. Properly second by Councilor Reyes. Discussion, Councilors? I hear none. All of us in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you very much. The next item. Um, 
And the next item is item 127-24, the Lawrence Police Superior Officers Contract brought to us by Sergeant M Michael Samard. Um, the full, uh, the, sorry, the Budget and Finance Committee sends this up to the full council as a committee report and I make that as a formal motion. Second. Uh, there is a motion to accept the committee report. Uh, properly second discussion. by Councilor Levy, discussion. Discussion. Councilor Vice President Infante. Thank you. Councilors, this item was brought in front of the Budget and Finance Committee because if, if they were to have a, a contract in front of us, it would be the first committee to, to that the country would go before. Um, the Sar Sergeant Samard came before us to give us an update on that process and, and looking for support from the city council and he is here tonight. I, I don't know if there's anything different that has happened since that, but most of us weren't at that meeting. Um, so if you would like to say a few words, Sergeant. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Thank you, uh, President. Thank you, Councilors, for allowing me to speak and for also for voting this to the full council from the Budget and Finance Committee. There's no movement um, right now. We're currently, and again, I, my name is Sergeant Mike Samad of the Lawrence Police Superior Officers Association. I represent 36 superior officers within our police department. Um, we, we have a, a, an offer on the table with the city, our attorneys. We're approximately 1.5% away from a, a, a ratification that we're hoping that we can uh, get together and, and um, kind of put us on the front burner for one's public safety. Um, you know, I do have a few things to add if I could. Um, when I spoke last yes, week. Yes, sir, before you continue, I, you, you, may, you, you actually um, tell us that there is 36 superior officers. Just for the, uh, for the benefit of the public, can you explain what is being considered a superior officer so they know like what we're talking about? Yes, I believe we have uh, 22 sergeants and then we have uh, currently five captains and uh, and I believe nine lieutenants, so that's what the Superior Officers Association makes so up. So sergeants, lieutenants, lieutenants, and captains. And captains. Yes, okay. yes. Um, and uh, we're the leaders of the department. We've been uh, in the department the longest out of, out of um, both unions for the most part. And um, we, we're uh, exposed to more liability because of the new post commission standards that, that, that have been imposed upon us in 2021. So I just wanted to bring up, and I brought up uh, last week in front of Budget and Finance, that um, Mr. Ionello came before you when the Patrolman Union was ratified and said that he was frustrated that, the, um, that we only had four meetings for, for negotiations. Um, I, and, I, and I said there was some resistance and some interference by uh, former provisional Chief Castro in that process. And, and I'll point to two instances where um, most recently he, he mentioned to one of our members that if we asked for five, five, and five, the city would say yes, which we did, and then the city said no. So there was interference from there. There was also last summer, I, I made a, um, and again, we've acted in good faith. The city has, for the most part, um, uh, Mr. Ainel has acted in good faith, and again, he's the bean counter, and he's always looking after the coffers. Um, their attorney, Mr. McKenna, has acted in good faith, too. But over the summer, I, I reached out to uh, uh, the mayor's, one of the mayor's chief advisors, and, who I know, and I have a good rapport with him, and I asked for just a, a meeting with the mayor, just to kind of maybe um, sit down casually, him and I, and hash out this contract, save the city some money for attorneys, save the union some money for attorneys, shake hands like a previous president and, and a pre, uh, previous mayor did and see if we can resolve the contract. So the advisor met with the mayor and the mayor then um, scheduled myself for an appointment in his office over the summertime. And the appointment was to discuss contract negotiations. So I, I brought a, a fellow executive board member uh, who speaks Spanish and I, I brought him just in case there was some miscommunication. We went to our scheduled appointment time at, at um, 2 o'clock, and we're waiting outside the mayor's office. Our former provisional chief, who was chief of staff at the time, came over to us and said, what yeah, you If I may, if he's going to discuss contract negotiations in public, that is not the way. This is completely inappropriate. So there is, there is, con there is conversations going between the police department and the city. There is negotiations. If he wants to now play this out in the press, that's all. But private negotiations are not to be, re it, it, no matter which it is. If you want, I'll tell you what the, what the police said. But nobody wants that. So I'm just saying we are treading on very gentle ground right now. 
Uh, we understand that, um, councillors. At this point, I think that, uh, um, Sergeant uh, Simar, I think that we should we should just keep the conversation. Okay. In regard to uh, not necessarily any type of contract negotiation, uh, because like the city attorney just said, it will be important to keep those between the union and uh, and the city. Yep. Once we have an opportunity to read the contract. Will, and, and, and the contract come to us, I think it will be in a better position when it comes to uh, you, your position, I mean the superior officer position in the city. Uh, Mr. President, with all due respect, just like Mr. Ionello spoke to you last month during negotiations, I, I would be giving the same uh, ability to do that. But just for the record, we have the ground rules that we, that we have, and one of the, number three is, no unilateral media release or public disclosure until the agreement or impasse is reached. It should be noted we have filed for arbitra arbitration months ago. So we're at an impasse. There isn't current negotiation, but we're at a standstill. So we're not in violation of our ground rules, and that's why I said it at the budget and finance meeting where the city is on notice that we were coming before you, which was posted several days ago. So according to our ground rules, we have 24 hours to do that. So I'm not in violation of our ground rules. So just for the record, just like your return or your capo spoke, I'm yeah, the man, no, the, no. So again, we'll, we'll, we'll go with Mr. Hooten. To the mic, because then they, nobody will hear you. He, he's been put on the spot quite a bit tonight, so uh, I'll give him a free pass tonight. But we're not in violation, I have a copy of the ground rules here. So it's been very pretentious, let's put it that way. We're close to a, an agreement, but you know, we, we always get put on the back burner as far as union negotiations and contracts go. Um, you know, just for the record, our, our, our provisional chief, when he came in in October off the street as chief of staff, he got $209,000. And then two months later, he got a 3% raise. And he was never in our ranks. And yet here we are asking for, you know, parity to our, to our you know, our um, fellow officers in other communities, and we're not even close. So it's been a cat and mouse game for years. We're at a standstill. They're not going to budge. Our union wants to go to arbitration. I just want to ask, maybe we can ask for a resolution from the council to the mayor to say to the, to the CAFO, pay them what they should be paid. Because everyone else here is getting paid, as we know. It's, it's, it's a free for all. And it's frustrating for us. It really is. So again, um, I, I take exception to the, to the fact that you came up here and interrupted me when the ground rules are right here, sir. No, no, I mean, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I believe that um, at this point we'll, we'll definitely understand your your concerns about the negotiation. Okay. Uh, we appreciate that you're giving us an update. Uh, when it comes to the update uh, from the uh, from the uh, the contract for the uh, superior officers, we we would like to see a contract uh, in front of us uh, soon rather than later. We understand the the struggles that everybody is, is going through. And yep. uh, we, we also um, are going through many things, uh, but definitely we understand that what, what it means to be a police officer nowadays yep. and respect every, your work and the superior officers as well. Yeah, thank you, and, and again, the red flags are being sounded, but they weren't being sounded last year when 44 non-union employees got over a million dollars in raises. And that's the disheartening thing, is when we put our lives on the line, and, and this council sees it, how hard we work, yet we have to beg for scraps, and it's frustrating for us. Again, and, and they want to parody the, the Patrolman's Union, but again, we, we have more liability exposed to our members. We're just asking for a fair contract, and we're hoping it gets resolved soon. So um, if anybody has any questions, they can reach out to me privately if they'd like, and I, I'd be more than happy to, to fill them in on what's going on and what has transpired over the last year in City Hall. So, thank you, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. We, we definitely appreciate questions. you coming over. Thank you. thank you so much. Motion to table. There is a motion to table. No discussion on the, on the table matters. Properly second by Councilor Reyes. Uh, thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes, the noes. The ayes have it. Okay. Um, the last item. We will continue with the item. Um, Madam Chair, there is, there, there is anybody from that, uh, no, but I have. From the uh, uh, from the uh, vocational school, 
If it's not, I think that we should go uh, to the ordinance committee since we have a few, few people here. I mean, I have. I mean, uh, there's two people here. Like I can just quit people. the report on this. So let me. It's President, <laughs> and I have the information here. <laughs> Let me just We're finish. Stay here anyway. <laughs> All right. So, item 137-24, the approve to uh, the approval of a uh, four million dollar oh, bond order, to purchase to pur purchase a real property on Andover Street in Lawrence, brought to us by Ms. Superintendent John Lavoy from Greater Lawrence Technical School. Um, the committee, he he spoke with the Budget and Finance Committee. Let me, we set this up as, as a community report and I make that as a formal motion. Motion to accept the committee report from the Budget and Finance Committee. Properly second discussions, councillors. Discussion. Discussion. Uh, council, council Vice President Infante. Thank you. Uh, so councillors, so we, we, we did get an, we did, well, I think I got an email, but I did receive an email from the city attorney stating that we do not have to approve this. However, the superintendent insisted for us to continue with this as the three other municipalities did make a, did make a, a, a formal vote on it and that they did formally approve. He wants to make sure that each of the municipalities that even each of the serving communities that the school serves is 100% in and um, it's for him this is this is just a formality to ensure that the that the school has the buy-in for for all four communities that the school um, serves so this four million dollar bond is to purchase the Elks on Andover Street to expand the school um, with this expansion if purchased it will expand the school to an additional 300 students um, increasing the school's capacity to 2100 students this space will be used as a new medical center. They will be adding programs to their, to their day program, their after dark program, and their evening program, and that's going to consist, consist of uh, a medical assistant program, a dental assistant program, a health assistant program, an EMT training program, a paramedics program, and also a, a pharmaceutical program. Now, the way that this bond will work is that Lawrence will pay whatever percentage of students Lawrence has um, is what Lawrence will pay back. So as of right now, and this is just an estimate, as of right now, the Greater Lawrence Technical School students, guys, geez, I, about 71 to 72 percent of the overall student population on Greater Lawrence student comes from the city of Lawrence. So that means I'm not going to say about 71% of the overall $4 million bond is what Lawrence will pay back in, the, in, a, in, a, in a period of 10 years. So 71% of a $4 million bond is, is about $2.8 million. So divide that by 10 years, that brings us to, to, to $284,000 per year that the, the city of Lawrence will be paying back towards this bond. And that is it. Um, I know we don't have to formally vote, but I would like to make a motion to to uh, to approve this for for the super center, for the superintendent. Council Council President Infante, before we do the motion to any, we need to first accept the, the committee report. No, we haven't. Uh, any questions on the commu committee report, Council Plan? I'll wait for the next motion. Okay. Uh, at this point, I call the question. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any no's? Yes, have it. Motion. Uh, motion now, at this point, approve. I'll entertain any other motion. Motion to approve. There is a motion second. to approve, properly second, and I would like to open the floor for Attorney Hilton, the city, uh, the city solicitor. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Councilor Infante has already <laughs> stolen my thunder. Uh, <laughs> there is no nece necessity of, to take a vote on this, but a favorable vote would be appreciated by the but It, it, will, yes, it, will, it will be a formality, according to what you said, right? It, yes, it, it, this was an informational item only. They, they have an obligation to inform all four communities. There's no that, bond authorization, nothing like that. that right? they, no, they, they, they automatically get the bond authorization, but they, uh, again, I, I will defer to Councilor Infante's presentation. Um, I just I have one quick question, because before, back in 2016, I remember that we actually uh, did a bond authorization for the, for the vocational school. And we split it up based on the amount of students. So is, is this is not the same? 
Well, to be honest with you, there's many peculiarities, some of it we can't go into, but it authorizes them to get a bond if they get the school, if they get the building. Got they it. may not get the building, they may not need the bond. So it's not, there's nothing definite. This, this is just authorizes them to go right. for it. And this to councillors, um, uh, this time, if there is any other, uh, any other question, Councillor LeBlanc. Sure, so a, a very quick question, and I'm gonna put somebody else on the hot seat, not you, Attorney Hood 3, Mr. President. <laughs> uh, are we losing any, any tax monies on this, or is it a nonprofit to a school and there's no property tax impacts at all? I just think we need to know that. I'm gonna be supporting it, but it's just good to know if there's an impact. Um, good evening, Councillor Alexi Vega, Chief Assessor for the City of Lawrence. Yes, the Elks is taxable, and the acquired, if the vocational school acquires the property prior to July 1, that property would be exempt. So say that again. So if they acquire the property before July 1st, they are, they are going to be tax exempt in perpetuity? Yes. If they acquire it after July 1st? They are taxable for one year. Just for one year. Just for okay. One year. So and then they get the then they get they relief. Get the benefit. Okay. And how much uh, do we have? You estimated what that what what we're I'm going to say losing, but that comes across kind of negative. You understand my question? Yes. Uh, I would uh, off the top of my head, the Elks is probably assessed for about a million one. Tax rate is nineteen dollars per thousand. So you're talking about roughly twenty-two thousand dollars a year, give or take. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Chief Assessor. Any other, Any other questions, Councillor? At, at this point, I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Um, I can take a document out of the Ordinance Committee out of order so some of these folks can go home. Sure. If that's all right, if, of course. I'd like to take document number one sixteen twenty four off the uh, out of out of order on the ordinance committee. Uh, of course, you're in order. Any objection on that? Uh, no objection, Councilor Plan. Thank you. The ordinance committee met for document one sixteen twenty four, which is the senior tax write off resolution. This was sent up to the full council with a favorable recommendation to make that in the form of a motion. Second. There is a motion on the table. Properly second. Any discussion? Uh, Councilor Plan, can you can you give us an update on that or on intake? To what is what is this is all about? Sure. So I brought some expert witnesses with me this evening just to help out with this conversation. But I can give you a very general overview. There was a program that initiated back. It's arguable when it started. I want to give props for who props are, should be given to our city clerk when she was the city councilor from District uh, E was the originator of this proposal back in 2010 16? or 12. Well, it started in 12, but I don't think we got it through till 16. 16? Okay, so we'll go with 16. So anyway, so, so she started this process uh, and got the, this thing going, and it's been eight years now since we've started it. Very simply what this is, and, and Director Velez will go into more detail if, if needed, but it allows seniors over 60 who own property in the city of Lawrence to be able to work in a city department and uh, the money that they would be making, in quotes, would be applicable to their property tax. Um, and it's been a very good program. It's been growing over the years and, and, and Ms. Velez has all those details, but um, it's something that's worthwhile. I want to thank Councillor to my left for being a co-sponsor of this as well. And this idea came up from one of the neighborhood association meetings that we were at where somebody was asking about this and it just made sense that we should make it make sense here at uh, 2024 as opposed to 2016. Thank you, Mr. Ms. Velez. Hi, yes, thank you. Um, it is for seniors 60 and over. Um, it, it is for um, anybody that owns a home, no rental property. Um, they do work for the city organizations, city departments, and they come in. Um, we are requesting $1,000 to be raised from $500 to $1,000. And um, there was a question on um, what the uh, hourly wage would be, and it has been determined that it is by um, state minimum wage, so it's $15 an hour. So it roughly works out to about 67 hours uh, in a year, and usually we start in May by the time everybody fills out their applications and we finish by um, no later than the beginning of November. 
so they have all that time to work the 67 hours. Thank you. Is, uh, is Mr. Vega here for that item or so? Good question, Mr. Vega. Is this is 41C and 17D, or does some, this is something different? This is uh, 5K. 5K. Uh, 41C was approved a while back, yeah, uh, reducing the that. age from 65 to 60 and increasing the amount from 500 to 750. This is totally different. This is the senior work off abatement program, which the city council is, allocates uh, $50,000 a year to the assessors over the account. Uh, and we have enough funds, so there's no additional monies that we need to raise uh, on the recap. Uh, there's, an, uh, there's money available. The program is growing, uh, so this is a great opportunity with the reval coming up to increase that amount to $1,000 like other communities have done. The maximum you can raise is $2,000, but I think we took a, a, a made a great decision, Council of Plan, to increment it um, a little bit higher uh, and then look at it again in the following years. Understood. Thank you so much. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, Ms. Bellas. What is it that we're doing to encourage people to do this? Uh, we put out advertisement. Um, we put out flyers. We send it to elderly um, homeowners. We, you know, the tax work off um, program is widely said on the radio. We go on the radio. We also, um, we have a way of doing robocalls now. So, um, and we've kind of inserted, because of COVID, the um, voter registration list. So we will be sending out a robocall just letting people know that, you know, the tax work off program has been approved. And we've grown from, it started with eight people. Right now we have about 38 people. Um, and there's people that say, yes, I want to do it. And then once they find out that they have to work the 67 hours or 40 hours it was, they'd be like, no, I don't have the time to do it. And they don't do it. So it's really um, flexible, but um, it is, in my opinion, I appreciate that you're raising it because I think cost of living is very expensive. And, you know, I wonder, um, you know, how much an elder that's, you know, living on a Social Security check can really afford to pay taxes and also um, go grocery shopping and do what they have to do, pay electric bills and everything else. Councilors, any other questions in regard to this? Council President. Council Levy? Uh, so they go through you to register and you send them to, they work with you or they go to any place in the city of Lawrence? To, so, to no, no, no. Okay. So there is a process. You come in, you fill out an application, you have to be quarried, you have to, um, it goes through personnel, everybody. We also have to make sure that you owe the city no money. Like if you owe taxes, you can't do it. If you owe water, you can't do it. So it has to be someone that is, um, I thought it was um, I thought it was uh, so it has to be someone that you know can do this and pass a quarry and also not owe money to the city and if they do owe money to the city we, we start to work with them as the council on aging we start to ask you know why are you behind on your bills is there anything that you need can we ad address any concerns that you may have and there's been people that have come out and told us and then we help them to get to a point where they can pay their taxes and others that, you know, will just say, well, no, I don't want to be involved. So then they come to us and what we do is once we have the applicants and we ask the applicants, like, what is your passion? What would you like to do? What, what did you do? Did you work? And what was your work like? And we interview them. It's actually one of my um, senior work off person is the person that does the um, applications. We're doing applications right now. People are coming in to interview. Um, and once they've done that, then I send out an email and at our department head meetings, I say the tax work off program has begun and it's to all city departments. So anybody that's city department gets that email from me citywide saying that we've started and if you'd like to have a volunteer in your organization, let us know in your department. And then we match them and sometimes it's worked. There's been times where it hasn't and then we move them somewhere else. And basically, um, I keep a couple, but I always, if there's not enough space for, you know, all the all the people that are involved in, you know, the departments don't have the need for it, then I have them work at the center with different things that we do, whether it's programming, filing, calling, decorating, everything and anything that we need. But they usually work 67 hours during it, the year. It, no, it'll be 67 now for $1,000. It was 37 hours for 500. 
Four or five. Yes, but uh, during the whole year, is 67. About nine months. Yes. Because then Alex has to, we have to send all the information to Alex and Donna, um, the um, payroll person, and then they have to process all the um, paperwork by December 31st? By December 31st. So it, it is a process. I mean, it's not just like, okay, yeah, come in and... No, that's on the schedule yeah. that, I, you know, that they have the process, but I, what I want them to, to know that they has to come and they has to work for a couple of hours uh, during the week, or maybe one day is a week or... They, they make that determination. I really work with people, they, whatever they can do. I mean, somebody might say to me, hey, I could do 10 hours for the next six months, and I'm like, okay, what days are you available? And they tell me, and then they give me, you know, we're very flexible. Um, we also understand that people have lives and things happen, so... so but we right do tell we them that... We are increasing to $1,000. Yes. Okay, so we divide it on whatever the time that they already uh, expect. There's somebody, some people say to me, okay, I want to work 35 hours, and they'll do it in two, two weeks, right? And then there's people that say, I, don't, I only want to work one day a week, or I want to work four hours. It's really up to them what they're available to do. I, we don't put no restrictions on it. I love my seniors, no stress. You retired, you worked, you're done. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you. <sir. laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Councilors, any other questions in regard to this? I just want to make one point. So we want to do a couple of things. We want to amend this. To, Bless you. We want to amend this so that it's a it's it's a thousand dollars, which is part of it. But th there is no dollar amount. It, it is whatever the state minimum wage law reflects. So there is no set dollar amount except for whatever that is. If it moves up, it moves up, right? So it's indexed to that, that's number one. Number two, this program should begin starting July 1st. So I'll make that as part of the motion. So a July 1st start date for, for this, as, as, re as recommended by, the, uh, in the, by Ms. Velez. Yes, um, Alexi and I spoke about that, and it's really important because it would be FY25, and that's what we need so that the people that are working now will get their tax break next year. So, Councilor Plan, can you clarify for a little more when it comes to that, uh, what you just mentioned? To be clear on, them, on that, uh, on that sure. amendment. So two, two things just to be clear. Three things to be clear. Thousand dollars. The rate is the minimum wage. Start date July first. So the a thousand dollars is going to be divided by the minimum wage, and that's the amount of hours that they're going to be. Correct. Correct. That they're going to be working. If the if the minimum wage goes up, and then the hours go down. Correct. All right. Uh, Councilors, any other questions in regard to this matter? And, and just one more thing, just so you know, this it's a m uh, minimum of 50 people, so 50 slots, that's what it is. Maximum. Councilors, any questions in regard to this item? If it's not, uh, at this time I call the questions. All of them fail, please say aye. 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 Any no's? The ayes have it. Thank you on behalf of all the seniors in the city that need your help. Thank you. Thank you, Martha, for being here. Uh, we have a few other items, Councilor LaPlante, uh, for somebody that is here. Sure. We've uh, got a f I've got a few here that I know folks are here for. 134, 135, and 136? Yes, I have those highlighted. Okay. Okay, 133. Okay. Yeah, but I mean later. We, we don't so, um, but you first. When do when I just make a difference? I, I, we have city employees here. I'd like to get them out if we can. I, I, Mr. Vega, what are you here for besides are you here? Oh, you're, I know what you're here for. Uh, we'll go with if that's all right, we'll start off with 134 24. That uh, the, the, the full count, the ordinance committee met and sent this up to the full council with a favorable recommendation pending some information. So and that information is the, the actual ordinance that we are reauthorizing. So that is my, that's the motion. There is a motion on the table. 13424 is the number. Properly second, uh, the information that was pending, is, is the, the information current? Uh, good evening, councilors. Um, yes, yeah, so I met with the attorney Hooten uh, this afternoon and we did find a clause in the section that uh, was um, ordinance at one time, uh, but the position hasn't been filled in over two decades. Uh, I do have a principal clerk that we 
want to and need to retain uh, in any other community or in Lawrence, she could be an assessor. So essentially, the assessor's office is benefiting by uh, increasing or reclassifying the, the, the principal clerk to an assistant assessor. Uh, you know uh, what you just did, right? That you're gonna, you pointed out somebody that is so valuable that some, my, some another community might take. She's uh, been, <laughs> yes. And unfortunately, I've been getting calls from other assessors. Uh, you see? <laughs> and she has applied, but she's, um, she's staying in Lawrence. Uh, she right. declined the position, but uh, this essentially was um, supported by the mayor. Uh, I worked on the, uh, class, uh, the job description with our former uh, HR director, uh, and it was uh, classified as being in the clerical union. So we're not gaining a position in the assessor's office. We're just, um, in a sense, uh, reclassifying the position to uh, increase those duties that she's already doing. Counselors, uh, any questions? Attorney, you are, you're approaching the podium. I do. No, I, 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 call. I, I asked him. He thought I was going to ask a question, Mr. President, and he's so correct. So, the, so the, the, the ordinance is very clear. We are, for this and the next three, when a position is vacant, Mr. President, for six months or more, the city council must reauthorize that ordinance. So the very first question that the ordinance committee asked was, what ordinance are we reauthorizing? Oh. Some of them we were able to find, and some of them we weren't. And that, this was one that we weren't. So the very simple question is, which ordinance in this book are we reauthorizing? So the ordinance is not in that book, but it was ordinanced. It is missing from the book because, and you of all people appreciated this, it was ordinanced in 1887. <laughs> um, it has never been removed, and as you know, once an ordinance is added, it cannot be removed unless it is, there's a formal, vote, a formal process. So it has never been removed. It doesn't have a number, but it's been filled in the past number, like 20 years ago. Obviously, our last person that filled this is sitting in the room, but the ordinance exists. I can't give you a number, but I can show you where it was in 1887 when it was adopted by the city of Lawrence. So I, I, so I think we're going to support, I want mean, to support it this evening. But however, with, with this, I will ask for a, a gentleman's agreement here through you, Mr. President, which is this. I would ask that you submit that, whatever you have, to the city clerk. So I, what I don't want to do is start a precedence. I where we are We that. are authorizing, authorizing things that are not authorized. We need to have a basis. And I, I, not on my watch. I'll support this. But if you could provide that to the clerk, I will feel much better about this vote. No problem. Thank no, you. I, I agree with you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Plant. Can you also uh, provide the the uh, the actual listing of the of the position as part of it as well as a we'll send it to all members of the council yeah all right uh councillors any other questions or concern or any other um anything on this matter at this point i call the questions all is in favor please say aye any no's the ayes have it Councillors, uh, Councillor Plan, you have other items. I got some more. Uh, doc, uh, document 135-24. The Ordinance Committee met and sent this document up, which is to authorize the, the filling of a supervisor's position in ISD. Uh, make that, uh, send it to the full council with favorable recommendation and make that in the form of a motion. Motion on the table, properly second discussion. That was a, I, I think that was one that we were clear. 130. Do we have a number on that one? We did? Okay. We did or do? Okay. Supervisor is under the ordinance 2.64.241. 0.06.04. Got it. Can you submit that for the record as part of this uh, item? Sorry? Can you please submit that for the record for the, as part of this item? Just the ordinance. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Thank you so much. Councillors, any other questions in regard to this authorization? At this point, councillors, I call the questions. All us in favor, please say aye. Any no's? The ayes have it. 
Council of Plan. Document 13624, the authorization to fill the Assistance Commissioner's Health and Code Services for more than six months. Make that in the form of a motion. There is a motion on the table. Can you hear a second? Second. Properly second by Councilor Reyes. Uh, like Council. Uh, yes, this next item was for a position for a uh, licensing supervisor. Um, intensive search. I didn't go back to the 1800s to find an ordinance, but um, I couldn't find an ordinance for that one. So at this point, I'd like to withdraw. Mark? Hang on one second. Though. There we go. Around this one, the assistant commissioner. No, we just, they just voted on that. No, that was the supervisor position. So we're supervisor, on. you just submitted. One, 13524, you approved that one. That was the supervisor position. And, and, yes. we, and we approved. And now you're on assistant commissioner of health and services. So we don't, we want to approve that one. It's the so next, which, the last uh, one. Uh, uh, can you take the mic, please? For clarification purposes. Yep. Which one are we dealing with right now? 135 or 136? I thought we just one, 136. You should so be for on, 136, do you have an order? Should be on 136, and that's the number. We do have a number for that. It's 2.44.070. Okay. We gave you the previous one. I think you, the previous one was the supervisor position, yes. and that should be 2.64.241. So we do have an ordinance for that for, for the, both for of the, them. For the item 135 and 136, we have an ordinance number. It's okay. 138, which. We're, we're not, not doing we're it. We're not there yet. Yep. Yeah, we're not there. Yet. Just want to answer. Thank you. Answer. All right, uh, councillors, we do have an ordinance for this, and the council most authorized uh, this position to be filled uh, passing six months. Councillors, any discussion uh, on this? At this time, councillors, I call the questions. So all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Any noes? The ayes have it. Um, Councillor LaPlante. Item 138.24. Uh, the ordinance committee, and I, I just, I'm sorry that I just keep, here it is. The ordinance committee met and sent this up with a favorable recommendation pending a, the citation number, uh, and I make that in the form of a motion. Is there a citation number, Mr. Blanchett, for this? And I think the answer is no. Um, so unfortunately, I didn't find a, a citation number for this. And at this time, I think I would like to withdraw this, um, this item from your agenda and come back after we I'd like to uh, withdraw my motion ordinance. and now make a motion to withdraw. Well, we have two options. May, may I table? Table works. Yeah, a table pending preparation of a ordinance for this position. We'll have the city attorney prepare a new ordinance. I'll, I'll remove my ordinance. To, I will remove my motion to withdraw. I will insert the motion to table. Second. Aye. Thank you, Council President. Thirty-one twenty-four. Thirty-one, thirty-one twenty-four. Five or six items up in the middle of. Under ordinance. ordinance. I'm sorry, Councillor. Let me speak in the microphone. Thirty-one twenty-four is review and update of mileage travel. That's the, uh, the review and update of mileage travel policy, uh, ordinance uh, 2.140, uh, 240. We're just amending the. We just amended the ordinance uh, 2.14240 to we changed a few clauses. I'll defer to the city attorney if that requires a public hearing. 
Yeah, we're changing the ordinance that require a public hearing. Uh, there is a motion to order a public hearing, properly second by Councilor by Councilor Vice President Infante. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any no's? The ayes have it. Uh, All right, and now we're going back. If it is anybody else from the budget and finance, if I, I may, mean, from the ordinance committee, I have in the tabled matters. It is twenty-three of three seventy-four mm. on page that. eight. Do we have that item? Yes, item um, item. Uh, 374-23, which is the request to stay out of Diana DiSoglio, outed the Lawrence Community Access Television, Alcat. Uh, it was uh, put together by the uh, Council of Levy. Uh, and we have attending you with, with us here. Can, I, can we hear a motion to untable this item? Second. Second. There is a motion to untable this item by Councilor Levy, second by Councilor Reyes. Uh, discussion, I hear none. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any no's? The ayes have it. Uh, Attorney Hilton, please give us an update on this item. Item 173-23. So, uh, uh, the, the, itself, it, it seemed like a great idea until it came into practice. Uh, what happens is when we contact it, uh, the Zaglia's office, they cannot um, do a, uh, an audit of the um, LCAT, but what they will do is they will audit the city of Lawrence and charge us $30,000. Um, so I would recommend that we dismiss this so that A, we're not subject to an audit, because uh, that's not what we wanted to do and we don't have to pay the $30,000. When it comes to the audit uh, to the city of Lawrence, what do they mean? So they would audit our books of money we received from um, the uh, for, for our transmission of the um, cable, what we've spent our money on, you know, what Anything we did related to the cable. If we if we bought new cameras, they'd audit all that, which is not what we wanted. We wanted to audit LCAT. We wanted to. All right. Councilors, any questions regarding regarding to this item? Um, Mr. Councilor Levy. Okay, so I spoke with uh, Mr. Ms. De Soglio, and what she said that it's going to cost about is. $10,000, and what they're going to do is to audit the, the contract. So they want to look on the contract, and they're going to see practically, you know, what was right for the city and what was right for the, the company, the Elka company. But still, I know that she is coming this, I think so that this week, and to practically to let her know what is going to be out and what is not going to be out but at the cost is not she never mentioned thirty thousand she said it's going to go approximately ten thousand dollars right which but are they whatever I, I, issue because we are not getting money from the state or federal that's why they can no um out it that, that part. right so it would it would not help us in any event. It, it, what we want at LCAT is to see what they've done with our money. That's the one thing this audit will not do. They don't have to review their books. They don't have to show the state anything. They would review what we did. And maybe they might find something that we did wrong, but I, I, it doesn't make sense to audit ourselves um, because we pay, we pay taxpayer money to audit us. We want the LCAT to find out what they, I mean, that's the purpose of it was to determine. So I, I think, it, my opinion is it should be dismissed because they're going to audit us if we don't dismiss it. Councilor LeBlanc. And is Le oh, no, he's still here. <laughs> I mean, if we wanted to, we've already paid the auditor, our auditor, that we do the annual audit. Um, if rather than paying 10,000, I mean, there is the possibility of. We are audited every year, and on your agenda tonight under new business is the FY23 audit. So, and so that would inc that, that could include or does include that if we. That includes all city expenditures, all city grants and funds that we have, but does not include anything for LCAP because they're a separate entity. Remember, LCAP was getting their checks directly from Comcast to the nonprofit LCAP. 
So the state auditor can't audit a nonprofit. I get, I get the through you. I get the why the auditor can't do it. I'm just wondering if our own auditors would would do. Would, would they, but again, that that would be us and not them. And the whole point of this was to figure out what are they doing with the money that we're giving to them to do the work that they're supposed to be doing. What are they spending the money on? And that's the reason why I think we were starting this whole process. And so, uh, even if. So I was, I was thinking there may be a way for us to encapsulate that, but no, that's not going to work that way because why? It'd be our books. We want to know what LCAT is, is doing with, with, the, with these, I'm going to call it public dollars, right? Because it's filtered through us to them. Right. Got it. Thank you. Council President. Uh, Council, Council of Especially Infante. Thank you. Through you, um, Attorney Hu and is the city required to have a nonprofit specifically to run our, our channels? No, we're, there's two, two ways of doing it. We can have a city department. Many cities have their own cable company located, so it would be city employees. Instead of being the Department of Public Works, it would be the Department of Cable. So you can do it that way, or you can hire an outside nonprofit, both ways. Uh, and our like, school department does it anyway, so there's just three. Just like the school, that was, I was going to say that. Is there? Council, 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 I'll pass it over. I'm sorry, Council, Council Levy, Levy, we have three, you, you, you won't. We have three channels, uh, yes. I will, sh I will share the floor, we have three channels. Yeah. So, all right, uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, the three channels, Council Infante, in case that, it, that might be a little bit of clarification. Uh, we have the educational channel, we have the community channel, and we have the government channel, those three. One of them, it's been run by the school department currently. The other, the other one, I don't know, is as the government, the one that we actually run in the city council meetings, right? So in the community is the one that the LCAT used to run, right? Yes, uh, right now, technically, no one is running the other two. The, the government channel, you are putting through YouTube. It's not really through the, uh, the proper channel. Uh, we're looking to purchase that, some equipment to change that. Understood. Thank you so much. Thank you for the clarification. That's one of the questions that we have in public here and public participation today. Uh, Councillors, at this point, I entertain any motions in regard to this item. Motion to table. Second. There is a motion to table, properly second. No discussion on the table matters. Uh, all of just all so the board understands, tabling this means we're getting audited. Understood. Uh, there is a motion on the table, no discussion on the motion to table. Okay, may I make a comment? If you want to withdraw your motion, we can you draw it, but uh, no discussion on the table matters. I'm going to withdraw the motions because is, I the motion to the table to is being withdrawn. Now, councillors, I entertain any other motion. Motion to withdraw. I want it. <laughs> All right, there is a motion to withdraw, properly second. Can I hear who second the motion? No. Just for the record. Second. Anna Levy or Luzon? Luzon seconded, so you got, we got it for the record. So did you make the motion to withdraw? Oh, Luzon make the motion to withdraw. Who second the motion? No. I will if no one else will. And then Council Laplan would uh, second the motion. Discussion. I hear no discussion. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Any no's? Discussion. I say discussion. discussion. Council Levy. Got to hurry up because we need, we you no, just said I it have a question. You say that if we table, if we table this, uh, I don't, it's going to be the audit. But I feel like I say, Ms. Dexoglio is coming this week to speak, you know, with the mayor, as far as I know. And they haven't made any decision regarding the audit. So I think so that we are getting a from before no, the, talking. If, so the, if, if you vote, the state auditor will not come. She's saying the state auditor is coming this week. If we vote to dismiss this item, the state auditor will not come. 
She is coming. I'm sorry, but she is she's coming. She, she, may, she may arrive. She's not doing an audit. Let me be that specific. Okay. She can so come and talk to them. As far as I know, so I'm Levy, sorry. Let me ask you a uh, question. Do you, you want do you do you want the city to be audited? That's the question. If you desire that, and then we should keep a table as you as you desire, and then they're going to audit the city of Lawrence. If it's not, and then we should do what been I've been asked to. Mr. President, through you. Okay, so a city is not being decided any audit at this moment. And so, and so Levy, you wish to make a table to table? I suppose we miss the soglio, and it's no. Huh? I'm in discussion. I suppose we miss the soglio, and it's, it's been not decided to do any audit until she has this meeting that is coming this week. And so, Levy, do you wish to table? That is what I say, motion to table. There is a motion to table. Can you hear a second? Second. Properly second. No discussion on the table matters. All those in favor, please say aye. Roll call. Roll call, please. Councilor Levy. Yes. Councilor LaPlante. No. Councilor Luzon. No. Council Del Rosario is noted as absent. Council Santiago. Yes. Council Marmo. No. Council Selena Reyes. Uh, no. Council Vice President Infante. No. Council President Rodriguez. No. Motion fails. Now we'll have an underlying motion, which is uh, a motion to withdraw. Uh, councilors, uh, if it is any other discussion in the motion to withdraw, I'll call the question. Any discussion? I hear none, so at this point I call the question to withdraw. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 No. Mm, um, Rocco, please. Uh, Rocco, please. Councilor Selena? Yes. Councilor Mamo? Yes. Councilor Santiago? Yes. Councilor Del Rosario is noted as absent. Council Luzon? Yes. Council LaPlante? Yes. yes. Council Levy? No. Council Vice President Infante? Yes. Council President Rodriguez? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, councilors, any other, uh, before we go to the top of the agenda, any other items from that, um, from that uh, ordinance committee that we'd like to, to take? Uh, 133 is still here. Uh, and then we have uh, all the items that are in the public I hearing. Have to let I get a motion to pass 11. 11. I, uh, there is a motion to disable properly second discussion. I hear none. All those in favor, please say, please say aye. 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 Any no's? The ayes have it. Uh, 133.24, which is the proposal to allow retail sale of cannabis within the uh, Lawrence uh, city limits. Uh, they are here. Uh, I don't know if you want to, Councilor Plan, do you, do you wish us to take this item out of the Sure, out right, of Council order? President, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, what's the number again? I remember the motion. 132.24. That was, uh, the motion was to withdraw. 133.24, the, the right, recommendation thank you. was this, uh, The Ordinance Committee met on 133.24. This is a proposal to allow retail sale of cannabis within the Lawrence City limits. The Ordinance Committee voted unanimously to withdraw this item and make that in the form of a motion. There is a motion to withdraw. Properly second. Discussion. Discussion. Uh, Councilor Vice President Infante. Thank you. Um, through you, Chair. Councilor LaPlante, can you, can you let us... Can you explain why the, the committee voted to withdraw this, please? I cannot, and I'll tell you why. Each committee member, as you know, has their own reasons. They may or may not say their reasons during their vote, so I can't explain why each councilor voted the way they did. So, so, there, so there was just, it, so it wasn't this, this is a new item for this year, so it wasn't even discussed. There wasn't. Nope, I wouldn't, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, no, it's okay. Um, what's, so there was no discussion at all pertaining this item. It was just motion to withdraw. That's it. So, so, so there's a lot of things happening here. Number one, 
um, the vice chair is correct. Uh, there was nobody here to speak on it. Number two, oftentimes, if you've been to an ordinance committee meeting, you will know that uh, there are times where counselors either will know, well, I mean, they have their reasons. So I'm not going to go into why counselors do what counselors do. Um, but they felt comfortable enough with the materials in front to vote the way they did, and I can't speak, I can't speak beyond that. All right, uh, Madam, Madam Vice Chair, uh, Madam Vice President Infante, uh, do you wish us to ask questions to the proponents they here tonight? I, I would like to comment on this item. <laughs> well, okay, you uh, open because for they comments. are here tonight. I, yeah. I think it's great to hear from you guys. So. So okay, you, let's let's open the floor to them. Uh, they for out of the respect that uh, that, uh, that uh, as a proponent they deserve. Uh, welcome to the Alarm City Council. Name and address for the record. Yes, can and, I ask you? Uh, please, you have the floor to explain item 13324, which is the proposal to allow retail sale of cannabis within the Alarm City limits. Thank you. Um, yes, my name is Andre Colon. I'm from Canal Street. Mm -hmm. um, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed city leaders. My name is Andre Colon. Today, as we stand united in our community, let us remember it's not about the challenges we face, but about the resilience we show in overcoming them. Together, we have the power to turn obstacles into opportunity, doubts into determination, and dreams into reality. Let this gathering ignite our spirits, fuel our passions, and propel us forward on a journey of collective growth and prosperity. For in our city, in our unity, lies the strength to shape a, fu a future filled with hope, compassion, and boundless possibilities. Let, let's embark on the, this journey together, inspired by the belief that our actions today will create a brighter tomorrow for generations to come. I stand before you today with a vision, a vision for the future of our beloved city of Lawrence. As we navigate a complex landscape of community development and progress, it's imperative that we come together to explore new opportunities for growth and prosperity. One such opportunity lies in the establishment of cannabis retail within our city limits. I understand that this may be a controversial topic for some, but I urge you to consider the potential benefits it could bring to our community. First and foremost, let's talk about the financial benefits. The cannabis industry is booming, and by allowing retail establishments in Lawrence, we have the opportunity to tap into this lucrative market. Through taxes, licensing fees, and other revenue streams, we can inject much needed funds into our city's coffers, enabling us to invest in vital public services, infrastructure, and community programs. But it's not just about the money. The economic benefits of cannabis retail are vast. By creating new businesses and, op and job opportunities, we can stimulate economic growth, reduce unemployment, and improve the overall prosperity of our residents. Moreover, studies have shown that the presence of legal cannabis dispensaries can actually raise property values in surrounding areas. This means increased equity for homeowners and more vibrant real estate market for our city. Of course, I understand that education and transparency are key. That's why I'm committed to working closely with city leaders, church leaders, and community stakeholders to ensure that the establishment of cannabis retail is done in a responsible and transparent manner. We will prioritize education campaigns to inform residents about the potential benefits and risk of cannabis use, as well as the regulations surrounding its sale and consumption. By fostering open dialogue and providing accurate information, we can empower our community to make informed decisions. So as we unite with a single voice alongside with city residents, um, business owners, who are already dedicated to fostering economic development within our community, I respectfully urge the city to place the question of permitting cannabis establishments on the ballot for residents to vote on. In closing, I invite you to join me in this journey towards a brighter future for Lawrence. Let's work together to embrace the opportunities that cannabis retail can bring while also ensuring the well-being and prosperity of our residents. Shouldn't we aspire to leave a better place than we inherited? Thank you, and I thank you again for your attention, and I look forward for your support in this endeavor. Thank you. Council President, do I still have the floor? Thank you. I, first, um, Many of my colleagues may have a different opinion than I do, but I first want to applaud you guys for coming in front of the city council um, because we do have a more uh, overall, and I might, I'm, I'm going to just say it, overall as a community, we do have a, a more old school mentality. However, the, the average age of the city's population is 32 years old. So most of 
our residents are within the millennial age. Um, within conversations that I've had within that age bracket, um, people see the benefits, the tax benefits of this. People see, well, the financial benefits. Um, we've we've had deba we've had debates within um, within our within our groups about seeing billboards of other uh, cannabis stores being advertised here in Lawrence, and yet Lawrence does not have a piece of the pie. I've I've read multiple. Um, business articles on the growth of, of the cannabis industry and, and all of that. So I'm, I'm speaking because I've, I've done research on this because I've also never understood why the city of Lawrence did not jump on this when it was first legally, when the state first legally approved. And we may have different conversations to, to we, might, we might have had different conversations today about financial resources when we need to fix a school or something if we've had another tax revenue benefit. Uh, so, uh, but again, this is a much bigger conversation that requires a lot of, that requires a huge educational component. Um, I do believe, I, I don't know if coming straight to the city council is the right way of doing it. I, I think there, there is a whole community benefit, um, community forums, uh, partnering with other, um, organizations, uh, other groups that do want to see this and are willing to put in the effort to make sure that that educational piece of this industry is brought into our communities. Yes. So that's something that to be looked into as well. I'm sure you guys already have, but just to put it out there. Thank you, Councilor. Councilors, any other questions in regard to this item? The item, the underlying motion for the item is to, is to withdraw. So, councillors, any, uh, any questions uh, on this item? Council Mamo. Council President, at, at this point, my, my question is directed to you uh, or our, um, our chairperson for the Ordinance Committee as to where do, how do we move forward from here with this specific item if if it's I guess the request is for it to be withdrawn but yet we have someone That's speaking um, on behalf of this item well we we are that the motion was entertained it was in order to withdraw but any other motion uh, will take prejudice if it, it if it gets second so the motion to withdraw doesn't mean that, it's good, that, that we need to take a vote on that. We can take, we ju it just happened a few minutes ago that we have a motion to withdraw and then mo it was another motion on top of it uh, to table so it and then it w that one fell and we, this is the same situation. Through you, Mr. President. Yeah, well, a motion to table will proceed, but we're not telling you to table it, but I mean, we're, t we're telling you, you know, that, uh, the, the parliamentary procedures. So you can have any other type of motion uh, on this matter as, as desired by the council. So just to finalize then. Um, and, and, and it is important to recognize too that back then when we discussed, the, when we discussed this uh, back in 2016, I believe it was, if I recall correctly. Uh, huh? 2018. I remember that it was back in before 2020, but um, uh, we adopt a portion of the state law that allowed that is it was allowed to communities that voted no uh, on the uh, on the legalization of the uh, of cannabis within mm -hmm. the state of Massachusetts. Back then, it was the city of Lawrence. Just for the history portion of it, I, I guess that I become a history. This year, sometime, but just for the uh, for the sake of the uh, clarity of this item, the city of Lawrence voted no three times during different elections when it was uh, when it was uh, when the people have the opportunity to vote it uh, for the discriminalization of the cannabis, uh, uh, and the people voted no to, and then there was the um, the medical uh, marijuana vote. Uh, back, it was like probably three years after that, and the city of Lawrence was one of the only two municipalities that voted no out of the 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts. 
And then when we come, when it comes to the legalization of, of marijuana uh, on within the state of Massachusetts, the city of Lawrence was one of the, uh, I believe, less than four or five uh, cities and towns that voted against it. Uh, a, a coalition within the city of Lawrence come over to the city council and petition that uh, the desire of the voters at that point was to not allow um, any type of um, uh, business or dealing with uh, marijuana at the point, at that moment. When that happened, uh, uh, the, city of, the city council uh, chose to adopt a portion of that specific law uh, that uh, prohibit uh, commercialization of the marijuana within the city limits. And that was, that was what happened. So now we have an item in front of us to um, potentially have the opportunity to discuss what was adopted back then in 2018. Um, so but that's, the, that's the, a little bit of, um, of what happened back then. I was part of the council, so I refer. Did you? <laughs> And through you, that Mr. Was President. The, for the record, oh, so that was the longest meeting that we ever have in history. Yes. We were here like at 12 in the morning. Uh, through you, Council President. Yes, but uh, uh, Council Mamo, do you finish? Um, well, it's just a, I, I think that the, what my opinion is, uh, the best course of action um, is to, uh, I submitted in the form of a motion that this item is get sent back to, to the ordinance committee and have them address it at the um, um, at the ordinance level. Well, it's being, it was withdrawn. It was. It is a motion to withdraw because but, they, mean, nobody we have it at the full council because nobody was there to yeah to speak on behalf of this item. That was so, so, but I can I can send it back to the ordinance committee when to would take a vote uh, to any. It, that this motion to withdraw or any type of motion, um, any other, any other motion that, that oversee, that overpass the motion to withdraw. So we will entertain any other motion, but at this point we have this motion here. So Councilor Song have the floor, and uh, I mean, Councilor Song is asking for the floor, you have the floor, but I mean, um, Councilor Song. I, I just, uh, to you, Council President, because I know they're doing meetings in the city. Um, the commission, um, Cannabis Control Commission was here a few weeks ago. Yes. So it, it, is there an opening? Is this a possibility out there? Because I know they were here. Yes, um, what they were having here was an application clinic um, to let the residents know about their uh, social equity programs. It, it's that what you're proposing, it's it has to do with that. Do you guys apply for? I, I am a social equity applicant, but I didn't apply this time around. I applied about two years ago. Okay. So, I, and, and I'm, it's confusing because we voted against it, but they are here conducting community, uh, community meetings. Well, we, well, we voted against and, it. It was uh, any type of uh, commercialization of marijuana within the Lawrence city limits. Lawrence. One of the li city limits were prohibited, any commercialization. That doesn't mean that any type of info section uh, might happen. Okay. Uh, and I believe that what happened was an info section that they have within the city of Lawrence. Uh, but no commercialization, perhaps dispensaries <coughs> are not allowed, or any type of um, commercialization of, except for the illegal one, of marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, it's been happening every day within yeah. our, our streets. But not legally. Council President, so at, at this, are they, um, are we are entertaining, no, let me put it this way. So if we send this to the ordinance committee or if we do another motion, motion uh, are we uh, wasting their time? Because this. Well, um, to be honest with you, uh, I believe that if we, let's put it in perspective, if we withdraw this item, uh, nobody will be able to bring this item to the city council for the next year. If if any other uh, uh, any other motion take place, that motion will will take place, and 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 we either keep it here or do something else. But 
In the meantime, the motion in front of us is to withdraw, and that motion is in order. So if we keep it here and we don't entertain, there is 71 items on the ordinance committee that were sent it up for withdrawal on today's agenda. This won't be any difference. I mean, it's, it's something that we do very often. We table items. Uh, we move on, we withdraw with prejudice, without prejudice, uh, and then we do other things. I mean, and what a city council wants is to take a, take a stand on the item, meaning that we either leave it here or we withdraw it. And then if we leave it here, other step might take place. Council President, so my question is, there is, there is any possibility of having this type of business near the city? Can we? Uh, Councillor, I mean, exists. we don't know. I mean, it's up to know. the city council to. Uh, up, so. up to, and then it's up to the city council to take that portion of the law. Or I mean, I mean, withdraw that motion that we took back then in 2018, and maybe allow this to from happening. But remember, we are not the only body. I mean, yeah. the mayor have the power of veto. If we take any measurement, the mayor might say, you know what, I'm vetoing it. And then a supermajority vote need to happen at the city council to override the mayor's veto. But we don't know. I mean, what possibility exists? We don't know. It's, it's like it's up to the city council to take a position on, on any item. And then it's up to the mayor to either veto it or not veto it. The motion that we have in front of us, and that I'm being entertaining, that is in order, is motion to withdraw. Uh, may I say something? Sure. Um, you right now do have um, other dispensaries being placed on your borders from other neighboring cities. Um, so you are allowing your residents basically go and pay their, their fees over there and provide those taxes to Lowell and ha Haverhill and Drake. It. Uh, we understand. Uh, councilors, at this point, uh, if it is any other motion I or any other question. I would like to make a motion to table. There is a motion on the table, take prejudice. Um, properly second, all us in favor, please say aye. 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 Rock up, please. On a motion to table, Council Levy? No. Council Plant? No. Council Luzon? Yes. Um, Council Del Rosario is noted as absent. Councilor Santiago? Yes. Council Marmo? Yes. Council Salina Reyes? Uh, yes. Council Vice President Infante? Yes. Council President Rodriguez? I say yes. Uh, motion has been tabled. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, now we're going to the Housing Committee. I'm Alan Shear from the Housing Committee. Sue so is here. Sue so is ready to go. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Council Mama from the Housing Committee, we have one, two, three, four items. So through you, Council President, the Housing Committee met on item number 11724, um, accepting new street layout for Merrimack Street and South Broadway. Um, I believe we have Mr. Kenny Lamarche, if I'm pronouncing uh, his name correctly, uh, to speak on behalf of this item, which was voted um, in a favorable recommendation to the full Council. Uh, welcome, name and address for the record, please. So I submit that in the form of a motion. We There's a motion on the table. Can I hear a second? Mark, help me out. No, I mean, uh, there is a motion on the table. Can I hear a second? Second. It's properly second discussion. Discussion, uh, welcome, and name and address for the record. Hello, Kenny Lamarch, uh, 1046 Essex Street, uh, Project Officer of Economic Development Department. So uh, we met uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, regarding the projects, Merrimack Street and Bron uh, Marston Street, and we're just trying to accept the new layout for Merrimack Street. It's pretty straightforward. Just want to hear your thoughts. All right, councilors, any, uh, any, any questions in regard to this? At this time, I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Item 11824. Through you, Council President, the Housing Committee met on item number 11824, except new street layout for Marston Street and uh, East Haverhill Street. Um, we have Mr. Kenny Lamarche to discuss this item, to which uh, the Housing Committee voted in a favorable recommendation to submit this item to full Council. 
There is a motion on the table, properly second, second. by Councilor Santiago. Uh, discussion. After you, Council President. Council Luzon. I just want to say a thank you to um, um, Councilor Marmol and to uh, uh, McCarthy and the department for the uh, an excellent presentation. Uh, that um, they invited some of us, I think. Uh, and it, that helped a lot. So thank you so much for doing that. Thank you, Councillor Marvin, for organizing it. You're very welcome. Councillors, any other questions in regard to this item? I hear no, so at this point I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. No's, any no's? The ayes have it. Uh, item 119.28. Through you, Council President, the Housing Committee met on item number 11924, approved donation and voluntary grant of easement necessary for the redevelopment of a public roadway at the intersection of Marston Street and East Haverhill Street, 255 East Haverhill Street, Partham School. We have Kenny LaMarche to discuss this item. I submit that in the form of a motion to which the Housing Committee met and voted in, uh, in a favorable recommendation to submit this to full council. So moved. There is a motion on the table, probably second by Councilor Santiago. Uh, discussion? I hear none. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes, any no's? The ayes have it. Uh, Madam Chair from the Housing Committee, item 12024. Through you, Council President, the Housing Committee met on item number 12024, approved donation and voluntary grant of easement necessary for the redevelopment of a public roadway at the intersection of Marston Street and East Haverhill Street, uh, 207 Marston Street, which is the Partham School. We have Kenny LaMarche to discuss this item. I submit this in the form of a motion to which the Housing Committee met and voted in favor in a favorable recommendation to submit this item to full council. Second. There is a motion on the table, properly second discussion. I hear none. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any no's? The ayes have it. Thank, Thank you, you so Good much. Uh, uh, Councillors, we have public, and going to top of the agenda, we have item, we have the public hearings. Uh, uh, Madam, uh, we have public hearings for handicap parking. Uh, Madam Claire, please uh, read the notice for uh, the, all the handicap parking that were. Um, we have a handicap parking. Uh, Madam Claire, can we can we read the uh, public hearing notice, please, for the record? Um, Committee number two ninety one dash twenty one. Notice is hereby given that the City of Lawrence will host a public hearing on Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024 at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers, 200 Common Street, Lawrence, Mass., pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 and in accordance with the recently revised City Council Rule 2. This meeting will be hybrid, allowing participation both in person and remotely to accommodate any participant with health considerations that prevents them from participating in person. To receive access codes for remote participation, please contact the City Clerk at eileen.bernal at cityoflawrence.com or at 978-620-3230. The meeting may be viewed on Facebook and YouTube. The purpose of said hearing is to gather testimony, information, and public input concerning the proposed amendment to the revised ordinances of the City of Lawrence to be further amended by adding the following subparagraph to section 10.36.340 of the Municipal Code Handicap Parking. Lawrence Street, east side from a point 108 feet north of the intersection with Fern Street to a point 128 feet north of the intersection with Fern Street. Persons wishing to be heard shall be afforded the opportunity. Councillors, uh, at, this point, at this time, public hearing is open. Anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this item? Anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this item? I hear none, so at this point, uh, pub uh, public hearing is closed. Councillors, what's the motion? Motion to approve. There is a motion to approve, properly second discussion. I hear no discussion, so at this time I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any no's? The ayes have it. Uh, Councillors, can I get a can I get a can I hear a motion to waive the, the reading of that uh, preamble on the ads? Motion to waive the preamble. Second. There is a motion on the table, properly second by Councillor Santiago. Uh, discussion. 
I hear none, so all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Madam Chair, can you read the notice for the public hearings on um, resident parking? The purpose of the hearing is to gather testimony, information, and public input concerning the proposed amendment to the revised ordinances of the City of Lawrence to be further amended by adding the following new paragraphs to section 10.40.060 of the Municipal Code Permit Parking Street designation to be inserted in the proper alphabetical order. Walnut Street East Side from Myrtle Street to Bromfield Street and Walnut Street West Side from Myrtle Street to a point 216 feet north of Myrtle Street, which is directly across from Bromfield Street, and Coleman Street both sides from Everett Street to the Dead End, and Abbott Street both sides from Phillip Street to Osgood Street, and Chelmsford Street East Side from Arlington Street to Center Street, and West Street, both sides from Alden Court to Florence Street, and Basswood Street, both sides from Arlington Street to Alder Street. Persons wishing to be heard shall be afforded the opportunity. Uh, we have a public hearing on items uh, 291-23, 336-23, 358-23, 359-23, 4, and 416-23. And for and for seventy nine twenty three. Uh, if anybody from the public that wishes to speak on these items, this is the time. The president. This is the public hearing for all of these items. So. Council president. My last vice president for that. Um, Thank, thank you. I would like to take item 333 yeah, but 336 on its own because there's additional information. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. You can but we will just open transfer. the public hearing, we we'll close the public hearing, and then we go to each item individually. Um, the public hearings for those items are now open. Anybody that wishes to speak on these items, this is now you have the opportunity. Anybody from the public? Name and address for the record, please. Yeah, my name is, good evening, all consuls. My name is Hector Rodriguez. I live in uh, a little part of uh, Warner Street. All problems, uh, all problems of the, my neighborhood is that when I return it for the, everybody his job, anybody find the parking for his car because the, the other street leave the car in Old Street, and uh, my neighborhood needed support for the city for the putting the sign in for the only resident parking for the 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., mm -hmm. and uh, more support for the uh, traffic control because the city put a lot of sign of parking in the corner, and uh, anybody respect that. Yeah, every day, every single day, turn around a lot of time, or wait for the one people leave it for parking and low, and then you go to my house. This is the situation for all neighborhoods, and they're a little part. Other person have a, other person have a, for example, something business in his parking for repair something car because this is not legal, and. Uh, his car putting outside and occupied more space for that. This is the situation in this a little, a little part, the, 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 the Warner Street. Um, you, you have the floor anytime you want. Is this, this, this is everything you need to say? If you want all the, another information. No, I'm just saying the public hearing is open. Uh, yeah, because the, I send up, I give you the, a lot of pictures for proof that what is the situation in this street. Right. Anybody else that wishes to speak on, uh, on these items that we just mentioned previously? Name and address for the record, please. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I'm nervous. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Jimenez, uh, 68 1 Street. Uh, I live in the first floor where he lived. And I just want to verify uh, that all he's saying is that there's no parking at all for him because uh, there's a different cars from different streets parking in our street. 
because they also don't have parking and they live there like the whole day. Like we, every day is a fighting like for the, for the parking. Oh, let me see, he left, let me take it. And for, that's why we want, we're asking for resident parking, uh, at least two resident parking, like for the house and visitor parking also. Um, because all the people are coming from all the street to park where we supposed to park. And then, for example, for him, he work overnight. So when he come, he, he need to leave the car like far, far, far away from the house and walk to the house. And then in the morning, go back to his car. And sometimes, you know, uh, they can do anything to his car over there when he really can have space, but all the people from all the street are coming to park in our street. Sometimes they also block like my driveway. Like when I go to work, there's a car blocking my driveway. And then I need to call, uh, like, be like do it, you know, in the five in the morning that I need to work. So it's really like a problem. No matter that I have two parking, but you know, he don't have parking. And then they also blocking my driveway. So last time I hit somebody by mistake and you know, that's point for my license when I really was trying to get out because I needed to go to work. Understood, thank you so much. Anybody from the public that wishes to speak? At this point, councillor's uh, public hearing is now closed. I will entertain a motion for each of the items the individually. Item 291.23, which is the resident parking on Walnut Street. Um, it was, uh, it, I'll entertain a motion on this. Motion to approve. There is a motion to approve. Second. Properly second. Uh, councillors, we have a recommendation, discussion uh, before we go there. We have a recommendation from the uh, officer Cano from the police department for this item. I hope that everybody have read this. Uh, Council LaPlante. Thank you. Uh, one of the shockers, time and sometimes you're always shocked when you open up this book and you find something you didn't expect, place for resident parking. I did not know until about a month or two ago that the resident parking stickers must be renewed every year. It's been 30 years, 1994 is when the, when the resident parking stickers were it started this process, not 1887, but 1984. And so it's, so I don't think anybody's been going back. And so my fear is that even if we go ahead and we've got several coming up here, you're the first one, but if you don't go to the police department, the ordinance is very clear. You, it's the traffic division who's in charge of issuing the, um, the stickers, right, uh, under, under the police department. And it's two, two, two bucks. <laughs> it's not a lot of money. Um, and so what I, what, I, what I don't want, and we haven't had this problem, but I could foresee it happening, is that what I don't want is for people to come here, not renew their license, not renew their, their resident parking sticker at the police department, and then there's a, some sort of litigation, some sort of squabble or, or disagreement regarding, yeah, I live here, no, I live there, I got a parking sticker, but that sticker's not legit because they didn't renew it. And so I'm trying to get the word out. I sent the word out to former police chief Castro about it, but things we all read about, things got kind of nutty, so I never really got a response. But the issue remains. So I say this now, I'm not gonna say it again for the rest of them, but we, people should be aware that we have ordinances on the books that require individuals to go to the police department to, once you get the approval here, you've got to get the, the permit at the police department and you've got to pay it, and it's due. All permits will expire on January 31st, 31st the following of the date of the issuance. So it's due every January 31st. And that's in case we're watching or you're wanting to look, it's 10.40.020 issue of permits. All right, thank you, Councillor Plan, for the clarification. Um, councillors, we have an item. We have an item in front of us. We have a motion to approve. Any other questions? I hear none. So at this point, I call the questions. All us in favor, please. Oh, by the way, the um, we got to clarify that the um, according to the recommendation that um, the residency parking will be from Monday to Sunday, from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. during the night. Since he did that, Officer Cano sent, and I, I, I know he copied you, I, I don't know who else we copied. He actually was saying he was gonna, 
to make it more uniform. He was recommending 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. to just have it be consistent um, on all the resident parking. If they're gonna have a time restraint, he was proposing that one. Um, No, no, he's, well, resident parking wouldn't be where there's meters, so, but he's saying 5 p.m. because people get home from work at 5 o'clock and there's, they can't park till 7 o'clock. The spaces don't open up because, so he's suggesting 5 o'clock for the start and then 7 p.m. so that they're out of there. 7 a.m. Yeah, yeah, 7 a.m. Um, but that was, if there's sections that are having hourly constraints, he was recommending a 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. to be consistent. We'll Councillors, we can uh, we can modify the motion based on the recommendation, uh, five to seven, uh, or six it. to eight. It's up to the council. Uh, Councillors, what is the motion within a specific time? I would encourage through you. I would ask who's the author of the amendment of this uh, motion. Councillor Infante. I would ask the councillor if she would mind accepting a friendly amendment to go with council of Mr. Cano's recommendation of five p.m. to seven a.m. and keep it consistent. I accept the friendly amendment. Uh, so uh, the new, so the the timing will be from, from 5, 5 p.m. to 7 in the morning. Yep. All right, councilors, any other questions in regard to this? Uh, through you, Mr. President. Council, Council Reyes. I want to, to offer some clarification because when we assign resident parking is uh, for every resident, it's not assignment for apartment or something like that. So, in the way that it works, as far as I know, is that anybody that lives on that street and have a car registered on that street uh, will, will take advantage of the resident parking. Uh, it's for resident parking. Yeah, resi but typically block by block. So, it, you, your block will get a, a card. Everyone in your block will have the exact same card from the police department that you can park on your block. They usually run, run about a block anyway, like the length that they usually issue it is usually about one block. So um, if somebody's three blocks down and they have resident parking, they should be parking where you are, they park in their block where, where they have their own resident parking. Are um, we starting to do something the, like that in our city? The placard that they get states which street they're on, so it should be pretty clear. Okay, thank you. I have you. a question. Sure. Council Reyes, you finished? Sure. You guys want clarity? Yes, I want to... Uh, be clear on that because we have a lot of resident parking, but uh, we have different streets. They have resident parking, but they don't have two spots for residents. Uh, they only have resident parking. It's interesting to know because we have some residents uh, that are interesting to have their own spot, so mm, they don't yes. need to worry about that. No, that's not how it works. I mean, ah, I, okay. No, that's no, my I mean, question. I, it is important to recognize that, you know, everybody that lives on the block can park within the block. And we actually adopting a, 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 a resident parking within the street. Um, essentially, you know, that mi it might be more people than the, than the street can hold, but it's not right in front of your house. Nobody's going to be entitled to, not even the handicap parking, entitled to that uh, unique uh, space space is like it's for anybody living within uh, within the block or street uh, that it's have the right to, to park but it's not it's not no exclusivity yeah uh, sometimes our resident was confused because when they when we offer resident parking they think oh I can park in front of my house and other residents cannot occupy this space yeah, because it's not, it's not how it works, no. so uh, that's why I want to offer this clarification yeah uh, the, question Santiago. Have, the question that I have is that resident parking is for Walnut Street that's correct uh, and Walnut Street have we know we have problem with the parking anywhere but uh, Walnut Street uh, it is like a side street. We have principal uh, street over there, in, like uh, Arlington Street. Is uh, they they do a corner with Walno and Arlington, and the resident live over there. Uh, they don't have in front of the street. They don't have parking. And how if it, they do it just for the Walno? Yeah, we have the situation they, before, and. Um, Unfortunately, the, the program goes for people that have the car register on that street. We had that uh, situation on Jackson Street. 
that Jackson is prohibited, and then there is Parker Street. It, the house is alone Parker Street, but the rest, the address of the of the house, uh, it belonged to Jackson Street. So they were not able to take advantage of that uh, of that uh, resident parking. We ended up removing those that that handicap park. I mean that resident parking from there, but the signs was just renewed. <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> so. It is, that's how it is. People that register the vehicle on that specific street are going to take advantage of that. It's not necessarily people that live on the street. It could be that people have, um, people, people live on the street but doesn't have the car registered on the street. They register on the mom on, or somewhere else and they, don't, they won't take advantage of that. They won't, they won't be able to park because it's with the registration, the proof that you live there. As I know, right? All right, councillors. Any other motion? Any other? Any other questions in regard to this? At this point, I entertain. Them. I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Any noes? The ayes have it. Uh, item 336.23, resident parking only, Coleman Street. Councillor Infante was the author of this uh, of this uh, item. What is the motion? Motion to approve. There is a motion to approve properly second discussion. Discussion. Council, Council Vice President Infante. Thank you. Just quickly, I, I don't see here that it was some say reference to, to Officer Cano and, and the city attorney. Uh, the city attorney did send his recommendation and he, he does uh, recommend us to, to move forward with this. So just wanted to. Uh, Officer Cano also sent it. And yep. Yeah. So motion that we did the motion that we did with with the time frame that that just pertained to the previous item right correct or according to what he was saying and what this what this clerk was uh, requesting to is to keep it consistent with all uh, resident parking okay so my huh they want to have signs that they purchase that have the times on them so okay they all have different my motion my motion is motion <coughs> to approve with the resident parking only um, time to be from 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. There is a motion on the table, properly second discussion. I hear no, not, so at this point I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Item uh, uh, 358.23, resident parking permit for Ava Street between Phillips and Lutzgut. Councilor Plant, that was your that was your item. I'd like to make a motion um, make a motion that we approve this document. What it should read, because it was amended at the ordinance committee, was from between South Union Street and Osgood Street. So there should be a change. It should say South Union Street and Osgood Street. So I make that with that change in the form of a motion. There is a motion on the table um, specifying the time from 5 to 7 a.m. And including the, yes, including the time, 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. Properly second, um, we have public participation on this item specifically. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Uh, item 393.3, resident parking only, Chestnut Street, on odd numbers between Arlington Street and Center Street. Uh, Councilor Reyes and Councilor de Rosario, where, where they are all these items. Councilor Reyes, what is the motion? There is a motion to approve, proper second, uh, inconsistent with the time, five to seven. Uh, any discussions, Councilor? I hear none. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Item 416.23, which is the resident parking for West Street. In front, of La in front of Florence to Alder Street, from Florence to Alder Street, both sides, it was uh, sent out, to, uh, it was put together by uh, Councilor Rosario. Councilor Malmo, this is part of your district. Do you desire to make a motion? Yes, and one side is D and one side is C. I represent that area, trust me. It is, it is like that. I thought you said it was my district. It's no, Council Mamo, I said. Uh, any Council? 
<laughs> no, I said if you're willing to make a motion. Motion to approve. Can I hear a second? Can I hear a second? Uh, let's keep it consistent with the timing. Uh, the same time, councillors. Uh, the motion includes from 5 to 7 in the morning? Yes. All right, councillors. Uh, any any um, any discussion on this? I hear none, so at this point I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. The ayes have it. Councillors, item 479-23, resident parking only for Bushwood Street uh, from Allington to Alder Street. Councillor Rosario was putting this item on the agenda. Councillors, what is the motion? Item uh, item 47923, resident parking only for Basswood bus Street. Motion to approve. Can you hear a second? Second. Properly second. Discussion? I hear none, so at this point I call the. Well, uh, well, that this, includes is, this is uh, um, um, in combination with the time, right? Yes. From 5 to 7 a.m. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Public hearing for stop sign. Madam Chair, can you please read the notice? Stop sign. Um, the purpose of the hearing is to gather testimony, information, and public input concerning the proposed amendment to the revised ordinances of the City of Lawrence to be further amended by adding to Section 10.28.100A of the Municipal Code stop signs and flashing red signals the following two paragraphs in their appropriate alphabetical order. Carver Street. It should just be one paragraph, I apologize. Carver Street, northbound drivers on Carver Street at the intersection with Merrimack Street. Persons wishing to be heard shall be afforded the opportunity. Uh, uh, public hearing is now open. Can uh, there is anybody from the public that wishes to speak on the item uh, 335-23? I hear none, so at this point, uh, public hearing is now closed. Councillors, what is the motion? Motion to approve. There is a motion to approve the stop sign. Council Infante, is this is a, a one, two-way stop sign or four-way stop sign? This is a one-way. One, two-way stop sign, okay. No, one-way. Okay. So Carver, Carver Street is a little side street that goes on to Merrimack Street. So they, they take that little side street so to go. So it's intersection? Okay, so one-way. All right. It's not a one-way either. No, one-way is a uh, stop sign. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> one-way one stop, stop sign, sign. correct, yep. Yes. Um, Councillors, at this point, uh, can you hear a second? second. Properly second discussion. Uh, there's no discussion at this point. Uh, I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Uh, public hearings on Comcast utilities. Madam Chair, please read the notice for the record. No, not for the, the Comcast. Document number 41-24 is the public hearing for Comcast. It's the purpose of the hearing is to gather testimony, information, and public input concerning the petition presented by Comcast Cable Communications Management, LLC, requesting the City of Lawrence, Mass, by and through its council members for permission to locate poles, wires, fixtures, and conduits, including the necessary sustaining and protective fixtures along and across the following public ways. It's a document number 41-24, install underground conduit at 2 Appleton Street under Methuen Street starting at the existing utility pole number 3293-2, put on the agenda by David R. Fluing from Comcast. Copies of the relevant plans for this petition are on file with the Office of the City Clerk and may be viewed upon request. Persons wishing to be heard shall be afforded the opportunity. Councillors, at this point, uh, public hearing is open. Anybody from the public that wishes to speak? Good evening, Dave for Welling. Um, Comcast 9 Forbes Road, Wuben, Massachusetts. Would like to speak in favor of the Comcast petition for Methuen Street um, to place one three inch PVC conduit 172 feet plus or minus for the purpose of providing service to number two Appleton Street. All right. Um, uh, if you finish, I will say it, uh, thank you for the information. Uh, at this point, anybody else will wishes to speak on this item? Item uh, 335-23. I hear none, so at this point, uh, public hearing is now closed. We will call item 335-23, I'm sorry, item 41-24, 4124, which is the, ins the installation of underground conduit 
for two open source read. Councillors, I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Properly seconded by Councillor Reyes. Um, discussion? I hear none, so I will call the questions. All us in favor, please say aye. The ayes have it. Uh, public hearings on national grid utilities. Madam Chair, could you please read the notice, the public notice for the record? I have three public notices on this. Do you want me to read all three or do? Yes, please. Okay. The purpose of the hearing is to gather testimony, information, and public input concerning the series of 15 petitions presented by Massachusetts Electric Company, DBA National Grid, requesting the City of Lawrence, Mass, by and through its City Council members for permission to locate poles, wires, and fixtures in conduits, including the necessary and sustaining protective fixtures along and across the following public ways. Document number 428-23, install one J.O. pole on Abbott Street near South Union Street. National Grid reference number is 2491-1796. Document number 48523, install one J.O. pole number 781 on Beacon Street near the intersection of Andover Street. Reference number is 29438746. Document number 48623, install one S.O. pole number 5240-84 on Bailey Street near Foster Street. References 30552693. Document number 487-23, install two SO poles, number 5148 and 5149 on Market Street near Parker Street. Reference number is 30552693. Document number 488-23 is install two SO poles, number 5217-84 and 6097 on Salem Street near Blanchard Street. Document number 489-23, construct underground electric conduit poles from pole number 5148 and 5149 to MH-691 on Market Street near Parker Street. Reference number is 30552693. Document number 409-23, install one J.O. pole number 5430 on South Union Street near Grafton Street. Reference number is 29866. 089. I might have had an extra six in there. I apologize. Document number 491-23. Construct underground electric conduit from MH11 to 59-65 Merrimack Street. Reference number is 30552690. Document number 492-23. Locate one J.O. pole number 112 in Merrimack Street near Parker Street. The reference number is 29411772. Document number 493-23, construct underground electric conduits on South Canal Street near Amesbury. The reference number is 2941172. Document number 494-23, construct underground electricity conduit from pole number 106 to MH number 1794 on Merrimack Street near Carver Street. Document number 495-23, locate one SO pole, number 1184 on Merrimack Street near Parker Street. Reference number is 29411772. Document number 496-23, is install two SO poles, number 6560 and 6671 on South Canal Street near Amesbury Street. Reference number is 29411772. Document number 49723 is install one J.O. pole number 12-50 on Canal Street near Union Street. The reference number is 30552690. Document number 498-23, construct underground electric conduit from MH-127, pole number 12-50 on Canal Street near Union Street. Reference number is 30552690. Copies of all 15 plans for Copies of the relevant plans for all 15 petitions are on file with the Office of the City Clerk and may be viewed upon request. Persons wishing to be heard shall be afforded the opportunity. Um, continuing on with the additional seven petitions presented by the Mass Electric Company, DBA National Grid, requesting City of Lawrence by and through its City Council members for permission to locate poles, wires, and fixtures in conduits, including the necessary sustaining and protective fixtures along and across the following public ways. Document number 43-24, Install one SO pole number 5880 at the intersection of Ferber Street and Everett Street. Document number 44-24, install two JO poles on Green Street. Reference number is 
3086-1638. Install document number 45-24. Install two J.O. poles on Haverhill Street. Reference number is 3086-1660. Document number 46-24. Install one J.O. pole on Park Street. Number is 3061648. Document number 47-24, install one J.O. poll on Marston Street. Doc reference number is 3068-4441. Document number 48-24 is install one J.O. poll on Railroad Street. Reference number is 3039-4415. And document number 49-24 is install one J.O. poll on Broadway. Reference number 3039-4415. Copies of the relevant plans for all seven of these petitions are on file with the Office of the City Clerk and may be viewed upon request. Persons wishing to be afforded shall be afforded the opportunity. And then the final is um, a series of 15 petitions presented by the Mass Electric Company, DBA Early. National Grid, requesting uh, the City yes, of Lawrence, yes, Mass, yes, by and through its City Council members for permission to locate poles, wires, and fixtures and conduits, including the necessary sustaining Protective fixtures along and across the following public ways is document number 93-24, install one J.O. pole on Marston Street, reference number 30684490. Document number 94-24 is construct underground conduit on Common Street near Amesbury Street, reference number 30406932. Document number 94-24, install two J.O. poles on Lawrence Street, remove one J.O. pole and relocate one J.O. pole, number 30752978. Document number 96-24 is to install two J.O. poles on Salem Street near South Union Street. There's no number sound coming. 238-50. Document number, uh, reference number is 29411796. Document number 97-24 is to install one J.O. pole on South Union Street near Abbott Street. Um, reference number is 29411796. Document number 98-24 is installed two J.O. poles on Springfield Street near Parker Street. Pole number 6193 and 5176. The reference number is 29411796. Document number 99-24 is installed two J.O. poles on Newton Street near Kingston Street. Poles numbers are 405 and 409-84. Reference number is 30546082. Document number 100-24 is installed one J.O. pole on Newton Street near Rose Street, poll number 396-50, reference number 30546082. Document number 101-24 is installed one J.O. pole on Durham Street near Rose Street, poll number 458-84, reference number 30546082. Document number 102-24 is installed one J.O. pole on Crosby Street near South Broadway. Poll number 476, reference number 30546082. Document number 103-24, installed one J.O. pole on Everett Street near Sanborn Street. Poll number 539-84, reference number 30546082. Document number 104-24. Motion pass 12. There's a motion on the table, properly second. Discussion? I hear none, so all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Um, I don't even know what number I was just on, but um, document number 105-24 is installed one SO poll on South Union Street near Springfield Street, poll number 3233-84, reference number is 29411796. Document number 106 24 is installed one SO pole on Springfield Street near South Union Street. Pole number 5163. Reference number 29411796. Document number 107 24 installed two SO poles on South Union Street near Merrimack Street. Pole number 2330 and 2331. Reference numbers 29411796. Copies of these relevant. Plans for all 15 of those petitions are on file with the Office of the City Clerk and may be viewed upon request. Persons wishing to be heard shall be afforded the opportunity. Councilor, councilors, at this time, um, I'll open the public hearings in regarding to the uh, National Grid Utilities. Anybody that from the public that wishes to speak? Anybody on Zoom, please. This is the time. Hello, Hello Council. Tim Williamson here from National Grid, 1101 Turnpike Street in North Andover. Um, thank you for the hearing for this large number of petitions. I'm here to represent the vast majority of them. Um, the first 15 that were read off 
numbers 485-23. No, through... okay, we, we, got, we got on the numbers. Okay. Thank uh, you. I just wanted to let you know I'm here for the vast majority okay. of them. We'll ask you any questions if, if, if we have any questions. Yes, and we've been through the ordinance committee where I answered more in-depth questions. So please let me know if you have any other questions. Thank you so much. Thank Anybody you. from the public that wishes to speak? I hear no, so at this point, public hearing is now closed. Motion to approve. Um, as, as a package? Well, are we willing to, to take everything as a package or are we going to go individually? As a package. All right, we can, right. We can do three packages or we can do only one package. Yeah, we're gonna, we already have it, uh, all of the items being read on the record, uh, on the public hearing, so we're approving everything that was read on, uh, on the public hearings. So, we can, we, if, it is, if, it is, if, if it's now, I have no objection to take it as a block, I think that we should take three different blocks, all the JOs, all the SOs, and the other utilities uh, utilities um, conduit. So motion to approve all the JOs. Um, so there is a motion to take all the JOs as a block, uh, all the JO polls as a block. The item on the uh, item numbers were reading on the public hearing. Uh, <coughs> properly second discussion. Discussion. Councilor Plan. I don't have any problems except for one of these items, and so I would like to take one off the block because I'd like to support the rest of them as a friendly amendment just to not deal with 428.23. If you could take that one out of the block and have a single vote on that, I would support the rest uh, of them. Council of Vice President Infanta, will you take the friendly amendment? I accept the friendly amendment. Okay, there is a friendly amendment being accepted. Um, so now let's go with ev every other J.O. Paul set for item 428.23. So we go back to that one later on. Uh, councilors, any any questions in regard to the jail polls that we're reading on the public hearing? I hear no at this point. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Uh, any noes? The ayes have it. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go to SO polls now. Motion to approve all SO poll items. They were reading on the public hearing. Were read on the public hearing. Yes, there is a motion on the on the there is a motion on the table properly second. Discussion on the SO polls? I hear none, so at this point I answer, I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Now the motion will be uh, for the, um, uh, the underground electric conduit. Can you hear a motion to approve all motion of the underground electric conduit? Motion to approve Sec all. <laughs> the underground mm. electric conduit. Thank you. There is a motion on the table uh, to approve all the electrical underground conduit uh, that were reading on the public hearing. Properly second. Discussion. I hear no questions or discussions. Uh, at this point, I call I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. Hi. Any other um, um, characteristic of work on their national grid? I think those are the only threes. All right, councillors, now we're going back to item 428.23, which is that uh, WR 307 so one J O Paul on Ava Street. Uh, so I entertain a motion to... Uh, I entertain a motion for this item. Councillors, what is the motion? Yeah. Item uh, 428.23. We have the, uh, the, the person here in front of us. It, that was the item that we actually removed out of that uh, ordinance committee and send it out for public hearing. Motion Correct. to approve. It's been um, motion to approve. We have no questions at this point. Uh, yes. It's, hello? Uh, do you, do, you, do you want to add anything on this item? Yes, I'd like to know why you're tabling it. So that no, we, we are not tabling it. We are not tabling okay. it. Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll ask the question, okay? So, uh, it's been, it's a motion to approve item 428.23. Can you hear a second? Second. 
properly second discussion. Councillor Prime. Oh, okay. I thought, okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any no's? No. Rock up, please. Um, this is with regard to document number 428-23. Um, I'm going to take a roll call. Councilor Levy is gone, noted as absent. Councilor Plant. No. Councilor Luzon. Yes. Councilor Del Rosario is noted as absent. Councilor Santiago. Yes. Councilor Marmo. Sorry. Noted as absent. Councilor um, Selena Reyes. Yes. <laughs> Council Vice President Infante. Yes. Council President Rodriguez. Yes. Motion carries five votes. Councilors, we are finishing with all the public hearings. Now we're going to go uh, to all business. We have item 18122, which is the resolution to establish appropriate fee structure for the utility companies. Councilors, this item was uh, was was sent out to order a public hearing, but according to the city attorney, we have no requirement on this because we're only changing the rate. The rates are as following, according to what I remember, and Madam Clerk. Please correct me if I'm wrong. We are going to be we are going to be charging any utility company coming from the city of Lawrence for asking for permission to to do any work for the the amount of dollars for the of the publication plus one hundred dollars. Um, at this at this time, with no objection, I entertain a motion, uh, councillors. Uh, uh, councillors, one minute, Madam Clerk. I apologize. There was a little, there's not a little, there's a lot of confusion on this item and it's but installed out and I apologize for my part in that stall. Um, I was able to meet with the city attorney and he had initially said to me, because we're just changing the amount of a fee, it did not require public hearing, same as when we change a salary, we don't change the whole ordinance for a position. However, he said we weren't adding a fee today. He said to me, you know, I've been thinking about that one and you're not adding a fee, you're adding a set amount plus a fee, so you really should have a public hearing on that. So he said that today, so I we just have it connected today. Okay. So we should order a public hearing on that. So, Councillor, um, I entertain a motion to order a public hearing on this item. There's a motion on the table second. to order a public hearing, properly second by Councillor Santiago. Discussion. I hear no, so at this point, I, entertain, uh, I call the question, so all those in favor, please say aye. The ayes have it. Um, can, uh, Mr. Can, Mr. Chair from the uh, Ordinance Committee, please go on top of the agenda. Document 423-23. Thank you for your notes. Uh, excuse me. Oh, we'll take those back to... Um, to management and thank you for the public hearing. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair from the uh, Ordinance Committee. 423-23 Handicap Parking in 86 Ever Street was sent up to the full council to order a public hearing and make that in the form of a motion. Second. There's a motion on the table, properly second. Uh, discussion, I hear none. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Item 440, uh, 23. 440's ordinance, the right turn only for vehicles exiting businesses between Durso Ave and Chickering Street. Uh, that is sent up to the full council to order a public hearing. That's a motion. Second. Motion on the table to order a public hearing. Uh, properly second. The council of Council Reyes. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Item for 48, 23. Uh, 50 minute parking, two spaces at 205 South Union Street. This was sent up to the full council with a favorable recommendation to order a public hearing. That's the motion. Second. Uh, the motion, is this a meter, a meter location? I believe there's meters there, yeah. I mean, uh, that, that's not gonna fly. So after 6 p.m.? Okay, all right. Um, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, there is a motion to order a public hearing on this item. Properly second, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it, item uh, 3024. 
Uh, this was sent up, this is a pawn broker's license at 333 Essex Street. The, uh, the applicant was here at the ordinance committee. This was sent up to the full council to order uh, to, to approve, make that in form of a motion. There is a motion to approve, uh, properly, second, properly, properly second discussion. Any questions on this? Um, all right, uh, at this point, I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Item 11124. This is no parking. 20 feet on Bennett Street, West Ride, near Medford Street. And this was sent up to the full council with a favorable recommendation to order a public hearing. That's a motion. This is a, this is a uh, no parking from here to corner? It seems to be a no parking area. Let me go into it a little more deeply. Hang with me. What did I say? I mean, I mean, I don't want to order a public hearing if it is a 20 feet from here to corner because that's an ordinance already. We have a letter of argument, but I think they want to enforce it. The sign? Yeah, they want to enforce it. The sign. I mean, we just need to request that through the DPW. I mean, we don't, we don't have to publish that. All right, uh, listen, councillors, we can t we can t we can table this matter here, and then uh, we we find out because I mean, uh, ordering a publication for this, I mean, it doesn't make sense. Uh, Document one twelve twenty four. Um, so we'll leave it there. You wanna, you we'll just leave it there. I'll come back to it when. Okay. Item one twelve twenty four. No parking, Farley Street, north side at South Broadway. Sends up to order public hearing. That's a motion. Second. Motion. Um, Motion, uh, there is a motion on the table, properly second. Discussion, councillors? I hear no at this point. I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, item 113.24. No parking, Farley Street, south side at South Broadway, sent up to the full council with a favorable. Make that in form of a motion. Door a public hearing. Second. There is a motion on the table, properly second. Discussion? I hear none. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. The ayes have it. Item 122.24. Um, this is re to remove a handicapped parking sign on 5 Platt Street that was sent out for the favorable recommendation to order a public hearing. That's the motion. Motion to remove um, handicapped parking. There's a motion on the table. Properly second. Discussion. I hear none. All those in favor, please say aye. The ayes have it. Item 125.24. Uh, remove handicapped parking sign at 15 Falmouth Street that was sent out with a favorable recommendation to order a public hearing. That's the motion. Motion to, to order public hearing on this item. It's been properly seconded by Councillor Reyes of Santiago. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. The ayes have it. Item um, 128. Handicap parking, 48 Utah Street. Uh, this was sent up to the full council with a favorable recommendation to order a public hearing. That's a motion. Okay. All right, there is a motion on the table, properly second discussion. Here none. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. The ayes have it. Um, going back to item 111.24. Yeah, I found the police department's recommendation uh, on that. Um, the distance starts from the edge of a private driveway, which may be the mitigating factor of a building 24 Bennett Street traveling south. I'll cut to the chase here. Uh, according to Officer Cano, he recommends that this ordinance be granted. Um, All right. There's a motion, uh, motion to order public hearing. There's a motion? That's, oh. I'll make the motion. All right, motion uh, properly second. Uh, discussion? I hear none. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. The ayes have it. That's that one. Oh. Yeah. Item, uh, now we going to ordinance, but the withdraw items. Councillors, I would like you to take a minute to look into it to see if there is any item that wishes to to keep otherwise we're going to withdraw it all and next Council meeting President. you can put anything that you wishes to work with council council, uh, council, council, council plan do you have council, any suggestion yeah council president I, you know we um i i think what we're trying to do here is that there's a lot of and i heard the public heard the public participation earlier this evening and i i saw some of the raised eyes from some of my colleagues earlier about what is going on here this is important why are you taking this off what is happening here is a couple things. One is that the, there's not a lot of confidence, to be very frank, with the nine pages of materials that's before the Ordinance Committee. Previous members of the Ordinance Committee said, what's this doing on there? We passed this, we withdrew this, we did something on it. It shouldn't even be there. Uh, there, are, there are things that have been passed, there are things that have been withdrawn. So what this is an effort, 
it's a, this is not going to be 100% correct, and I, I think we're going into this with, the, with our eyes wide open. But what we're trying to do is have a clean slate, but understanding that there may be counselors, council presidents, which are, I think is the point you're driving at, there may be counselors who say, you know something, this has not been dealt with adequately or, or whatever. I think what we want to do, rather than going and start cherry picking, we say, you know something, put it on, put your name, some, some of these are not even people's names or other people's names, put your name on this, um, and then I, I will support putting that, um, as a, a, a commitment I'm making right now, if you decide that we withdraw it this evening, and if you have a problem getting it back on the agenda, I will support you getting that back on the agenda, just because we're trying to clarify this thing as much as possible. So that would be a long way of saying, I hope we can go through this entire list and if somebody wants to put something brand new on it again, we should take it and refer it back to the committee. Council LaPlante, thank you for the suggestion. There is a few items that we're going to be sending back to the Ordinance Committee that were published here. Item uh, 0823, Handicap Parking for Bradenton Street, Apartment 81. That's going to be back to the Ordinance Committee. Item could, you, could you do me a favor, Council President? I'm trying to look for them. Could you say them more slowly, end. please? The very end. The very last ones. The ones that weren't supposed to be on. Oh, those three. Yeah. yeah. Item 10923, which is the 15 minute parking uh, uh, for um, 359 Lawrence Street. That's going back to the Ordinance Committee. Item 2223 with one way. Um, on wind of Winter Street, um, that's going back to the Ordinance Committee. Councilors, if you if you take a look at any item that you think that you're going to be working on, please let me know so Council we can President. send it now, and then we draw the rest of the items. Council Just President. to give an opportunity to anybody to send anybody anything to to the back to ordinance. Uh, Madam uh, Vice President Infante. Thank you. I would like to sign item 253-22 traffic study on for Hamlet Street and surrounding school zone streets back to the ordinance committee. I have not heard back from the city okay. engineer nor what the What was the DVD. item number? 253-22. I've right. also item not heard back uh, from the uh, going back to the going back to the ordinance committee. Councillors, any other ones? I have a few, a few here as well. Okay, item one one two nineteen. Uh, that item is going back to the ordinance committee. I have I have one I have one item. Give me a minute, councillors. Just take a quick pick to see it, uh, if it is any item. Council Council President, if somebody doesn't see it this evening for whatever, it's tired. It was twelve fifteen or whatever it is. They can always put it back on afterwards. Okay. Yep. Uh, item 11019 going back to the ordinance committee. Uh, item 20421, uh, the base typing for the school committee going back to the ordinance committee. Item uh, 20421. That item already passed. There's a couple on here. Actually, it was named different. It wasn't it was re like a red wagon thing. Mm -hmm. So it's a different. Okay. 
Det er Sille, det er Sille, 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 All right, councillors, we will call the questions to withdraw all the rest of the items. Madam Clear, do, do, you, do you believe it's appropriate to read all the items? I will also ask that we take off, uh, Councillor Levy, since the box has been opened, has asked me for, for one, so 118.19 as well. 118.19, going back, back to the Ordinance yeah, Committee? Yeah, that's it. Uh, Item right, 204.21, going back to the Ordinance Committee. Item 167-21, going back to the Ordinance Committee. 157-22, going back to the Ordinance Committee. Mm -hmm. Council President, would it be in order for me to start reading these now? Sure. Like to make a motion. All right, we we'll make we we'll have a motion to withdraw um, the brush of the item. We're going to have to read. I will the read items. them quickly unless the clerk wishes to read them. Sure. I'd like to make the, the ordinance committee met to withdraw the following items in bulk. Here we go. 719 plastic bags prohibiting single use. 1519 no parking Hable Street in front of School Street between Hampshire and Franklin Street, 1 to 7 a.m. 5319 American with Disabilities Act coordinated reclassification. 10619 handicapped parking removal. 170 172 Boxford Street. 11319 traffic set at Avon Street speeding and traffic controls. 11919 speeding speed limit Common Street to Newbury Street. 12019 speeding limit Common Street to Union Street. 12419 upgrade City Council and Clerk. Office salary site, uh, clerk office salaries. 17919 petition to relocate existing handicapped parking space. 2019 establishment of health and human services, including reorganization. 20819 proposed city ordinance amendment, ordinance section 5.36 regarding vendors in public places. 2219 renew museum square parking garage, a city of Lawrence Central parking facility. Uh, 2619 one side parking only, 10 East Street. 21929 update no parking signs, Hall Street. 271.19, loading zone parking space between 12 and 3 p.m. 274.19, handicapped parking, 105 Dorchester Street. 292.19, noise ordinance amendment, prohibited noises, 9.04.040, 219.289.19, no parking in front of schools, two to three hours. 334.19, four-way stop sign, intersection of Butler and Milton Streets. 381.19, handicapped parking, 337 Bainton Street. 3419 Loading Zone, 381 Havel Street, 39619 Noise Ordinance Review, 9.04.040, 4119 Foss Drive, no parking, both sides of the on day schools in session, 7 a.m. to 8.15 and 3 to 4 p.m. 5320 Roundabout Study, May and Manchester Streets, Bodwell and Margin Streets, uh, 5720 Request to Rezone 576 Havel Street to R2 Residential to HA Highway Access. 6420, resolution, Jim Ross. 75B20, proposed ordinance calling for eviction moratorium for all Lawrence residents due to COVID, coronavirus, COVID-19. 120, amend ordinance 5.48.790. 15120, request to amend a zoning ordinance per MGL 40A, section 5 of the proposed planning industrial district. 25220, city council salary review. 26620 Resident Parking, 11 East Table Street, 491, I'm sorry, 4921 proposed minor reorganization of the Lawrence Planning Board term um, schedule and replacement policy. 
Teresa, can you do me a favor? Anyway, 5721 Winter Parking, Trenton Street, Alternate Side Parking Ordinance, 8221, proposal to regulate outdoor dining within city and sidewalks amend Title 12 of City Municipal Code, 8320, proposed changes to administrative fees for municipal boards, 10421, Residential Permit Parking Ordinance Amendment, Amendment, 12621, Handicap Parking, 132 Margin Street, 13421, Open Meeting Law Complaint. 17121, review and make changes to the new noise ordinance. 17421, remend the city clerk bond section 2.16.030. 17721, taxi livery renewal, town livery incorporated. 20121, one street to be named after Juan Dios Vios Venturi, as well as a Dominican artist. 20221, street named after Sergeant Giovanni Rosario. 21221, crossing signs, daycare, 80, I'm sorry, 96 T Stable Street and Berkeley Streets. 23121 Stearns Ave, one way northbound from Mayflower Street to Lawrence Street, 231 Sunset Ave, one way southbound from Saratoga Street to Lawrence Street, 23321 Amendment Ordinance 10.36.031 to include Stern Ave for the winter alternative parking, 23721 Amendment Ordinance 10.36.031 to include Willow Street to the winter alternative parking, 23821 amend ordinance 10.36.031 to include Exchange Street to the winter alternative parking. 23921 amend ordinance 10.36.031 to include Sunset Ave to the winter alternative parking. 24021 50 minute parking 93 Saunders Street. 24821 flood insurance increase in Lawrence. 25621 alternative parking Mechanic Street. 25721 one way me me Mechanic Street from north to south from Elm Street to Union Street. 26021 amend ordinance 12.12.010. 2222 handicap parking 53 Bradford Street. 2722 modification of ordinance regarding compensation of library director. 4422 study review Magnolia Street. 4822 request to accept three public utility easements for construction and maintenance of South Broadway and Merrimack Street intersections. Do I need to read all those? Okay, 492, 4922 request to accept five permanent easements for construction and maintenance South Broadway and Merrimack Street intersections. I'm just going to read the property address, 2620 South Broadway, 24 South Broadway, 1822 South Broadway, and going back to 4822, those addresses are 10 South Broadway, South Broadway, Merrimack Street, and 5 and 7 Merrimack Street. Page 6. Oh, I'm sorry, in a continuation of 4922, you have 10 South Broadway and South Broadway and Merrimack Street. 7422 is application for sales from fixed locations. Uh, that's Mercedes Home Appliances, 9622, Preach the Word of God, May, August of 2022, 2 to 4 p.m., O'Neill Park. 10922, Request for a Resolution of Establishing Language for RFP, RF, RFQ. 11922, Old Gold License, Kajoma, um, Joyera, 200204 Broadway. 13022, Platform Outreach Ministries. Uh, 147, uh, it can't be known in common. 14722, Old Gold and Secondhand Dealer License. 18222 resolution limiting food trucks to one per business. 18522 decoration of Square Park Union Street, corner of Canal Street. 19422 request for easement acquisition to South Broadway uh, and South Broadway and Merrimack Street intersection and improvement projects. 19522 request for easement acquisition of 13 South Broadway, South Broadway and Merrimack Street intersection improvement project. 20822 discussion of ordinance chapter 15.14 conflicts. 22822's Traffic City, Lynch Street. 23522 Resolution to Resident Parking Only, Bicknell Terrace to Reservoir Street to Bellevue Street. 24522 Handicap Parking, 24 Belmont Street. 24722 Traffic City Review, review Basswood Street. 25222 Traffic City, Mount Vernon Street. 267B22 Resolution in support of requiring payment and prevailing wages to all city workers performing private utility con constructing in the City of Lawrence. 29622 Traffic City Review, Sunset Ave. 30222, resident parking only, Basswood Street from 6 a.m. to 6, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. 30422, traffic city review, Avon Street from Berkeley Street to Jackson Street. 30522, traffic city review, Essex Street from Ames Street to Milton Street. 30722, drop off pickup parking space, 94 Street, 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., Monday through Friday. 32622, request for staff parking only at city owned school property, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., beginning on 828 through 6.30 of each year. 
or any day the school is in session. 33022 traffic study review on Jackson Street corner with Park Street. 33322 parking permits 163 uh, Lawrence Street Super Mass Grocery LLC. 37022 20, handicap parking 56 Avon Street. 37422 Human Rights Commission Ordinance uh, 38922 Gold Star Family Parking Amendment Unicode 10.36.440 39022 One Way Saratoga Street from Bennington Street to Park Street 39222 Review and Adjust a Fee Schedule at City Clerk's Office 43522 National Grade Essex Street Install 1JO Pole 1471 8 to 23 Handicap Parking for Bennington Did I miss one? Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> There's a big stop sign there. All right, councilors. Uh, all the items were written. Uh, any questions in regard to this item? Uh, who was the one, the councilor, that second day? I have a. Motion, uh, was a motion to withdraw? Can I get a second? Okay. Properly second by Councilor Reyes. Uh, the items were breading. Any questions on the items? I hear none, so at this point I call the question. So all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Uh, councilors, we're going back to new business. Um, and on the new business, item 14024, stop sign on Woodland Street. That's going to the Ordinance Committee. Item 14124, declaration of hunger, uh, hunger allowance municipal April. As a school, that's going to the ordinance committee. Item 142.24, preach the war of God. Uh, Barriers Park and locations between uh, 511.24 to 928.24. That's going to the ordinance committee. Uh, 143.23, temporary public uh, art installation at Pika River Gateway and O'Neill uh, uh, Companion Park. That's going to the ordinance committee. Item 144.24, Earth Day, citywide cleanup. May, May 4, 2024, that's going to the Ordinance Committee. Item 145.24, regaining the, uh, the regaining in the Valley Evangelical Event. Uh, that's on August 16, 17, 2020, uh, of year 2024, that's going to the Ordinance Committee. Item 146.24, uh, three and three basketball tournament, June 8, 2024, that's going to the Ordinance Committee. Item 147.24, La Fiesta del Barrio, June 8, 2024. That's going to the Ordinance Committee. 148.24, establishing a home repetition uh, defining the governance structure of the Alarming School Committee upon the exit of the state receiver. That's, going, that's a home repetition that's going to the Ordinance Committee. Item 149.24, removal of handicap parking, 67 Farnham Street. That's going to the Ordinance Committee. 150.24, uh, Dia de Clamor Servicios. Uh, Dia de Clamor Service, that's on August, August 31st, 2024, that's going to the Ordinance Committee. Item 151.24, request for status on Veteran Advisory Council, Chapter uh, 2116, that's going to the Personnel Committee. 152.24, con, uh, concerns regarding the staffing, the staffing of the Veteran Services Office, that's going to the Personnel Committee. Council President. Yes. I make a motion to formally request the presence of, uh, of our Veterans Affairs Director, Jamie Melendez. There is a motion on the table to request the presence of the uh, Veterans Affairs, uh, Mr. Melendez. Properly second. Discussion. I hear no, no discussions. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Please, and uh, clerk, please send the notice. Item 153.24, Handicap Parking on 17 uh, Bed, uh, Bedford Street. That's going to the Ordinance Committee. Item 154.24, the creation of an ordinance regarding the, uh, the council agenda automatically withdraw uh, of document after every two years. That was, um, that's going to go to the ordinance committee. Item 155.24, update from urban renewal plant. Councilor, this is a, 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 a duplicated item. We already have two items on this that we will discuss and we can use to, um, to discuss this. Can I hear a motion to withdraw? So moved. There is a motion to withdraw properly second. Discussion. Discussion. Councilor, Councilor Vice President Infante. Thank you. I, quick question. Now that we're going to have a meeting, is this going to be as a special meeting or are we bringing it as a committee of the whole? Um, 
Oh, no, because they're already at the full council. Never mind. They're already at the full council. Um, there is a motion to withdraw item 15524, properly second discussion. I hear no, so at this point I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any no's? The ayes have it. Item 15624, fiscal year 2022 audit uh, of the financial statement uh, by Power um, Sullivan. Uh, it was, uh, that's going to go to the Budget and Finance Committee. Item 15724, appropriation transfer of, for the amount of $170,000. Uh, from salaries um, to the litigations uh, that's going to the Budget and Finance Committee. Item 158.24, appropriation transfer for $29,275 from the uh, retained revenue funds to the April repairs and maintenance funds. That's going uh, to the Budget and Finance Committee. Item 159.24, extension of a contract beyond three years, contract 70.55. LHS Associate, uh, that's regarding to the city clerk office, that's going to the Budget and Finance Committee. Item 160.24, install a J.O. Paul on Abbott near Union Street, that's going to Ordinance Committee. Item 161.24, review and approval of annual application of HOP uh, for the Community Development Block, CDBGs, and then estimate for the amount of um, $1,551,622 uh, and the Home Ground uh, Fund estimated for the amount of $944,075. Um, That's going to the Budget and Finance Committee. Item 162.24, the transfer funds for the amount of $1,874,629.49. Uh, councillors, we need uh, to uh, declare this item as an emergency to be added to the uh, to the agenda. This is in regard to the transfer of funds for the amount of one million eight hundred seventy-four six hundred thirty-nine dollars and forty-nine cents from the retaining earnings of, uh, to debt services. That's in regard to the uh, to the water and sewer department, councillors. Can I get a motion to add to uh, to add to the agenda and declare this as an emergency for the benefit of the community? Second. There is a motion on the table. Properly second. Discussion. I hear none at this point. I call the questions. We need six votes for the approval. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any no's? The ayes have it. Item 163.24. This is the same situation, Lawrence High School Civic Education uh, Project is creating in uh, the creation of an ordinance. Uh, this is, uh, the, we need to dec uh, declare this as an emergency uh, for the benefit of the students, the community, um, to be able to add this item to the agenda. Can I hear a motion to declare this as an emergency for the benefit of the community and the students of the Lawrence High School? Uh, pro there is a motion on the table, properly second uh, discussion. At this time, I hear none. All those in favor, please say aye. The ayes have it. So this item, both of them are being added to the agenda. And the first item, 162.24, which is the transfer of funds, will, will be going to the Budget and Finance Committee. And item 163.24, which is the Lyon High School Civic Education uh, Project, is going to go to the Ordinance Committee. Both of um, the project 163.24 was a sponsor by the teacher and the students. Uh, my name is there, but I just was trans transmitting the information. And uh, one of them is going to is going to go is going to be around trash disposal and the legality of it. And also, and the other one is going to be regarding the traffic uh, traffic uh, situation around the high school. Councilor, at this point, if it is any other questions or matters from the table matters, uh, this is the time. I hear none, so at this time, I entertain a motion to to we have committee, committee, no, committee oh, meetings, sorry. and you get a special meeting. You're going to call them. I'm guessing, Council. Councilors, um, budget and finance. Wednesday at 7 p.m. Wednesday at 7. Uh, ordinance committee. Tuesday at 7. Tuesday at 7. Personal. So. Wednesday. 
You have two, two minor items. When, no, because it's, um, Wednesday at six, and I would also like to make a motion to invite the mayor's chief of staff, Santiago Matias, uh, the mayor's senior advisor, Octavian Spanner, and also the acting HR director, Mike, Mark Ayanello, to that meeting as well. There is a motion to invite previous names that were mentioned by Council of Vice President Infante. Um, can I hear a second? Second. Uh, she was inviting the chief of staff, the In senior advisor, and uh, the CAFO. Regarding to personal, to, personal, to personal. When is that? Wednesday at 6 p.m. No, no next Wednesday week. You won't be able to wake up tomorrow. Wednesday the 10th? Yep. Uh, councilors, any objections, any questions? At this time, I call the questions. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Uh, the special meeting will be oh. personal is on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, we have no items for housing, no item for safety, and no item for the uh, economic development. Uh, we will get in touch with um, the LRA and the disponibility of, of the board to see when they might be able to come for the special meeting. And also, we need to uh, figure it out who's going to be presenting um, the urban renewal plant specifics uh, in regard to, to that. So we'll decide when that special meeting is going to happen once we have those three or four parties all together. Motion to adjourn. Uh, motion to adjourn. I'll a motion properly. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you so much, councillors.